Well, hello everyone. Happy Friday. It is another lawn care live stream. My name is Ron Henry and I am here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is your first time in the live stream or coming to the channel, first of all, welcome. The way this works, super simple. You can just see a chat there with a bunch of lawn care crazies all in there. People are really passionate about lawn care. Simply drop your questions down in there and I work through them in the order they come in. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I don't. But either way, we have an awesome time talking about turf grass. So guys, we're well into spring. Summer's gonna be here before we know it. We finally got a lot of rain or we got some rain in Georgia. So the lawns are hopefully doing a lot better. And uh, you know, we've got lots to go through tonight, lots to cover. I'm not sure I'll get through all of it, but uh, we'll see. Depending on how many questions you guys have, depends on how much of the stuff that I wanna talk about, I get to talk about. All right, so let's see who we have in the live stream tonight. First of all, we got VMH leading off the charge. We're saying, hey, Ron, happy Friday. What's going on, VMH? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out. And then Archie, never to be one to waste time, has a question. He says, good evening, young man. How many times a year should sulfate of potash be applied to your lawn? Have you heard of Yukon Bermuda grass seed? And if so, would you recommend using it? Great questions. So the, the answer to how many times per year should you apply um, SOP or, or sulfate of potash really is gonna be driven by, you know what's coming, your soil tests. So I am a fan of, of um, always including some potassium in your fertilizer anytime you're, you're fertilizing your lawn, just like I'm also a fan of always including nitrogen. Uh, the only macro that you really should apply only based on, on, on soil test results is, uh, is phosphorus. You really don't wanna be loading that up unless you really need it. But potassium, every time I, I apply a fertilizer, um, I, I'm trying to think if I've ever used a fertilizer in recent times that did not contain uh, potassium. Oh, I think Milo doesn't have any potassium in it, but I mean, in like recent years, it's always been a, you know, um, some number, zero, and then whatever the potassium is, right? So I'd say you wanna have that as part of your regular fertilization program, how much you need. Again, a, a soil test will tell you that. If your, your soil is uh, very deficient of potassium, um, there is a product um, on the golf course lawn store that's like, it's, I think it's 48% potash. I can, I can look here and show you really quick. Let us see, make sure I'm, I'm telling you right. Don't wanna be fibbing. So you go to the golf course lawn store, go to lawn fertilizer, and there's a product that I believe, yeah, it's 48% um, sulfate of potash. So if you if you are, are, are deficient of potassium, this is a great product. I would not make this your primary fertilizer though. So if you if you are, again, very deficient, and you wanna give your lawn a good kick of potash to get things going, sure, um, go ahead and use that. But then I would use something like, well, Cumic Max is sold out, um, but something like Flag would be a good fertilizer to, to run on a, every four to six week uh, basis, if that makes sense. So I would not run um, straight potash all the time. Your lawn needs, your soil needs nitrogen and all, and all the other nutrients. But again, if you're very, very deficient based on your soil test results, you can use that to help bring, to kind of boost levels a little faster and then um, also go to a more balanced fertilizer that has a bit of everything in it. You know, on that topic, some of the questions I've gotten with Humic Max sold out and likely to remain sold out for the rest of the season, a question I've gotten from several viewers is what should they use as a substitute and what and at what rate? So I have a bag of flagship coming, but I can tell you guys now what the answer is gonna be. I'll tell you guys how to, how to figure it out. So um, when we were using Humic Max, right, it was a 1608. And I'll go back here, it was a 1608. So when we applied that at around five pounds per thousand, we got about just under half a pound of nitrogen, 0 0.8, 0 0.48 pounds of nitrogen to be exact, right? Um, with flagship, which is what I'm gonna tell you guys to start using until you know price of fertilizer drops and humic max isn't crazy expensive. Um, with this, you're simply going to apply this at two pounds per thousand. So the rate on the bag is three pounds per thousand, but Alan and the guys at Yard Mastery assume that you're primarily gonna be using this, you're not using the spoon feeding program that I recommend. So if you're using Yard Mastery, and if you do the math on that, so you take two and then, you, you multiply that by 0.24, which is 24%, which is the amount of nitrogen that's in a flagship, you come up with the exact same 0.48 pounds of nitrogen. So if you want to continue the spoon feeding program, you can use flagship at a lower rate, so two pounds per thousand, and you get essentially the same amount of nitrogen that you were getting in Humic Max. Now granted, you're not getting all the other benefits of Humic Max, like just Humic um, Acid, but there's nothing we can do about that at this time. So as a substitute for all you guys have been blowing up my email, asking me questions about what to use instead of Humic Max, go with Flagship and just run it at a lower rate if you are going to do the spoon feeding program like what I recommend. All right, great question. Thanks so much for that, Archie. On to VMA. She has a question, he says, I had an outbreak of sedges, of nut sedges. They were all over the lawn and everywhere. Fortunately, I have plenty of Celsius uncertainty to spray them with today. Yeah, so if all you have, VMH, are sedges, 
I would hold back on the Celsius. I mean, you can. Celsius is, is labeled to control um, a couple of sedges, but really certainty is, is the bee's knees. That's the Mac Daddy when it comes to sedge control. So unless you have something else you're trying to treat as well, I would just save the Celsius. Save, save that herbicide. It's expensive, right? So save that. Go down with a certainty, uh, you know, to two or, or so two to three scoops per gallon um, or per, sorry, per thousand square feet. Uh, for the spot spraying you're going to be doing will great, give you a great result. Make sure you use surfactant with it. I know you already know that and you already have some, but just for anyone else watching, uh, definitely always use surfactant whenever you use Celsius and or Certainty or both of them together. So save the Celsius, just go with Certainty, and it'll do a great job knocking out the sedges. Good stuff. All right, next up is Obadiah Camerling. He says, I put Celsius and Certainty out on Wednesday, looking forward to the results in seven to 10 days. Wondering if it'll be fine to mow in the morning. So you put it out on Wednesday, Wednesday, so yeah, um, Wednesday morning. So Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a few days. The longer you can give it, the better. But really, two days, two to three days is, an, is plenty of time, right? That's plenty of time. You can go ahead and, and mow now, and um, you're still going to get the benefits of, uh, of the herbicides. No, uh, no, issues, no issues with that at all. So good job, Obadiah, getting that down. And then also good job being patient on waiting to get your mow on. I know how tough that can be at times. I know how tough that can be. All right. Next up is Archie again. He has another question. He says, should should or would you recommend placing compost after leveling your lawn? So the answer is, if you ask me if, if you should ever put compost in your lawn, my answer is always going to be yes. There's, all, there's tons of benefits to it. If it could, but You have to go into it knowing that you're applying compost strictly for the benefit of improving soil quality um, by in, in trying to increase the amount of organic um, material in the in the lawn. But it's not it's not the best material uh, for leveling, you know, because I mean, it's going to break down. So you're going to end up not necessarily exactly where you started, but you're going to end up pretty close to where you started. So if, if your thing is I've leveled the lawn, I put down like a 70-30 blend, Archie, and now I just want to, you know, add some more compost to help feed and improve soil quality. Absolutely. I'm, I'm definitely a big, a huge fan of that. If you think about it, Essential G, right, which um, is compost and biochar and, you know, rec reclaim coffee grounds and a bunch of other good stuff, essentially is compost in a prill form. Granted, it's, it's compost and a bunch of other, and other you know, great stuff in there as well too. But because compost is very, how can you say this, labor intensive to spread on a regular basis, having it in a prill form is the, the beauty of Essential G. On that note, um, guys, in case you guys didn't realize, Essential G is finally back in stock. I said it live this morning, so you guys can order it. Go ahead and get it. Uh, we have a pretty good supply, but there's nothing that says it's gonna, it's gonna last. You guys have been buying it up like crazy, so thank you for that. And, uh, and just for anyone that was that has not heard as yet, because I posted it on YouTube, I've sent out an email, and I'm telling you here now. So if you want to get Essential G, you can get it. Um, I would go ahead and get that ahead of time. And same thing for Nutrisolve, also back in stock, finally. So And that one we have less of. So if you want, if you really need Nutrisolve, you want to get that um, more so than the ESG. All right, next up, Archie has another question. He says, how hard should we be pushing our grass growth? I wouldn't, when you say push grass growth, I don't, um, when I hear that, Archie, what I what I what I comes to mind is someone's going to like put an extra heavy um, dose of nitrogen down, or is, or is going to or is going to put you know more nitrogen than the grass really calls for. I'm I'm not really a fan of doing that. You know, if you're trying to get the lawn to recover from injury or something, and you want to go a little bit heavier, sure. But really, I'm a huge fan of just of figuring out how much and you want to feed the lawn per month, and just sticking to that. And then you're able to use products like Primo, like Plant Growth Regulator, to, to manage the growth, to help slow down growth, especially as temps get warmer. But I would not be um, I would not be pushing or adding excess nitrogen to get the grass to grow faster. You know, eight tenths to a pound of nitrogen. I tend to lean more towards that eight tenths um, rule from that area, so that 0.7 to 0.8. Uh, is plenty. That's plenty to, 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 to get your grass to grow and, and thrive and do very well, especially if you're also doing a lot of the biostimulants like the Essential G and, and the other other you know the other parts of the, of the program that really help make those nutrients that you're putting in regularly with fertilizer available. So you really don't need to, to put a, a, add a ton more. You know, pushing too much fertilizer, while I look for this other the next comment, pushing too much fertilizer is a great way to, to, to cause excess growth. It's a way to start you know, causing thatch problems in the lawn. Um, you can cause disease or you can help. You can you create conditions where disease is more likely to take root. So there's there's not really a ton of reasons to do it other than the lawn maybe fills in a little bit faster. But as a, as a matter of practice, I just really wouldn't recommend doing that. So hope that helps. If you have any other questions, let me know. And uh, we will uh, do our best to answer them. Fair Bermuda's Bermuda's in the, in the house. We got Daryl in the house. What's going on, Daryl? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. See, so you've been doing a lot of really good content. So keep it up, keep going. And guys, we have 
uh, Northeast Georgia YouTube royalty in the house. We have Alexander Lee, guys. He's hanging out with us tonight. You know, I'm sure he's got other things he'd be doing on a Friday night, but he decided to take a little bit of time, hang out in here, chat with you guys, you know, interact with, the, with, with everyone. Here's the thing, guys. Any of the videos where you see where the camera work is really extraordinary, it's Alex on the other end of it. So any of the videos that you guys see that you really like, that you say, oh, wow, the cinematography in this is really good. Like the guy, that the cameraman is doing a really good job following you. That's him. So uh, on that note, there's going to be a video that's going to go live tomorrow morning on this device that Robert Rainey talked me into getting that you guys have been, actually all of you guys have been harassing me about getting for years now. And I finally broke down and got one. One of those like rotary scissors, the still rotary scissors, um, those combi things, the RG, I think it's called. So that is going to go live tomorrow morning. So make sure you guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel that are in here, subscribe so you guys will be able to see that when it goes live tomorrow morning. It should be a fun video. I don't talk too much in it. I mean, well, I do talk, but you know me, I, I got to talk. But I, I, uh, I give you guys a nice montage of, of, of using that tool in all the places and ways that I think it makes a lot of sense to use it. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you do, let me know. If you don't, I'm sure you'll let me know too. All right. Next up is Joseph Roberts. He says, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Friday. I got my first cut in in five days in the six inches of rain we got in four days in a row. Wow, yeah, that's, that's, that is a ton, uh, Joseph. We didn't get quite that much here in Northeast Georgia. I mean, Alex and I were, were, were praying for more rain, but really what happened here is we would get like crazy heavy rainfall for 30 minutes, maybe, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes, and then it would lighten up. So it was a lot of rain, but it was, um, there was never a ton of it that came down all at once. I'll put it to you this way. My, my litmus test when the lawn has had enough water, when, there's, when we've gotten a lot of rain, is when I started getting small puddles in the back lawn. Now, granted, it's been aerated, but this time around, like even with all the rain we got, no puddles really formed. I think Alex got a very, very light one that quickly went away. Uh, so we got a lot of, we got water. I mean, the, the, the lawn got a good drink, but I, it's not what I would consider to be really heavy rain, a really good soaking. But I'm glad you got you're able to get out there and get your mow on. That is um, awesome, and uh, you know, I, I, hopefully, you're able to get more on a regular mowing cadence now that all the rain has stopped. All right, guys, let me run down here and grab a super chat really quick. I'm trying to do a better job about not um, missing those. So we got one here from John Rob Will. Thank you so much, sir. I really do appreciate the support. Super chat received. He just says, "Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday to you, uh, John. Thank you so much for the support. Thanks for kicking it off." You know, I always appreciate the Super Chats, guys. It helps pay for lights and cameras and all the other stuff you guys see on the channel. So I really do appreciate the uh, the support. I appreciate when you guys watch the content, obviously, too. But monetary support is also always cool. And John, Rob Will, you have the honor of being the show sponsor, the, first, the show sponsor right now. So thank you so much for that. And there you go. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. Okay, next up is Paco Guibes. Paco says, hey, Ron, some of us can't afford the more expensive fancy fertilizers there are out there. Would you recommend or what would you recommend for a normal homeowner who doesn't want to spend a ton on fertilizer? Um, I mean, I, here's the thing, Paco. I don't really consider the, the, the fertilizers that um, the, particularly the ones that we saw on the golf course lawn store uh, to be you know, particularly expensive, especially when you look at the application rates that you get out of them. So you figure a bag of pretty much, pretty much a general rule is most of the bags on the store will cover 15,000 square feet. Uh, if you're using flagship in my spoon feeding program, it'll be even, it'll be even more than that. It'd be closer to, what is that? Uh, quite, quite a bit more, almost a little over, almost 20,000 square feet. So a little bit over that. So quite a bit. Um, so there are fertilizers you can get at, you know, your big box stores. I can't really recommend one because I don't, I don't, I, I, the lot, whenever I go in there, I go to see what the price of Milo is and that's about it. I don't really look at any of the other fertilizers. I will tell you this though. Here's what you can do. Get a soil test because this is going to be the way you're going to be able to answer this question for yourself. Get a soil test. The one I recommend is the one from my soil. Based on your soil test results, simply go to, I mean, in the results that you get back, it's going to tell you what uh, your soil is deficient in, if anything. And it's also going to give you a fertilizer recommendation. It's going to have like a, you know, a number, a set of three numbers, like your, your NPK numbers. Just write those down, take a picture of them, whatever you want to do. And then simply go to uh, your big box store and see what they have that matches that or is pretty close to that. And that's a way that, you know, you can get fertilizers a bit more economical. The thing that, that buying fertilizers from the golf course lawn store that you're dealing with is you're paying for shipping. That's, that's the thing that makes the price of the fertilizers more expensive. Um, so, and there's not a ton really that, that I really, anyone else that sells fertilizer online can really do about that. Um, but, um, but per, um, 
for the coverage you get, the fertilizers really aren't expensive. I guess is what I'm trying to get to. So hopefully that helps. Again, a soil test, and then from those results, go to your big box store and find something that fits. I, there's not really one that I can recommend because, again, I don't, outside of Milo, I don't really look at the fertilizers at uh, the big box stores to be able to, to make you guys recommendations. I would say go get Flagship, or if you need a lot of potassium, go get Stress Blend, or the Triple 12 if you need a bit of everything. That would be my, my recommendation. All right, Archie, we are live, man. We are live. I know you were, you were saying, what's going on? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm slacking. Right, you're trying to get out, trying to get your uh, your your view on, get in here and get your questions in, and it was just before the show. I tend to do a bit of um, give it a little bit of time so people can see the live stream, come in. YouTube can do its thing, the algorithm can do its thing, and get people to uh, come in here and come hang out with us. On the note of the algorithm, guys, if you guys wouldn't mind, we've got 91 people in here right now, and there's only 31 likes. What's up with that? We could do better than that. I mean, this here's the thing, you know, hitting that like button ever so gently or hard, however you want to do it doesn't cost anything. You don't have to buy a bag of fertilizer. You don't do a super chat to do that. It's completely free. All it takes is a mouse move or a trackpad swipe and a tap. It's all it takes. And it's a free way for you to support the channel. Really helps me out. So if you guys wouldn't mind, I'd really, really appreciate it. All right, Paco Greaves is here. He says, I saw Sunnyland had a professional turf fertilizer that was half the price of all the other ones that seemed like it would do a good job. What do you think about that and other fertilizers? I think if you need a, if, if that formulation um, is is what your soil needs based on your soil test results. I think it's a great choice. The thing that you that you are um, that you're omitting whenever you buy fertilizer from one of the big box stores is shipping, right? So if you took the same fertilizer and we had to ship it to you, it's going to cost the same thing or more than what uh, the fertilizers that are on the golf course lawn store. So twenty four zero eleven is a good formulation if your soil needs a bit of nitrogen, a bit of potassium, which pretty much all soil needs those. Should be good to go. Should be good to go. I, I would just watch and read on the label if it's whether it's um, like what percentage of it is, is slow or quick release, depending on what, what you're trying to do. If you're trying to just to use just that as uh, for feeding the lawn, um, you know, you want you may want something that's a little bit slower. If you're going to do if you're going to do a um, like a blended program where you can also do liquids, you may want something that's going to release a bit faster. But on the bag, on the label, it will tell you what percentage of it is slow or quick release fertilizer. All right. Next up is Justin. Aguilar. Justin is up next. He says, happy Friday, Ron. What would you recommend to loosen up the dry clay soil under Bermuda? I use a pro plugger and notice how hard and dry my soil is after two inches. I've aerated my lawn uh, three weeks ago with air eight and also used air eight. Um, so you did a lot of the things I would recommend. It sounds like Justin. So uh, you, I imagine you watered before you aerated, but you watered, you aerated, and it sounds like you're using um, some technology or some of the some of the, the products that will help. Um, you know that what they call the liquid aeration products, right? So really, it's just outside of that. As far as um, improving soil quality, the next thing I'm going to say, the next step, next tier, and it is a big it is a big jump, is to consider top dressing your lawn. You know you've done you know you've done a lot of the right stuff. If you want to do another aeration here in another month or so, that's gonna that's gonna help. But really. Um, you know, getting a nice 70-30 blend of, of sand soil mix in there to kind of help just improve the quality of the soil profile a little bit closer to the surface is going to do a lot for you. I mean, there's, there's, there's tons of benefits to top dressing outside of just, uh, you know, loosening up dry, compacted soil. Like, I mean, the biggest thing that I got out of it is drainage. Like the ability of water to not stay on the surface and just kind of pull water away from the surface, it got way better after top dressing. So that'd be the next thing I would say. As far as products, there's people that like to put gypsum down. They say that helps with relieving compaction. Um, and then uh, the only other thing I say is like another aeration, right? But then, then, but then you have to go through the whole idea of or the whole process of the lawn having to recover and, and from all that injury. So, if you're going to do another aeration, I would stack a top dress along with it because that's also going to yield benefits that all the things I recommend I, I recommended and saved already and more. So, hope that helps. You, you're doing all the right things. You know, you can just do another one and per perhaps consider top dressing. Big fan of that. Great time of year right now to do it. A lot will bounce back quickly. All right, next up is Cal. Cal says, hey, Ron, listening on my drive from um, North Carolina to CLE, I think Cleveland, is that Cleveland, I think? Any chance you can have the stream going for nine hours? Uh, touch the like button ever so gently, everyone. Nine hours would be a bit much. A couple weeks ago, we got to five hours and that was a lot. That was a lot. You know, that was seven to midnight, which is... A long, a long, long time to be talking about grass. 
But uh, nine hours might be a bit much. Maybe maybe one day we could try a marathon or something and, and see. But I don't. I mean, it'd be like it'd be you, Cal, and like me, being like three other people. No one's gonna hang around for all that. All right, uh, you're very very welcome, I'm Paco. Thanks so much. I, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Really do appreciate all the love and support. Next up is Z. Z says, "Hello, Ron. Can you talk a little bit about MSM turf versus the Celsius and Certainty combo? Thanks. I've learned a, a lot from your videos." Yeah, so um, so MSM Turf, I mean, it's a decent product. It's a it's it's really at a different price point than Celsius and Certainty. Um, from what I understand, uh, if memory serves me right, it doesn't target POA, um, and you can spray it, I believe, on some cool season grass. Like I think you can spray it on uh, on Kentucky bluegrass and maybe fescue. Check the label though. I don't, that one I don't have on the top off the top of my head that well, but it's but it is one that you can use on both warm on certain warm season grass and certain cool season grass. So that's a benefit if you care about that. The thing about MSM, I'll say, is that it's often not labeled for use in a lot of states. So for a product that I'm going to talk about and tell people to go use that is also going to produce great results, um, you know, the Celsius Certainty Combo for me, because I'm mainly a warm season guy, is what I really recommend. Another thing, I don't believe MSM Turf targets sedges. I might be wrong on that. Someone fact check me if I'm wrong on that, but I believe it doesn't do sedges either. So no POA, which is what everyone in the South really hates early in the season. And sedges, which is what everyone in the South hates, like like starting now and throughout the entire summer once we got start getting rain, right? So the the, the some of the big problem child or children uh, that we really care about in warm season grass, it does not target. So that is um, why I'm not a huge fan of it. Plus, people can't, you know, it's it's limited in the places where you can actually get it. So. Hope that helps. You know, again, it's really not fair to compare those two because Celsius and Certainty are another tier, in my opinion, as far as one in cost and also in effectiveness, right? As far as what they target, um, how they are on the turf, as far as not, you know, no discoloration or limited discoloration, those types of things. So they're just they're completely different tiers of herbicide, in my opinion. Uh, but the one benefit that MSM does have is that you can you can use it on both cool and warm season turf if that matters to you. Uncertain cool, cool, cool and warm season turf. So check check the label on that. Um, but I believe that's correct about that product. All right, next up is Ted Patterson. He says, hey, Ron, I received the Primo Max from you today. Awesome, glad it made it safe. These days, the mail carriers and playing soccer with and football with, uh, with packages. I don't know why. <laughs> he says, uh, thanks, I'll apply in about two weeks when the zoysia has recovered from leveling. Any issues with applying triple Ted fast release a few days before? No, not, not at all. Uh, again, that that triple ten, I imagine, is going to be a um, it's a granular. When you apply the uh, the primo, you're going to want to use a liquid fert along with that. You want to use a liquid fert along with that. So it's um, you know, it's to to help with the the slight tip burn that you can get from applying plant growth regulator. For, the, for those of you who don't know what what um, what uh, Todd or Ted is is talking about. Primo Max, this is the, the plant growth regulator that I use on my lawn, and we, we carry that in the golf course lawn store. Um, so yeah, so yeah, Ted, what you're, what you're trying to do, there should be no issues with that uh, whatsoever. Obviously, watch your rates. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you, a triple 10 is not a ton of nitrogen, but watch how much you're putting down, and then also make sure that whatever you're mixing with the Primo, you're also putting that down at a modest rate. It doesn't take very much to help prevent the, uh, the tip burn issue that I'm talking about. Um, if you've got uh, Turfplex, that can work. If you've got uh, 901C and Nutrizolve, those two can work. That's the combination I'm doing. But if you want one product that will do it all, uh, Turfplex is a good option uh, for you. So hope that helps. If you have any other questions, uh, let me know in the comments below. Let me know. All right, guys, I think I already told you guys that Nutrizolve is also back in stock along with Essential G, right? Because I did tell people I would tell them that on the live stream that uh, that that is the uh, that that's the case that is back in stock. So um, those of you that have been wanting to get Nutrisolve, get it now. You know, one other thing I, I told you guys I would update you on, and it's a bit early, but I told you guys I, I would uh, you know give you feedback as far as how the lawn has been doing with uh, changing up how I apply Primo Max. Normally, uh, the label calls for one application at you know the rate for your particular type of grass once per month. That lasts for three to four weeks, and uh, you get a pretty good result doing that. So what I've been doing here is I have gone half rate every couple of weeks. And I have to tell you guys, I'm, I'm, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. Uh, when I do that, I'm not seeing, you know, the, I mean, the tip burn when you use fertilizer is actually is fairly mild, but um, I'm not seeing any at all. And the grass just looks, it, it looks really good. I was thinking that with, with going at half rate, um, it might not regulate as well. It might 
come out of regulation, um, you know, within a, within a couple of weeks, and I haven't seen any of that. So it's been it's been working fairly well. I'm going to do my next application uh, this weekend. Um, so so my beginning of June uh, Primo app will be this weekend. Carbon Kit, um, Essential G, all that will go down this weekend. So uh, so yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm liking that. So if any of you guys are, are considering toying with it again, I'm going to do some more testing. I'm going to I'm going to call it good if by mid-June we're still smooth sailing. But so far, I'm really liking what I'm seeing with going that half rate uh, every couple of weeks. All right, next up is Paco Guibes. He's back. He says, hey, Ron, curious, how long did it take for you to get your lawn to a place where people would envy it? Also, how many of your neighbors have asked you how to make their lawns great? What do you tell them? Um, so how long did it take you to get my lawn to a place where people would envy it? I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. It's, uh, but as far as saying where I, the lawn looked good and really, I, I mean, where I was happy with it, where I could say, yeah, it definitely stands out among the lawns in the neighborhood. After the second top dressing, so there's after you've been following the channel season three, we're in season seven now. So it's like season three-ish is when I say, oh, wow, starting to look, starting to look pretty decent. But every year it's gotten better. Like every year, a little bit of, you know, the top dressing and fixing the small areas and, you know, just imp also improving the nutrient program. And just, just overall, just improving it, you know, just, just keeping refining things over and over and over, it is getting better. But you, I, I would say that if you follow what we did on Alex's lawn, the Fix My Ugly Lawn series, literally that was uh, a test of saying how quickly can we go take a lawn from, from zero to hero? And the answer is about three months. Three months um, it, thereabouts is about what it takes. And that is with doing like everything. That's, you know, making sure you got irrigation, you're using the carbon program, your you're soil testing, you're doing the fertilization based on the soil test, and you are mowing. The one thing that Alan that that, that, that Alex does um, is when I'm not mowing, he's out mowing. Or if we get our schedules off, if I'm mowing one day, he's mowing the following day. He doesn't miss his mowing schedule. He's really, really good about that. So that's a huge part about getting a lawn or creating a lawn that, you know, your neighbor's that your neighbors will envy. You know, our little our little catch line in the store, you know, the be the envy of the neighborhood. The way you get that is through following a methodical approach and then also being very, very consistent with your cultural practices. Most important, mowing. So, so yeah. As far as um, what, when my, when my neighbors ask them what, to, what it takes, I tell them to go watch the Fix My Lee Lawn series, the same thing I tell most people on YouTube. And I also tell them when, it's, when someone comes up to me and says, hey, I want a lawn just like yours, I smile and say, do you really know what you're asking for? Because the amount of work that it takes um, from a mainly a time standpoint of, of consistent mowing um, is, is not something that most people really either want to do or realize that's what it takes, right? So you figure, you know, maintaining a lawn at an inch is not terribly bad. You can normally do that around tw two mowings per week. But once you get down to three quarters of an inch where I am right now, five eighths, you know, 0.65 um, uh, height of cut, you got to be out there every other day and you have to enjoy it. You, it's one of these things where you have to enjoy doing it. You have to enjoy being out in the lawn. It has to be your thing uh, for it to really work. So for most people or for a lot of people, not, you know, present company accepted, obviously, um, most of them, when I say that that's what it's going to take at least twice a week mowing, they're like, eh, I can't, I can't do that. And I say, that's fine. There's no problem with that. Mow your lawn taller, go inch and a half mow it, you know, once a week thereabouts, and it's going to look, it's going to look all right. But really <laughs> mowing is the thing that, that you take everything else I'm talking about, the fertilization, the biostimulants, um, like everything else. That's what ties it all together and produces a lawn that is awesome. So hope that helps answer your question, Paco. And if you have anything else, let me know, let me know. All right. Next up is Jason T. Jason says, Ron, you got to start a small putting green on your backyard. A couple of problems with that. I'd have to mow even more than I do now. I'd have to mow literally every day because you know me, if I'm going to do it, I want it to be nice. And that's what it really takes to have a putting green, uh, stay not get nice and stay nice. And I, I mean, I tell you, man, like last year mowing every single day for two months about killed me. I mean, it was, it was, be, it was starting to not be fun. And as soon as, soon as it starts to not being fun, time to change. Right. So granted a green would be less to cut. So there is that, but also, unless I'm going to make a green that's perfectly flat, which those kind of greens are, are fairly boring, right? If you're going to do a green, you want to put some undulations in it, some rolls, a little crest to kind of, you know, you can play with your, your lines when you're putting on it. To really do that right, I'm going to need something with a floating head, which mean, would mean a different mower because the, I mean, the flat, the, uh, the 1600 would do a decent job, but really you'd want a floating head mower to really, really get that nice and tight, especially if you're going to build out some contours and whatnot on the green, right? So I'm just not ready for that level of commitment just yet, 
Might happen one day, but not definitely not this season. Definitely not this season. So that's a, that's another level. You know, that's the um, it's funny. I was talking to a friend of mine that is um, he's a former greenskeeper, and he said, you know, Ron, you know, the one thing you always say in your live streams is the more the lower you go, the more you have to mow. But he says, really, you should say the more the lower you go, the more you have to do. So it's not only just mowing. Like the fertilization is 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 more intense. The fungicide program for greens is more intense. Just in general, is they just they're just more work because you're forcing grass to do something that naturally it doesn't really want to do. So it just takes a lot more work. So the lower you go, the more you have to more you have to do to make it make it look nice. So I'm not quite ready for that level of commitment yet. I mean, it would make it difficult for me to make content on YouTube and other and like my other job, like all my other stuff that I do. So I gotta gotta balance things. I gotta pick my battles. But I I appreciate the suggestion, but not just yet. Next up is um, Brick Rehab. He says, Ron, you're going to make this short tonight. I need you in Fort Worth and rested by, se <laughs> by 7 a.m. We have five yards to spread. Only five yards? Ah, won't take too long. Uh, five yards would be, uh, that's for, for two people, it's rough. Really, to do five yards manually, you want, you want three people. Four would be great, but you really need three. So you need one person that's out there that's on rake duty, just that's sitting there working the leveling mix in. You need another guy that's that's loading the wheelbarrow, and another guy that's transporting. And then the guy, the one that's loading and trans and moving the wheelbarrow, they can trade off. You don't want to have the same person loading and moving the wheelbarrow. It's going to wear them out. So if you can get three people, that works well. Four even better. But you that, but that way you guys can rotate between the different jobs as you get tired. But uh, that is. Um, that's yeah, five yards, not terrible, but it's it's gonna be a workout. It's gonna be a workout. All right, next up is John Williams. He says, "Hey, Mr. Ron, look forward to your show. Uh, I like and subscribe, uh, like and subscribe you all. Yeah, thank you for that, John. I really do appreciate that. You know, the likes and subscribes definitely do help. They definitely, 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 absolutely do help. So I uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it." And then next up is Mr. John Gleaves. He says, uh, Ron, how long would you delay aeration after spraying Celsius and Certainty Combo? I, I don't know, I'm trying to think. I, I wouldn't really, let me think about this. So I'd want to give it ample time for the weeds to take it up. So if you did it, if you sprayed tomorrow morning, so Saturday morning, and you wanted to aerate, I don't know, if you want to aerate Monday, Monday or Tuesday, that's fine. But really, it's not It's not like it's pre-emergent or anything, right? So, um, I would I would give it a couple of days if I could, uh, Todd. I'd give it a couple of days because that way, when you go through and you injure the turf through the aeration process, you know you're going to be more likely to damage and kill the weeds. You want to give them enough time to absorb the the herbicide prior to uh, to aerating. So I'd give it a couple of days. I say the same rule that applies for mowing. Give it a few days after applying it. Same thing would apply for uh, for aeration. So hope that helps. Hope that helps. Guys, on the topic of top dressing, I got to show you guys um, something cool here. Can I? Well, actually, I'm going to show you guys on the topic of of, um, of mowers, and we'll get through one of the things I want to talk about. So, Rusty, Rusty's uh, creations sent me some some um, some pictures of a mower that he created, and I told him everyone I would show it off because I told him I would show it off because it's really awesome. So, check this out. This is like a um, it's almost like a steampunk mower. If you had to, if you had, to, if you, had to um, you know put a picture on it, but look, check that out. I think he's done this on some of the groups too. But that is like a Fiskars that he has turned into an electric mower. So that's picture one. Uh, check this out. Pick two. You got it Ryobi powered, which is really cool. And then uh, the next picture here, you can see a side shot. That's pretty clean engineering, man. It's it's uh, it's kind of steampunkish. You know, I dig it. I dig it. It's really cool. You got to put your branding on there, man. You uh, you do you do good work. So yeah, it's, I told him I'd show it off. It's a really cool mower, cool project. I, he's got to send me a video at some point of it running, so I'll show you guys that too. But I just wanted I told him I would share that on the live stream because it's a really really cool project. You know, it really shows you with a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of engineering, uh, what you can put together. So very cool, Rusty. Keep going. Next up is Two Trilla. It says Happy Friday, everyone. What's going on, Two Trilla? Thanks for coming to hang out in. The live stream, we got McNasty um, Motorsports. He says, early for once, you are, you're here, man. You're not here, you're not, you know, towards the second half of the show, which is which is pretty awesome. And then Sea Dog 1499 says, let's get ready to rumble. All right, happy Friday, everyone. Yeah, Sea Dog, thanks for uh, for coming to hang out. So guys, on the topic of mowers, and this is one of the things I was gonna show you guys, but so, but and here's the thing, really, if you're not a subscriber, you're gonna miss out on this. But the time has come for some new hardware, for some additional hardware. 
I'm not gonna tell you guys exactly what it is, but any of you guys that are that know me can probably have an idea, you can probably figure out what it's gonna be. The people that are gonna find out about it first will likely be the people that are in um, the Lawn Academy, so they'll find out. And then anyone that subscribes to my YouTube stories will also see it. So if you're not subscribed to me on YouTube, do that, and then you'll be able to see on mobile whenever I, uh, I start showing it off, uh, whenever it shows up, uh, hopefully, by the middle of next week. Hopefully by the middle of next week. Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, it should be here. So, um, so I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. I think you guys will like it. It's, um, it was a, uh, it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty big upgrade. It's actually a big upgrade. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a different direction than what I am currently doing, but uh, I think it'll make for some cool content. I think you guys will, will, will dig it. And it's where everything is eventually going. Hint, hint. So, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get on board with that. All right, next up is Luis Rodriguez. He says, good evening, everyone. What's going on, Luis? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. And then Big Bro says, uh, Jeremy says, Big Bro, Os, I know you're enjoying those rotary scissors. Mm -hmm. They are pretty awesome, Jeremy. Uh, that's kind of a spoiler, right? But if you want to see, you know, a footage, some footage, some cool footage of me running the rotary scissors, check out uh, the video that's gonna come out tomorrow morning. It's gonna, it's gonna go live, it's already done, uh, but it's gonna go live tomorrow morning, showing off that being used in the scenarios that I find that those really excel at, okay? So uh, check that out, it's gonna go live um, early tomorrow morning when you guys wake up, it'll likely be in your feed on the homepage saying, hey, Ron has released a video and you guys will click and watch the entire thing. I'd really appreciate it. So you'll be able to see. All right, uh, thanks Jackie Bear, hope you're doing well, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out. And then next is Troy Ridley. He says, hi, Ron. I have to make my own topsoil. The landscaping place I went to only has screened loam or brown masonry sand. I got two bags of each to spot top dress the front and mix myself. Yeah, that might be an option. You know, it's, um, you know, if you're doing a small area or doing spot top dressing like what you're, you're talking about, Troy, uh, that's definitely an option. I have never mixed a large amount. Like in other words, I've never gotten like three bags or three yards of sand, of masonry sand, and like a yard of compost and then mix them together. That would be, that'd be rough. That'd be a lot of work. You'd almost have to do it a couple of days, maybe the week prior to the actual top dressing because that in of itself is a ton of work. So if, for what you're doing though, where you're doing a, you know, just some spot top dressing, that should be absolutely fine. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be too bad. And frankly, I don't know that I would, I would have gone through all the trouble of getting like a ton of it brought to your uh, you know, to your house if you, all you're doing is some spot leveling work. Robbie Marie says, what's up, Ron? Happy Friday, what's going on, Robbie? Thank you for coming to hang out. And he says, Ugh, only wish, uh, if I only had the big yellow bag mix here. Yeah, man, that, that Super Sod um, product is, is a really good product. I'm a fan of it because um, it's, it's just clean. Like one of the, for someone that top dresses their lawn, you know, at least annually, but more, more than most, I cannot stress how nice it is to not have to spend a bunch of time getting trash out of the lawn. Because, you know, a lot of these lovely mixes you get, you're gonna get a lot of debris, sticks, bark, stones, and you have to get that stuff out of the lawn, especially if you're real mowing, because it'll tear up your reel and bed knife. You know what I mean? So you just, you, it's, it's like another step that when you go with the super sod mix, you really don't have to deal with that. So for that reason alone, even though it's more expensive, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of it. Huge fan of it. So, you know, if any of you guys are still um, looking to top dress your lawn, Super Sod is still running that special um, where you can, I think you'll save like 10 bucks um, a bag if you use my uh, discount code, my link. So if you're interested in doing that, I'll post it in the chat. You guys can uh, can take advantage of that. So for anyone that still wants to top dress, still plenty of time in the season to do it. Um, top dressing link. Um, you can use that. And it's a free way for free to support the channel. It doesn't cost you any more, but I get a very small percentage, very small percentage of that. So thanks so much for uh, for the support. Okay, next is Z. He's back. He says, I was doing some manual aerating this past week and hit a patch of rocks about two to four inches down. Yeah, that's not good. No bueno. Ended up digging up with a wheelbarrow, a wheelbarrow full, a plastic cap, and a cigarette box. Hello, well, you got your money's worth. Whenever you are, were digging, you didn't just get like a couple of rocks. You got a bit of everything. And that's the thing, guys. You know, the last year when I was over at um, Alex's brother-in-law's uh, neighbor, it's like a, it's a long thing. Like my my brother's sister's best friend's cousin, right? Uh, we were over at his house, and he had a, an area in the lawn where grass was just thin. It just it looked it just you know he it was watering it, he was mowing it, but it just looked thin, looked really weird. And I said, man, you know, let's let's check it with a screwdriver. We got a screwdriver, and literally it went like this much in the soil, like clunk, and it was like you know poking around. 
And if you guys want to see what came out, I think I've still got the video somewhere here on the channel. I think it's still on here. You guys can check that out where you can see what came out of uh, out of the lawn. It's crazy um, how common that is. You know, for new construction, unfortunately, a lot of the builders, you know, they just, they I guess it's just easier for them just to, to throw like the wash out the concrete, um, you know, just into the lawn and not get rid of it versus um, versus like cleaning up and conditioning the, um, the the area really well before putting sod down and you get the kind of problems like what you're like what you're talking about Z. Uh, I'll show you guys the link to that. Yep, I put that here trash in lawn video. I mean, obviously just bookmark that and watch it later stick on the live stream. But if you guys want to see what can come out of a lawn, uh, you will like that. Good stuff, but well, I'm glad you found it, man, and glad that you are you got it all out, which is really cool. Uh, next up, we uh, we have uh, Todd saying, six inches of rain here in Oklahoma from this past Monday through Wednesday. That's awesome, awesome, Todd. And then Mary J says, hi from Tijuana. Hey, hi, uh, Mary, thanks for coming to, to hang out. It's very cool that you know, the, the uh, content is having a little more international reach. I mean, Mexico is really close to the United States. It's not super international, but still, I appreciate it. So thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. Lawn, lawn care fans and lawn care people are everywhere, right? Which is really, really cool, really cool. LG's in the house, says, hey, Ron Henry. Hey, LG, how you doing, sir? Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully you're getting some good weather up there in uh, the Northwest where you are. So I hope all is going well. Next is John Williams. He says, my soul test is in. My pH is a little low, 5.8, and my magnesium is low. So do you carry something for that? Okay, so John, I do carry a product that will help raise pH, but if you, um, you know, for the fact that your magnesium is also low, you're going to want to go with a dolomitic lime to help bring that up. So the, uh, the Jonathan Green product is a good product, uh, but if you are, if you're really trying to apply a lot of lime, for, for that, for the, those levels, I'd probably go like 20, 30 pounds per thousand. You know, uh, if you can find a local, uh, you know, the big box store is probably not going to have it, but like a local like garden store, or like a site one or something like that nearby, they will, or like a, some kind of landscaping place, they will have dolomitic lime, which is what you're looking for. And that will, um, that will help, that will help raise your pH and also help raise uh, magnesium levels as well. So I can also, but I can show you in case you feel like supporting the channel and you still feel like going out and getting a bunch, you know, several bags of, uh, of lime. If you go to the golf course lawn store, actually, let me do this live so you can see it. So you go to the store, go to shop, go to uh, soil test kits and pH adjustment, and you scroll down. And then what you will want is the black bag of um, Magic Cow, which will help raise pH. So make sure you read it. This one raises, this one's lower. So this is for alkaline soil. This one is for acidic soil, like what yours is. And this is what you would use on, on your lawn, all right? I'm not sure if this has magnesium in it. If it does, it's going to be a very small amount. Let me see if I can see here on the label. Uh, I'm trying to find here. So, yeah, so no. So, yeah, so there's no no magnesium from what I'm seeing that I'm seeing here in the, in the label on that. It might, well, let me see here. Wrong spot, wrong spot. Yeah, so a bit of iron, but no magnesium. So, yeah, so really, if you're really trying to get something that's going to, that's going to fit your lawn best, fit your soil best, go with the dolomitic lime. You know, we don't carry it, but I, I want you to use the best product um, for your soil, um, even more so than I want you to, you know, to buy something from me. So the, you can use that product, it's gonna be fine, but if you can get yourselves on a, your, your hands on a dolomitic lime, that's gonna be even that much better. So that's what I'd recommend. Find a local garden store, get that down your lawn, 20 to 30 pounds per thousand, watered in heavily and profit. Good stuff. All right, we have another super chat. Let me run down here and grab that really quick from Mr. LG. Super chat received. He's happy Friday, Ron. Perfect day in Iowa today. Smash that tango B. I got you. I got you. I can do that for you. And since you, I think your super chat was higher, you are now the show's sponsor. So you can listen to a little tango bolero while I switch you out. All right. So there you go. LG is now the show's sponsor. And I have found where I left off. Aim to please, LG. Hopefully you enjoyed your little tango bolero. All right, next up is Jonathan Daza. He says, Ron, I live in Los Angeles and I have tall fescue, tall type fescue. I sent you an email in regards to my lawn. How do you treat hot spots? I have manually aerated and added hydrotain to help. What else can I do? Thank you. I, I do have your, your email uh, pulled up here, Jonathan. I haven't written you a response yet, but I do have it. I think I, I, if a person I'm thinking about 
who's also from LA and has some areas in the lawn where the, it's got, it looks like the lawn looks dry to me from what I'm seeing. Uh, and then, yeah, you're the same person. So I'm not, you didn't say, I know you said you, you're, you're putting down an inch of water. You did the, the, the tuna can test, but it looks like I would, I would check to make sure the, like the, when your irrigation's running, that those areas that are dry are getting water because the, the pattern that I saw, it looks like, um, like if this is your lawn, it's all, and this is the sidewalk. It almost looks like, almost like a, like a, a slight curve, a slight arch to it, right? Almost like when the irrigation is running, it's not really getting water in the area where you're having the, uh, the localized uh, dry spot areas. Next thing you can do is just, just add some water, just do some supplemental watering yourself. Get out there with a garden hose, put some water down on it. Hydrotain is also great. That's gonna help as well too, but we just gotta get some water on the lawn. Uh, the thing to keep in mind too, with you being in LA, it's hot. You know, that's, the weather is, is, is um, temperature's hotter there. So fescue is, we're entering into the time of year when fescue does struggle more than it would have say a month ago, right? Or, or two months ago. So check your irrigation, even though you said you're watering enough, you're putting out an inch of water, make sure that you're get that water is actually getting to those areas that I saw in those pictures that looked a bit dry. Cause the, the pattern is so, um, how can I say this? The, 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 the pattern, it, it, there's a pattern to it. It's not like just like localized dry spots that are, that are sporadic throughout the lawn. It looks almost like irrigation. That's not hitting that area to me. So hope that helps outside of that, outside of the hydrotain, just do some spot watering in that area. If that's, um, you know, if, if to see if that helps, but also realize we're also going into a time of year when that type of grass tends to struggle. Like the, the local churches around here that do that have fescue, they are going to be running. They have like they have a pond, but they they're going they're going to be running irrigation every day to keep that happy. So there is that to also consider as well too, given that we're getting into the the hotter time of the year. All right, next up is Mac042. He says, good evening and thanks for all your help with Bermuda Sod uh, 24419. It's doing well two weeks in. Question, when do I put down the carbon kit? Uh, whenever you want, uh, Mac. So if you have brand new sod, you can do the carbon kit the day you install the new sod. There's no issue with doing that whatsoever. Uh, especially if you're using the, um, the release zero version of it, the, the release 901C. Uh, version of the carbon kit, I might just back the rate down a little bit, you know, go again, closer to that two ounce um, rate for the 901C if you don't want to add nitrogen to brand new sod. But if you're using the carbon kit that has really zero in it, you're putting in like a, let me I'll tell you exactly how much of what you're putting in. Really the only NPK that you're putting down is in the nutri product. So you're putting down 1% nitrogen, 1% phosphorus and 4% potassium. So all good stuff uh, for brand new grass. It's not enough to damage or burn the lawn. I, I would get it down. I would absolutely put it down. There's nothing, no reason to uh, to hold back on that uh, at all. So good stuff. Congrats on the new uh, Tiffway, on the new lawn. And yeah, I would apply your carbon kit. I'd get that down. Next up is Austin. I'm going to butcher this, but I'm going to try it. Austin Ostriker. Ostriker. I think Ostriker. I'm going to say Ostriker. I'm going to try. I'll try my best. This is my soil test said I need a triple tent fertilizer for my Bermuda. Do I only use that until the next soil test says different? So what I would do... Here's the thing, until I see your results, Austin, without seeing your results, it's difficult to tell you how long to use it. Really a triple 10, I would use that until the phosphorus levels came up. So if your phosphorus levels were just a little bit low, you could use a triple 10 for you know two months or so. And then if you wanted to switch to something that, to a fertilizer that was that was devoid of phosphorus, you could do that. So if you wanted to use like a flagship or, um, or some other you know X0X fertilizer, uh, that would be fine too. So for me, how long you apply that really comes down to uh, how phosphorus deficient your soil is. That's that's what I would use as the decision maker as far how long I applied um, that that particular fur. Because the other the rest of it, the the nitrogen and the, and the potassium, you can get that in a host of other products. But the triple the the triple ten that's going to contain the phosphorus that the other fertilizers that I'm talking about are not going to contain. So uh, hope that helps. If you want to, you can send me an email with your soil test results here to Ron at golfcourselawn.com. I'll take a look at it and I'll, I'll tell you then you know, how long I would, I would run that triple 10 for. But a couple of months is what I would say. A couple of months and then if you want to reassess at that point, you can. Good stuff. Good stuff. Next up is Jeff Ruby. He says, hey, Ron, I have a 27 inch true cut and needing to lube the chain and grease the mower. What lube and grease would you recommend and how often would you apply it? So uh, the chain, 
uh, that's the, actually the only failure I've ever had with a true cut. Uh, Jeff was the second year when I had it. I the end of the first year I put it up and I didn't like winterize it or anything. I didn't like put any lubricant on the chain on the chain before putting it up. And then I took it out the next season and just started mowing with it. Um, so don't do that. So the I, I'd say as far as the um, the the motorcycle spray. Every couple of weeks is a good idea, especially if you are mowing like how I mow, which is early in the morning when there's a little bit more moisture. Um, so every couple of weeks is when I would do that. As far as the grease points, once a month is is sufficient. You really don't need to do much more than that. But the True Cut for the most part is a fairly maintenance-free mower. Outside of that motorcycle chain lube, um, you know, every couple of weeks, if you're mowing in the morning, if you're not really mowing in the morning or you're mowing primarily on dry turf, once a month, you can you can do them both at the same time. You can you can spray the chain and hit your grease points at the same time. As far as um, again, as far as the chain lube, I would use motorcycle. I would use the uh, the kind of lube that's designed for motorcycles, like motorcycle chains. That's what I would use on it. That's what I use on mine. As far as grease, um, I have a grease from Toro, but it's like um, I don't know. Just go go to your local. It, it's not really that picky. It doesn't really, I don't think it really matters. I just have a heavy grease that I got from, um, you know, it comes in the tube. I have a, a grease gun. I don't have a particular brand of grease that I um, that I went with. It's one one I have is from Toro, so I would I can't show you now because it's in the grease gun right now. It would make a mess to do it. Uh, but I, what I would say is call your local, you know, your local Howard Brothers or your local um, company that that sells and or services. True cuts or just real mowers in general, and ask them what grease you'd recommend. They'd recommend, and you know they're probably gonna recommend one they sell, but they'll be able to tell you one that they would use. It's not terribly picky, but uh, but I would just ask them. The one I have is the one from Toro, which I'm sure someone makes that for Toro. I don't know who you know. I don't know what the formulation of that grease is, but that's what I run in all my mowers. Hope that helps. Great stuff. Next up is R. Reed. He says, "Hey Ron, how's it going? How's everybody else doing? I'm doing well, man. I can't complain." Cannot complain. I'm happy. We finally got some rain in the lawn. The, the lawn is a lot happier. Is much, 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 much happier. The grass is much happier. If you guys want to see what it looks like, the intro to the view video that's going live tomorrow morning is from a couple days ago when I took a pan of the lawn. Uh, that's when I took that that portion and inserted into the video for the uh, the rotary scissors. So if you want to see the, the opening scene is what the lawn looks like as of like two days ago. So uh, so yeah, it looks. I'm, I'm happy with about that. And happy about the new hardware, man. I'm, I'm happy to uh, to try out a new adventure. No equipment currently is going away. We'll see. We'll assess at the end of the season what I end up um, keeping, what I end up um, going, what, what ends up staying, what ends up going. But if you guys want to see what it's going to be, hang out and uh, watch the YouTube stories the middle of the week. That's when it's going to be. That's when you'll find out about it. Be a, it, be a, being a subscriber helps with being notified for that. Or you can always just wait until I make some content on it, which I will at some point. May not be next week, but um, so I want to do a nice job on it. But uh, but yeah, if you guys care about that, be, be sure to be subscribed to the channel. Okay, next up is Keith McGuire. Keith says, Hi, hey Ron, this is my first time seeing you live. Welcome Keith, thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate it. And he says, I'm in Centerville, Georgia. What should I start with if I have a new homeowner, lots of shade, Four hours of sun between 10 and 10 to 3 p.m., Keith. Man, that's that's going to be a struggle, Keith. So you didn't tell me what kind of grass you have, but I hope you're going to tell me that it's not Bermuda. Really, you know, four hours of sunlight, even Zoysia is going to have, is going to have some trouble with that. If you have, um, you know, I don't know what kind of grass you have, but if you have Bermuda and it's thin, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised by that. If there's anything you can do to help get some more light on the sun, on the uh, on the grass, that's going to be the big thing I would tell you. So yeah, I mean, outside of that, yes, get a soil test done, fertilize according to the soil test, um, mow your lawn a lot, you know, control weeds using the herbicides that are that match the weeds that you have. But if we're really getting down to the fundamentals of of getting your grass to really do well to really thrive, the first thing you told me, which is you're only having four hours of sunlight, is something we're going to want to address. I would imagine that that's coming from trees because I can't I can't see why your house would would only uh, would only would block out that much sunlight that you only get four hours unless your houses are really close together. So that's thing one. You know that's that's the thing I would I would focus on first. If there's a way for you to open up the canopy, get some more direct light on the lawn, that's going to make a huge difference because it's going to make everything else that we do work better. You know what I mean? What's going to happen if you don't do that is you're going to get a soil test, you're going to fertilize the lawn, you're going to mow it, and it's just never going to really do well because grass needs sunlight. It needs a lot of direct sunlight. 
So that would be my homework for you is to look into ways of increasing the amount of light that's getting on the lawn. You know, you're still early in the live streams. So if you want to follow up with letting me know, hey, there's no way I can do that or this is what I'm dealing with and here, what do you recommend as far as methods for doing that? I'll revisit it. But that's going to be my big thing for you as far as um, as far as on the journey of getting an amazing lawn is increasing the amount of light that you, that you can put on the lawn. Outside of that, you're going to be like how a lot of the homes in Buckhead are. Like a lot of those homes in, um, where they have these really, these neighborhoods with these really huge trees, really large established trees. Um, they have, a lot of those guys are running fescue for their lawns. They have, they have a fescue grass because it's not really getting beat up by the sun because there's literally uh, this huge canopy that is, that's shading the grass and fescue does fairly well in those conditions, whereas Bermuda or Zoysia will not. So hope that helps. Uh, you know, if you can give me a little more detail around what you're dealing with as far as what's causing the shade, I'll try to help you out some more, but that's the big thing. We got to increase the amount of sunlight that your grass is getting. All right, next up is A-Bear. He says, can I put Primo and Furt down at the same time? You absolutely can, A-Bear. I do it all the time. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, rumor has it that Ron Henry is known to mix Primo Max and fertilizer in the same batch and spray them at the same time. So yeah, you absolutely can do that. I actually recommend doing that. There's um, there's lots of benefits to doing it. One, it saves you time. And it also helps to reduce the, the very mild yellowing that you can get that's temporary when you use plant growth regulator by incorporating a liquid furt that has a bit of nitrogen, a, little, a bit of iron in it. So a couple of options for that. So I'm not sure if you have um, one that you like already, A Bear, but I'll, I'll give you some options. I'll give you two. So we'll go back to the golf course lawn store and you will click on shop and lawn fertilizer, which is like the favorite category that everybody loves. Everyone loves. All right. So, and it's already, it's already, oh, surf, no, it's gone. So I was, I was going to tell you Turfplex, but now it's sold out. It wasn't sold out before the show, but now it's sold out. So there goes that one. So you, uh, your other option is to use what I'm doing this year, which is to use 901C, right? Which is, uh, this, this is essentially release zero with fertilizer in it. And then mix that with that Nutrizolve. So this we have plenty of. Like this one you can buy pretty much at any time. We shouldn't really run out of release zero or release 901C. Nutrizolve, this is limited. There's not that much of that in the store. Like I'd, I'd be surprised if we made it through the weekend and not run out again. So if you're looking for a good combination to use with Primo that I've been using on my lawn with great results, that combination, the 901C and Nutrizolve, is exactly what I'm doing this season. Another option, whenever it comes back in stock, is Turfplex because that way you only have to buy one product because you get uh, the nitrogen and um, and iron all in one. But then there's a lot of benefits to 901C that you don't get in, nutri in, uh, in Turfplex. So either way, multiple ways to go about it. So if you if you're looking for an option, that is what I would uh, I would recommend. So hope that helps. I absolutely do it all the time, and I highly recommend doing it because there's lots of benefits to it. Next up is Robbie Marie. He says, I added two yards of pH balanced dairy manure to the yard. Some areas, it's about three to four inches thick, <laughs> two C's, thick, thick, uh, uh, raising the yard level. How much is too much? Planning on adding St. Augustine's sod on top later this year. Is that okay? Three to four inches is a lot, Robbie. If you really put down, I mean, four inches of, what do you use, manure? That's, that's quite a bit. Um, you know, if it's, I'm trying to understand. Do you have grass now, or is it literally just a brand new lawn and you're just you're putting this down to just to, you know do your prep work to 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 lay the a Saint Augustine sod later this year? If it's just to do the prep work, then it doesn't really matter. You're not you're not submerging or you're not choking the grass out. The only concern I would have with going that heavy is if you got really heavy rainfall and the lawn is not level, you might have a bit of it shifting around. But if you are putting that down and then you are, you know, you're rolling it in, compacting it, just getting it to really settle in, you should be fine, especially if you're planning to do the St. Augustine uh, later. You didn't say when. Um, you said it, if you're planning to do the St. Augustine at some point throughout this growing season, I imagine during the summer months, you should be okay. But I'd want, I'd want to make sure that's settled a bit. I would not, you know, I mean, because three to four inches, believe it or not, as much as you might think that you have compressed it, it's going to need some time to really settle out what you don't want to go do is do that and then go throw the saint augustine down on it like next week and then what you're going to end up having to do on top of that is is level it if you if your goal is to have a level lawn you know if your goal is just to, to feed the soil you did a great job doing that but if your goal is to come out of this thing with a lawn that is has some semblance of being level you really want to get it settled and then correct small areas along the way uh as part of your process before you uh before you put the the saint augustine sod down so 
Hope that helps. Three to four inches is a lot, man. I would, uh, I would, I would be, I would not never top dress an active lawn that much. But it sounds like your lawn is not. There's no lawn there yet, so you're you're probably gonna be fine. All right, next up is Jason Sitter. He says, hey, Ron, I leveled the lawn yesterday with Super Sod. Uh, it poured today and noticed some spots I need to fix again. Sand is holding up good in some spots I will go over again with the leveling rake. Yeah, you absolutely should be doing that, Jason. So the, the thing is, when it comes to leveling a lawn, getting the sod, getting the leveling mix down, that's just job one. So when you get out there and you, you know, you're sweating with all your buddies and you guys are, you know, cursing and having a great time and being mad but at the same time at the end you look at you look at the lawn it's like oh wow it looks awesome it looks fairly level that's really just the beginning if you really want the best result every day you're going to want to get out there with a the leveling rake and just drag it you don't need to even work it in literally you can just lay it down you can have you can have a cup of lemonade or your beverage of choice and just drag the rake with one hand all across the lawn make a pass all across the lawn and that's going to really help expose the grass tips the grass blades it's going to help the leveling mix settle so that's a big thing and it's also going to help prevent you from getting runoff whenever you get a heavy rain. You know, I don't know how heavy you went down, but it sounds like you had some of it move around, which is not not abnormal. But uh, but ensuring that you are regularly out there, I recommend daily with that leveling rig to help work that material in is really going to speed up how quickly the lawn recovers and how quick we get there and mow it and just start really enjoying it again. Good job going with the Super Sod. Uh, makes this a great product. Again, not cheap, but like anything else in life, right? If it's you know the, the if something's really good, there's no reason for them to for them to um to sell it at a bargain, right? Wasn't the Joker? The Joker said if you're really good at something, never do it for free. So there you go. Super Sod uh, ascribes that apparently. All right, next up is Timothy Smith. He says, "Hey Ron and all, no questions tonight. Just enjoying the great as always live stream. My grass love the water in Georgia. The lawn is on fire. I know, right, man? It's it's looking it's looking good." I would like to show you guys a picture. I don't know if I, I don't think I've, if I transferred that video over. Show you guys the video of um, of what the grass looks like. Granted, you guys can wait till tomorrow to see it, but I know how you guys can be kind of demanding. So let me see if I can actually make this happen. So I can make this happen. I'm gonna transfer it over, and um, and we'll see if I can show you guys what the uh, the lawn looks like. What the lawn looks like. Actually, looking at the um, the my phone, this video was actually from yesterday. It's funny whenever I do whenever I do content, it's always like in pieces. Like I'll film part of it, like a lot of the, like the B-roll and the dialogue over the weekend, and then I, I, throughout the week, I'll find different shots that I want to get and add those as filler. So it's hard to know exactly when I, I put the put the entire thing together. But this one that you'll see in the video tomorrow morning apparently was from yesterday. So if you take a look at this, this is how Ron's lawn looks uh, as of yesterday. So this was after all the rain happened. Uh, I mowed it early this morning, so it's looking a little scraggly right now. Don't throw tomatoes at me. But as you can see, it really liked that drink of water that it got. All that rainwater, it's really done well with it. So loving it, right? Loving it. Great stuff. Great stuff. Glad that we finally got some water in Georgia, Timothy, which is nice. <laughs> nice for a change, right? All right, next up is Smoking Legs. Awesome handle, by the way. He says, ready to spray Primo Max. I usually spray for at two gallons per thousand square feet. How much max would I put into two gallons? Currently cutting bent grass at half an inch. Okay, so uh, the rate would still, I'm not sure what the rate is for bent grass. Um, I can look it up here really quick. I don't know what the, what the bent grass rate is, but we can find out. So the, the long short of it is uh, smoking legs. It, it doesn't it, whatever that you're using for the carrier. So you're using, I normally go one gallon per thousand. You're doing two gallons per thousand. So you still use the per thousand square foot rate. It's just going to take you, you're just going to be spraying out a lot more liquid to get it to get it down. So let me see what, the, what bent grass shows here on the label. That is not a common one that I, that I normally get. Zoysias, I normally know off the top of my head. Bent grass, it is saying... Uh, Point, so three quarters of an ounce. So 0.75 ounces per thousand square feet. So in your case, you've got uh, two gallons of water. You're going to put in 0.75. So what that looks like is, I'll pull this off. I can actually demo it for you here really quick. If it's your first time doing it, you want to go a little bit lighter uh, smoking legs, you can do that. But if you're using the Fancy Nancy measuring cup that's built into the container, what I would just do is squeeze this until you get all the way up to point. And this is easier when there's not the caps not on. You could literally would have done this with one squeeze if there's no cap. So I would go up to there, like about so, for your first, first pour, right? And then, so I can simulate and show you guys that, pour that in the backpack sprayer. 
and then go up to 0.25. So right about, uh, actually right there. That's a, that's a little bit heavy pour. That don't, don't go that quite that heavy, but between 0.3 and 0.2, that's 0.25, uh, close enough for, uh, for government work anyway. Uh, that goes in your sprayer with the two gallons of water that you're gonna spray over a thousand square feet. If you wanna back the rate down a little bit the first time you're, you're doing it, that's fine too, but the, the label calls for 0.75, so if you wanna go with that rate, uh, should be fine too. And yeah, liquid and using FERT along with it is a great idea. So hope that helps. Again, two gallons of water over a thousand square feet. 0.75 is what the rate for bent grass is per the label. So that is what I would add uh, for, you know, for, for your lawn. Great stuff. All right. Next up is John Williams. He says, hey, N and K are low and S2. What can I do to, to raise S or do I need to worry about that one? Yes, yeah, so a lot of, well, look for fertilizers, like Cubic Max has some sulfur in it, but we can't get that anymore, right? Or it's not, not right now anyway. But look on a lot of the, uh, on the fertilizer you're using, John, some of them will also have a little bit of sulfur in it. Sulfur is not something I would, I would necessarily chase directly. You know, you know what I mean? It's, you know, if you can find a fertilizer that can, that it's, it's listed there on the bag, focus on the N and K, on your, your nitrogen and um, potassium more so than sulfur. Yes, it's great if you can get some of that as well too, along with the fertilizer you're putting down, but what's making a bigger difference in the quality of your soil are the macros, like the nitrogen and the potassium, like that's gonna be, you have to see a much bigger response or, or benefit from improving those levels than you will from improving uh, your S levels. So so hopefully, hopefully that helps, sir. Not something that I would, again, I would chase directly. I would just, I would get it as like an ancillary along with whatever fertilizer you happen to be putting down. Hope that helps. All right, next up is Tom Hoffenkamp says, hello, Ron, and all golf course lawn fans worldwide. Yes, welcome, everybody. He says, um, does prodiamine always cause my turf to slow growth after application? It seems like I get two weeks of slowing period. Not really, uh, Tom, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. The one thing you tend to find is most people tend to usually apply prodiamine either when the lawn is going, coming out of dormancy or about to come out of dormancy or before it's going into dormancy, both times a year when the grass is not growing that aggressively. So I don't, I, you know, I wouldn't say that, like correlation doesn't mean, doesn't, doesn't mean causation. In other words, I wouldn't say that because the grass seems to be growing slower because of the prodiamine application that the prodiamine is causing that. I've never heard of, of um, a prodiamine causing uh, it, it having any kind of growth regulation uh, properties to it, at least when it's applied at the rates per the label. So uh, it's likely just that your lawn, whatever grass type you have, is just waking up, um, which I'm not sure what kind of grass you have, but um, and and that's that's maybe what you're seeing. But it's in it itself should not cause should cause your grass to to grow slower than it normally does. So hope that helps. If you have any other questions, let me know. I appreciate the shout out and thank you that for the for the thumbs up, uh, Don McFarlane. Appreciate all the love and support. Really do appreciate that. And oh, another question I got um, that in, in email that I said I would discuss on the live stream as well was around a celeprin. So some, so some of the viewers have asked, hey, you know, in the video that I did on a celeprin where I talk about applying it in April and May, is it gonna be too late to apply it in June? No, you can apply a celeprin either in liquid or granular form, you know, throughout most of the growing season. You know what I mean? It's not, it's, the, the benefit of, of doing it early is you apply it early in the season and you get coverage for the most part all season long, but there's nothing that says you can't apply either liquid or granular, granular acelloprin uh, this time of year. No, no problems uh, with that whatsoever. So I said I would address it on the live stream. It's been addressed. You can still apply acelloprin. No issues with that whatsoever. Next up is Keith McGuire. He says, what should people start with on a new lawnmower? My first time on. Great question, Keith. So the thing I would say is the type of lawnmower you choose is really based on one, the grass type you have, and then also the kind of results that you are after. And then thirdly, the amount of time you have to get those results. So if you have a Bermuda lawn, like let's just say we could wave a magic wand, you have a Bermuda lawn and you, um, you know, the next question is, you know, do you have the time to use the type of mower that really is the best type of mower for that particular grass type. So if you have a Bermuda lawn, you say, hey, listen, I only got time to mow once a week. I just want the grass to look decent. I'm not really gonna try to get out there and spend a ton of time on the lawn. In that case, I'm gonna say, get yourself a nice, you know, a, a quality rotary mower, a Toro, a Honda, one of those, 
and enjoy life. You know, mow your lawn once a week. It's going to look decent um, and, and go from there. If you decide that you want, you know, you want like an ornamental type lawn. It's a phrase I stole from, um, from, from Roland, from, uh, from the guy at Allet. If you want like a lawn that's, you know, more of a golf course lawn type look, you know, that, that, that fairway, the lawn that really has that, that wow factor, that's going to require a real mower. Uh, and by a real mower, this you know the mowers that you see if you watch my channel or watch my content, the uh, the, the cylinder mower, the mower you know it's, it has like a like a rotating the rotating blades in the front of it, that really is the best type of mower for Bermuda. But then there's also the third part of of this this equation, right? It's like the triforce of like what mower should you buy? So um, for the correct grass type, um, and then um, you know your first of all the kind of grass you have um, and then the choosing the right mower for that grass type but then also the third the third one it's really probably the most important is how much time do you have because if you decide you're going to go with a real mower that's going to be twice a week mowing like this time of year until August late August early September you got to get there twice a week so once on the weekend at least once during the week to have the lawn look decent with a real mower again if that's not doable, then a rotary is where you want to be. And there's nothing wrong with a rotary. Like there's a lot of people that, that have that cut Bermuda with rotary mowers and they look great. You look at BYD's lawn, it looks really good. And his, his lawn is cut exclusively with a, with a rotary mower. So it largely depends on you. I would say that if you're going to get into real mowing, what I tell people is, um, you know, if you want to start out with a manual real mower, assuming your lawn is not huge, uh, just to see if it's something that you you can do as far you can tolerate as far as getting out there every couple you know every couple of days and, and mowing it that's a good way to go and if you decide okay yes you know I've, I've done the rotary the, the sorry the um the manual reel mower for you know a month or two i'm ready to go full tilt and you're trying to move into a powered reel mower then choose one based on what you can get worked on in your area so if you're in georgia like my area you can pretty much buy whatever you want you get a true cut you get a toro you can get whatever you want because there's someone there's someone around here that can fix it but where if you if that's not the case you live in a part of the country where perhaps it's only a mclean area or there's only a true cut area or there's, or there's only you know a john deere area you want to pick your road your reel mower based on where you can get parts for it and who can service it with all that aside I'm a big fan of buying the best mower that your budget will allow you to, to that you can afford. Here's why. Mowing is single-handed lawn. So the thing that we are doing the most of, we want to do as correctly as possible with the best, as good equipment as we possibly can. In other words, I would rather you buy a cheaper backpack sprayer or a cheaper broadcast spreader and put more money into a quality mower than the other way around. Because the broadcast spreader you're going to use once a month, the backpack sprayer, you're gonna, if you're doing what I'm doing, you can use it like twice a month, but the, the mower you're gonna use literally several times per week. So, you know, the thing that you're gonna use the most, you wanna make sure it's a good piece of equipment, quality piece of equipment, and um, hopefully I gave you some ideas, some guidance around how to choose a mower based on your time, budget, your desire to mow, all those things. There's a lot that goes into that. You know what I mean? I can't just tell you real mower because that's not for everybody. But if, if, if everything that I said as far as having the time to do it, the desire to do it, and all those things, then then a real mower is a great option. Your grass, no, nothing's gonna look better. Your turf is not gonna look better with anything else than a real mower, especially if you have like a, a creeping lawn like, a, like Bermuda, Zoysia, any of the shorter grasses, a real mower is um, it's just next level, next level stuff. All right, next up is Kevin D. Jones. Kevin being a little hooligan in the live stream saying, I have pounded the like button while mowing and treating dollar spot. Wow, that's not good. So you're getting some propagandas all down. Kevin, I imagine. Sorry you're doing with the dollar spot. That's never fun. But I appreciate you pausing between the spraying and mowing to give me a like. Really do appreciate the support, sir. It's always a, always a good time. Hey guys, so one of the things I wanted to get to, and I want, I'm gonna do it here in the live stream, is we're gonna we're gonna figure out um, for any of you guys that are in here. I saw Luis Rodriguez in here, and some of you other guys that are like uh, turf care professionals. Um, there's a couple of weeds that some viewers have sent me. And there's, I've labeled them Mystery Weed 1 and Mystery Weed 2. So Mystery Weed 1, um, he, so Chad thinks this is like a, a, well, not that one. He thinks this is like a bent grass, like some kind of wild, wild creeping bent grass. Any of you guys think you know what that is, want to weigh in, leave that, you know, drop a message in the chat, what you guys think that weed is. Uh, it's not weed or whatever that, that particular grass or, or I guess it's technically weed because he wants it gone, is in the chat. So that's Weed 1. The second one, mystery weed number two, you guys let me know what you guys think this is. I showed this to a couple of my buddies that spray lawns and they're like, man, I don't know what it is, but I wouldn't have to go up against that. 
Uh, you know, one of them actually went off and said that I don't think there's anything I have on my truck that will kill that. It looks like some kind of like field grass weed or something like that. I, I've never seen anything like this in any Bermuda or Zoysia lawn, but if any of you guys happen to know what that is, feel free to weigh in the chat and, uh, and let me know if you guys have a thoughts on it. So again, to recap, weed one and then weed two. So weigh in on what you guys think those are if you happen to know, if you happen to know. All right, next up is Chris Ferguson. He says, my NP and the K are very low, but my iron, sodium, zinc, and manganese are high. So the micros are a little bit high and the macros are low. Okay, um, what can I do to bring up the NPK and also help lower the others? I got my soil sample from Yard Mastery. So I would not really worry too much about that. I mean, what you can do if you, if you wanna not put any micronutrients in, that's pretty easy. Just get a, a balanced fertilizer, like a starter fertilizer, like, a, like the, the Yard Mastery Triple 12, Maybe not that one because that has all of the um, has all of the micros in it as well. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here, Chris. I'll show you. So as far as raising your NPK, this is a great product, but it also has three percent iron and it has uh, manganese, zinc, uh, boron, copper. It has all a little bit of everything, right? Like a little vitamin, look at a little bit of everything for the uh, for the soil. This is a great product. The mi here's the thing: the micros are in such small quantities, hence the name micros, that I really wouldn't worry about it. I mean, I haven't seen your soil test results, but I mean, I, I have yet to see um, a lawn that has, that I've come across anyway, that that has had, there's a, it's caused a bunch of problems by having, you know, elevated, elevated amounts of those levels. Now, if you have like really, really high amounts of iron, what you'll find is the grass will get really, really green and then will turn dark, like almost blackish or like a purplish color. If your grass isn't doing that, you know the 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 little um, the, the small amount of iron that's in this product is not going to cause that to happen. You should be just fine. Just apply it at the recommended rate, three pounds per thousand. That is going to help raise your NPK levels, which is what the thing you're really worried about, and also add trace amounts of the micros. So that is what I would go with. But if you're really um, hardcore, you don't want to add any micronutrients then just go to like your local garden store or big box store and see if they, any of them have a, um, a balanced fertilizer, like a triple 12, triple 10, something along those lines to help target the NPK. That's the thing you should focus on. The NPK is the most important part. Adding a little bit of uh, extra micros eh, is not really gonna matter. The thing that's really gonna improve the quality of your grass, your soil, and then by extension the grass is getting the macro levels higher. So that's what I would I'd really focus on more so than avoiding adding um, a little bit more micronutrient, if that if that makes sense. Great stuff, good job on getting a soil test, by the way. And you're saying, is green pop an option? Will that help the lawn absorb the iron and micros? I, I need to look up what's in green pop. I don't, I'm not, I don't know that one off the top of my head. I, I'm not really familiar with a lot of the Green County fertilizers because I don't, I don't use them. So off the top of my head, I don't remember what the formulation of that one is. Um, but I, again, I would not really, I wouldn't, here's what I would not do. I would not get out there and go apply ironite or go apply a product that has a, a large amount of, um, of iron. What's that, that one fertilizer? It's like, a, it's like feature or something like that. Like fertilizers that just have like, you know, 5% iron or like a higher amount. I wouldn't do that. Like I wouldn't go out and look for more iron, but a small amount is not gonna, is not gonna cause you any issues. Again, the big thing that you really should be focusing on is raising the NPK levels. The micros, adding a little bit more of those, really immaterial, like that's not gonna make as much of a difference as getting uh, your, your NPK levels up. That's what I would really spend my time uh, focusing on. Good stuff, but again, good job getting the soil test done. Next is John Williams. He says, uh, wrong one, he says, my packages look bad too. I, I'm thinking uh, at the same time they must throw these boxes around like it's crazy. Yeah, dude, here's the thing. I've watched FedEx deliver stuff to my house and I don't, I don't get it. Like they take it out of the truck and I've watched it because I watched them on camera do it. They'll, they'll walk up literally and they'll come to the patio and they'll bring it, they'll bring the box, no matter what it is, to like about just below chest height and then just drop it. They'll go and just go bang and just drop it. Like I, I got some, um, some Advion in, right? Some Advion fire ant bait. And thank goodness is this, because this, you're not going to really break. I mean, you know, unless you're dropping it from 20 feet, you might damage the bottle. But if it were a liquid product, it would have totally ruptured. It would have totally would have caused it to possibly cause it to, to the bottle to break, right? Um, so in general, they they are a bit harder on packages than I would like. However, if you play devil's advocate, if your job was to try and get as many packages throughout the day as you could, 
I realize why these guys and gals are really just ripping and running and trying to get, you know, get it down, make sure they drop the right package at the right house and then on to the next one. So I understand it. But when I have to watch it on camera, I do wish they would take a bit more care. So I feel you, John. You and I are here on that one. All right, next up, uh, Clayton Gweaves. Uh, Clayton is, is chiming in on Paco's question about uh, a fertilizer that is a bit more economical. He says, I used the Sunnyland uh, 24011 exclusively last year and now use it on my backyard, Humic Max on the front yard. The Sunnyland is a good fertilizer at a great price if you can find it. So there you go. You have someone that is endorsing a fertilizer that they have actually used themselves and have had good results with. So there you go, Paco. There's an option for you as far as a quality fertilizer that's not gonna not gonna break the bank not gonna break the bank all right next question up next we have here is noe guero sanchez he says um would it be okay to apply a 20 0 0 at the beginning of the season and possibly a triple 10 throughout the season could be could be no the way to know that is no, the way to know that is to with a soil test result, is, is by getting a soil test. Like this is going to, by getting one of these done, they're super easy to use. All you need is the soil test kit and then a probe of some sort to collect the cores. Um, what this is gonna do, you're gonna collect cores, send them out, in about a week you're gonna get an email from the nice folks at my soil saying, hey, no Sanchez, this is what's going on with your soil. This is the fertilizer I rec we would recommend to help improve the quality of your soil. And then maybe the 20 and the triple 10 would be the right fit. But Without having the data, I'd just be guessing. I'd be just saying, yeah, I mean, it, it might be okay. Honestly, if, if I don't, if you're not using, if you're not fertilizing your lawn based on a soil test, uh, the triple 10, I would be more inclined to do. The 20 zero zero, which is, you know, it's quite a bit of nitrogen and not much else. I would be less likely to put that down than I would like a balanced fert. But the, the best answer really is get a soil test. So the one, you can find those really easy. I'll show you, go to here to golfcourselawn.store. And we have a very carefully prepared section in the menu called soil testing. So you go here, and then the kit that I would recommend for someone that's just starting out that doesn't have uh, the probe, you only have to buy this guy once. These guys are super over-engineered. You're never gonna replace this. You, you shouldn't replace it. Uh, is this one, the starter pack, or the, or sorry, this, yeah, the starter kit. This one here, it comes with one probe and then one soil test kit. If you wanna have two for the year to do one now, one at the end of the year, you can go and get the pro pack, which again, also includes the uh, probe, the, the collect the core tool, saves you a bit of money over the, um, over the starter pack. So either one of these are what I would recommend going with. It only takes a week, given the price of fertilizer and just lawn care products in general, I would want to ensure that what I'm putting on the lawn or in the soil is with something it actually needs. So I'd highly recommend if I, if you are willing to do it, get a soil test done, then come back and either email it to me or come back on the live stream. Um, well, email it to me because I don't, I don't do them live on the live stream because I don't have the test in, in front of me normally. But email it to me if you need help. You can send it here to ron at golfcourselawn.com and I will do my best to help you out. So hope that helps, sir. And uh, if you need anything else, let me know in the chat. All right, next up is Brew Cruise Fishing. He says, 91 people in the chat and 18 likes. Come on, man. Guys, exit the chat, tap the like, and then come back into the chat. Cheers. I appreciate it, Brew Cruise Fishing. I don't know if it really works that way, but I do appreciate uh, the love and support. And I do appreciate the likes, guys. It really does, really does help. It really does help out. So a couple other points that I, I had. So we've covered the fact that Essential G is back in stock. Get that. We've covered the fact that Nutrizolve is back in stock, so get that, because Nutrizolve, there really is a, a limited amount of that, so you wanna get that if you if you need it, because I'm not sure we're gonna get more in again once it sells out yet again. Um, but also what I had for you guys is there was a, a viewer, a question that I had from a couple of weeks ago that had a question about chamber bitter, about, about uh, getting rid of chamber bitter in their lawn, and they asked about the rate, uh, if, if Celsius can be used for that, and the answer is yes, so what I'm talking about is, switch over to the a cam is this is celsius wg this will target will take chamber bitter but you need to apply it at the high rate so look at the label the high rate is um i made a note here is 3.2 grams per thousand square feet so you got to use a measuring cup make sure you use the right amount um with water with a surfactant and it may take the label does say it may take a couple of applications but this will this mix when used with a surfactant will also take care of chamber bitters. So that was a question I had from a couple of weeks ago that I was supposed to help out with. And um, I never got a chance to do it because last week you guys had a bunch of other questions. So I wanted to 
I have that on my docket to do today. So that one is done. The next one is uh, for creeping bent grass, um, tenacity at a higher rate. If it's cool season grass, uh, 3.2 grams per thousand square feet per the label. So if you have cool season grass, I think it was uh, the gentleman, I think it was Chad, the same person that asked about this. Uh, maybe it's this one. Yes, no, not that, not that one. This guy. I believe this one, if, it, if it's creeping bent grass, which he thinks that is, um, if you want to get rid of that, I believe it's tena uh, um, um, Celsius at the higher rate um, or tenacity um, if it's cool season grass. So either one of those will will uh, will target that. So hope that helps. There's questions that I said I would answer and it took me two weeks, but I covered up some time since we're a little bit slower on questions tonight, which is good. I might be able to get out of here a little early. We'll see, maybe. Uh, but yeah, so we're all, we are all covered on that. So uh, so if whoever asked those questions, they, you now got them in in the uh, answer in the live stream. I appreciate the like uh, note. Thanks so much for that. I really appreciate it. And then Todd Hickey says, um, it looks like I wonder if this is the Todd Hickey that I know. Well, I know Troy Hickey. I maybe this is a different one, different guy that I'm thinking about. He says uh, it looks like this weekend is time for Humic Max, Turfplex, and T next. Not intuitive to put this all down at once. Any concerns? Not really. So like you, I'm going to be doing my fertilizer app. I mean, this is the beginning, it's the end of this month, beginning of June. So this weekend, um, Todd, much like you, I'm going to be doing Humic Max because I've got, I think I've got like two bags left. That's all I've got. I can't get any more. I'm just like you guys. Right? I'm in the same, same boat. I'll be switching to something else here soon or trying to find some other Lebanon ter uh, fertilizer around here locally if I can get my hands on it. But um, but yes, Humic Max will go down, and the way here's how I'd recommend doing that. So let's let's go through that. I've covered this in videos, but it's worth repeating. So one, you have to go look at the videos, and it saves you time. So if you're going to do this, I would do Humic. You could do Humic Max and Turfplex and Tnex all on the same day. No no issues with that whatsoever. What I would recommend doing though is waiting until the following day to run your irrigation to water the Humic Max in. So if you're going to put your fertilizer down at three pounds per thousand, which is the rate for Humic Max, or if you're using the flagship, two pounds per thousand. And so get that done uh, first, and then you can follow that up with Turfplex um, and your Turfplex and, and Tnex or and or Primo Max, um, you know Primo Max uh, blend, and you can do those after doing your granular fert application. Just give it uh, a day. Give give it a, give it give it to the the the, the foliar app, which is your liquid fert and Tnex, ample time to dry on the grass really for those products if you have you know four hours you're good to go you really don't really need to wait till the next day but i tell people if they can do them all same day and then wait to the following day to run irrigation that is what i do that's what i've done i don't know for for years now i do my granulars on you know the granulars and liquid same day and i wait to the following day to run irrigation um and that's that's served me very very well so hope that helps there's not really any cause for concern the only thing i would say todd is make sure that um you know, you know, you know this already, but your backpack sprayer, if you've never used it before, calibrate it. And because um, that's really the only gotcha, the only question mark in this whole thing that can throw a wrench in it, right? If you get out there and you mix up, you know, four gallons of Turfplex and Primos, enough for 4,000 square feet, if you're doing it, you're applying it the way that I suggest you apply it. And then you go apply that over a thousand square feet, that's not going to be good, right? You're not going to get a good result if you do that. So the only question mark really is your the liquids applications and really that it's not hard, but as long as you are ensuring your backpack sprayer is calibrated, you know, your walking pace, you know that you are in fact putting down the products at the correct rate, no issues or uh, concerns whatsoever. That's exactly what, what I do. I'm going to be doing it um, again this weekend, doing this weekend. All right, next up is Salvador L. He says, fellow Dal Dallas Fort Worth resident here. We need a Ron Henry here. You got me there. It's the same it's the same difference. I mean, what difference is it of me being living in Dallas Fort Worth or living in Northeast Georgia? It's the same thing. Same thing, right? I mean, you have me on the live stream. You have me in the comments for YouTube videos. Same thing. Same thing. No no difference. No big difference. So uh, you're, you are, you're good to go. I mean, unless you happen to be my neighbor, like Alex is the only one whose lawn I mow or go out and do stuff for really. Right? I mean, that's not true. I do Alex's lawn. I also help the other neighbor right next to me. But as far as like going and doing other people's lawns, I don't really do that because I don't, one, I don't have time. Main thing is I don't have time to do it. Uh, so unless I live in Dallas, Fort Worth and you happen to be my neighbor, there's not really any difference between what you have now and what you would have if I were there. So there is that, but I do appreciate the, uh, the offer. I do like the Dallas Fort Worth area is pretty cool. I like the I like I like Dallas. It's a cool town. All right. Next up is John Rob Will. 
He says, my local site one manager says that over applying or misapplying fungicide can lead to mutated strains of disease, which will be harder to cure. Have you heard of this? Have you heard of that before? Yeah, so it's, it's, a, good, it's a good point that they make. Really, when it comes to fungicides, and this is true for like most anything, right? Um, if, you, if, you apply, if you over apply them, um, or you don't apply them correctly, especially if you have like an, act, an active fungus, uh, um, or dis, active lawn disease, and you, you under apply it to where it's not enough to really kill it and get rid of it, what you, what you can end up doing is having fungus that forms a resistance to it, where it doesn't really work. Now, as far as it mutating, I mean, I guess you could, you could say that's technically a mutation, right? Like the, like the, the, the fungus that was once susceptible to say azoxyshoba and propoconazole no longer is. I've not experienced that in my lawn, and I've not experienced that with any viewers of mine writing in saying, "Hey, I've you know I've used Headway on my lawn, and it didn't take care of you know insert fungus that it's that it's labeled to target." So I I do agree with him that you know if you are applying them improperly, um, um, or and and ideally in my in my opinion, um, applying improperly mean really means at if you have an active uh, fungus outbreak and you underapply it. To where you're not really getting getting that stuff out of your lawn, you're not curing it. Um, that can definitely lead to uh, to problems. But that also applies to herbicides too. The same thing, this, the same um, thing that the, your local site one manager is saying for fungicides can also apply to herbicides as well. So that's why it's really important to follow the rate when it comes to applying fungicides as a preventative. The time to do that really is May and June. And then again, if you had if you have any concerns about spring dead spot, and then, then again in the fall. You know what I mean? So really doing them and, and, and those time frames around now and then again, October time frame is really all you should need is, mo is what most lawns will need to keep lawn, keep disease at bay. You know what I mean? Now, but to, to his point, if you go to like a golf course or greens, there are, there are some courses that's, that apply fungicides monthly. You know, they, they, they apply them regularly because that's what, it, that's what they need to keep the disease out of, um, particularly out of the greens. So it just, it depends on what you're dealing with, particularly um, Rob Will, but they, he is correct. He is correct that over and under applying fungicides can cause problems, much like um, any of the sides, much like uh, um, uh, herbicides. And even the same thing also applies to insecticides. There's some um, insecticides that if you use them all the time, the bugs no longer, it no longer kills the bugs. You know what I mean? So that really can be said for everything. So good stuff, great question, and I appreciate the, uh, the or not, appreciate the comment, good stuff. All right, next up is Rio the Hitman. He says, electric real mower, let's go, Ron. Uh, yeah, it's probably going to run on electricity. That's a good That's a good guesstimate. Now, which one it is, uh, you guys will have to wait and see. I'm not gonna say yet until it actually shows up, but it's on. it's literally on its way here now, and it should be here hopefully by the middle of next week. We shall see. And uh, should be fun. Should be fun. Another chapter in Ron's obsession to try and get the best, craziest, amazing lawn possible because it's never good enough, right? So we shall see. You guys will find out though. Just uh, subscribe to the channel and watch the YouTube stories and you guys will check it out. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty excited about it. It's a pretty cool setup. All right, next up is Parker's Aquatics. He says, happy Friday, everyone. I fertilized last weekend. I'm pretty sure it all washed away this week. Kind of unlikely, Parker's. Kind of unlikely. I mean, you can... Um, I mean, if you're in the Georgia area, Northeast Georgia area, we got some heavy rain, but it was small bursts of heavy rain. It was not enough to really cause uh, what I would enough to cause a large fertilizer washout to where you're losing it. You lose a lot of fur. So that's that is really uh, I don't know where that really came from. That you know, if you put fertilizer down and it rains, you're losing all your fertilizer. That uh, that's that is far less common than it is common, um, Parker. So you're. You're you're good to go, especially if you applied it last week. If you applied it last week and you watered it in, it should already have been breaking down and be start working its way into the soil. So the rain that we got over the past couple of days really should have only helped accelerate that process, not really get rid of it, if that makes sense. So I would not worry about it. You're good to go. No uh, no worries there. Man, questions are light tonight. You guys are, are giving me a break tonight, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to get out of here early. We'll see. We shall see. All right, next up is Chris. Sob, uh, Sobzik, he says, thanks for the advice on applying fertilizer. Carbon Pro-G, Hydrotain, all the same day after aeration, followed by top dressing with super sod leveling mix last weekend, all watered in with rain. Yeah, man, dude, that's awesome. So the, that, if you can time it, and that's kind of hard to do, right? If you can time your top dressing around when there's gonna be some heavy rain in the forecast, I mean, not crazy heavy rain, but like, you know, a good grid rain shower, that's like the best ever because nothing beats 
actual rainwater for getting the sand to settle for watering it in just just in general it's, it's better than running irrigation so and i the, the stars aligned last year that when i did that really heavy top dressing job on the back lawn that i was able to that it rained it rained something like six inches between monday and tuesday it was, it was like a ton of rain came down on the lawn actually if you guys watch my videos on um if you guys want to see how much rain there was on the lawn the add the on fire ant bait video the one that i recently released if you watch that video, there's a section in there, some B-roll in there, where I talk about not applying this product to a uh, to a wet lawn or when there's really heavy rain in the forecast. And that B-roll is from whenever I um, top dressed the lawn last year, when there was really, really crazy heavy rain. If you, if you wanna see how much rain there was, re watch that video and you'll be able to see that. On the topic of Advion, uh, Fire Ant Bait, guys, uh, I've got my hands on some of this and I want to give one of these away to a lucky viewer. Um, the rules, only rules are that you have to be in a state that is um, where you can accept this, which I think is pretty much everywhere. Let me check the label here really quick and see where this cannot be shipped. You're not supposed to ship this. Let's see, add me on fire and bait. It can go to everywhere other than Arkansas, Alaska and California. So if you're in Alaska and California, I can't send this to you, but anywhere else looks like you in the continental United States, uh, looks like a uh, fair game. So the way we're going to do this for the giveaway is um, the video from last week. So the, you're not going to, the giveaway will be, the winner of the giveaway will be announced um, will be announced uh, next week because I want to give people ample time, people that watch the live stream after the fact, that kind of thing. So the video that I did that I launched uh, a few, I mean, late last week on Fire Ants, I'm going to put it in the chat now. All you guys have to do is go to that video and go in the comment section and say, in the comments, say, um, give me my Advion, right? You're, or so it has to have Advion in the comment, right? So, so that way I can I can decipher between people that actually watch the live stream and are entered or trying to enter to win and people that are just that were just regular comments on the video. So whatever you put in the com in the comment, the word Advion has to be in there. So I'll know that you are someone that was entering uh, the giveaway. So I will ship it to you at my expense. You don't have to pay for anything. It will go out to you guys. This one uh, two pound jug, this thing will last you a long time. I'll tell you, I go through one and a half. I, I use one of these will last me one and a half seasons. And I have a really big lawn. So in that, in that video that I'll link in the chat now, you guys will see how I apply it. I apply it around the house and then around the perimeter of the lawn. And that does a great job keeping you know ants away. So, um, let me see here. See, uh, add the on giveaway video. Um, and this is the link to said video. So uh, when the live stream's over, or if you want to do it in another tab, you can go there and enter in there in the comment. You have to enter a comment that has the word add the on in it, and then you'll be entering the giveaway. And the next week we will announce the winner of two pounds of add the on fire ant bait. So other than people that live in California, um, and again, in the continental United States, if you're like in Africa and you write to me, you win, or you're in Australia, I mean, I'll send it to you, but you're gonna have to pay the shipping. I'm not, not gonna ship it to, you know, have it across the world, because that'd be super expensive. So if you guys are interested in that, enter, and uh, good luck. We'll, we'll announce the winner next week. Fun stuff. It's tis the season for giving, right? Tis the season for giving. All right, next up is Garland Holland. He says, how many yards are in the leveling mix yellow bag at Superside? It's one yard garland one yard is what's in uh one per bag per like by volume actually let me get down here and grab a super chat really quick i'm gonna answer that i'm gonna answer your question um garland i'm gonna get the super chat so i'm sorry about that camera and i saw it i'm seeing your super chat now i'm gonna get it as soon as i finish answering this question it's one yard so depending on how heavy you top dress garland that one bag can cover 500 square feet or it can cover 1500 square feet if you do it the way that I recommend, which is in the middle, one bag of the Super Sod leveling mix will cover about a thousand square feet. That's the, that allows you to put it down at the rate where you're not putting you're not putting down more than say a quarter to half an inch on the lawn at any given time, which is what I like to do for a good result when top dressing. You know, you go much heavier than that, and you're really playing Russian roulette if you get like a super heavy rain or if your lawn has any kind of a slope. Uh, you know, you mix in not aerating as part of the process as well too, and then you, you're going to have a bit of a mess on your hands. So, going a bit lighter is what I'd recommend, and that's going to get you 1,000 square feet of coverage for that yard, one uh, that single yard of uh, leveling mix. So, one bag per thousand square feet. You can go a bit lighter. I don't really recommend going heavier than that. I really don't. 
Okay, next up is Z. He says, I just bought the Celsius Uncertainty Mix from the um, Golf Course Lawn Store. Can't wait to apply it. And thank you for the code. You are very, very welcome, Z. I think it does save you a little bit. We have a 5% discount code. That's like the only discounts that we do. There's only, there's only really two ways to get discounts on the Golf Course Lawn Store. And that is you can either join the mobile mailing list. So what I'll show you right here, and it's only a one time, so make it worth it. Like buy a lot of stuff so you can make it worth doing. You see here in the lower left-hand corner where my mouse is kind of hovering like right here where I'm clicking. Right, this is his name where it says get 5% off. For your first purchase, like one time, you can save 5% on any order value. So if you buy something that's, you know, $5, we don't have anything that's $5, but if you buy something that's like, I don't know, $30, you're gonna save a little bit. You buy like $500 worth of stuff, you're gonna save a lot. So there's that. And the only other way is to join our mailing list. You also get a one-time um, discount that way. Other than that, there's not really any discount codes. I don't really run a lot of discounts, but for anyone that's, that's just new to the store, uh, that is what um, a way for just to help you out on your lawn care journey a little bit and, you know, at the same time, not put myself out of business. <laughs> but what uh, Z is talking about, if you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and to the Weed Killer section, in there, you will find Celsius by itself. You will find Certainty by itself. Well, because I know you guys, and it's just way too many clicks to add the Celsius, to add the Certainty, to add the marker dye, to add the surfactant. And that's way too much work. What I did is I put together a kit that puts all four of these guys together saves you a little bit of money. You only have to add it to your cart one time and you get what I consider to be the best combination for warm season grass, for killing the weeds that are in most common to, uh, you know, that, that, that we have in warm season turf. It's gonna take care of your poets, it's gonna take care of sedges, it's gonna take care of broadleafs. It's just overall what I consider to be a great concoction that uh, is not as temperature sensitive as many of the other herbicide options that you have for warm, warm season turf. But uh, but yeah, this is um, this is money. Works really really well. Uh, I I helped my neighbor out by using this on his lawn when he had like a bit of a salad bowl. One application of the of the Celsius Certainty combo, a little bit of surfactant, a little bit of release zero in there as well. Just one cleaned his lawn up, cleaned it up, you know, perfectly. Got rid of all the broad leaves, got rid of the poa. This was a couple of months ago. Did a really good job. So it's a great. It's not inexpensive, but it does work. It's a great, it's a great great uh, combination that I, I've got put together there. So. Hopefully you guys will take advantage of that if you have a need for sedge control and POA control and broadleaf control in your lawn. So appreciate the support, Z. Uh, given that you ordered today, it's more than likely going to ship tomorrow. And actually, anything that you guys order, like, oh, not anything. I need to correct that. <laughs> uh, like the Celsius Certainty, Surfactants, Primo, Acelaprin in liquid, uh, those will all ship tomorrow morning if you order them today. So... It's a good way to get your stuff on its way to you if you are in a rush. All right, cool. Very, ni very nice. Next up, we have Brew Cruise Fishing, who says, Celsius and Certainty are the truth. Took care of my salad bowl in my backyard. Uh, now it's 99.9% .9 Bermuda. I just need some advice on bare spot areas. Sure. So that's good. That's the whole goal behind it, right? Uh, Brew Cruise. I mean, the idea is you apply this to the herbicides one time. You know, maybe we have to do it like some some spot follow up treatments, but for the most part, if you do it and apply it the way that I suggest, one app is really going to put you in a really good place. As far as the bare spot, bare areas, it's, we have to figure out why. You have to give me more details as to why you have the bare spots or bare areas. Is it is it just a thing where you had like a lot of weeds in one section and it's just taking a while for um, now the weeds are gone? That's that it's giving the Bermuda a chance to fill in. If that's the case, it's just going to be a time thing. It's just going to be a time thing. You know, you can't really. Uh, you can't really fast track that outside of, you know, mowing, picking up your mowing frequency. Believe it or not, the more you mow, the more you're going to stimulate um, new growth in the grass. So that's going to help it fill in a bit quicker. But getting rid of the weeds so that the Bermuda is not competing with, you know, other plants for, for nutrients um, and, you know, and plant, uh, for nutrients and also space is also going to help that these those bare spots fill in. The only thing I might tell you is ensure that there's not, and you know this already, but ensure there's no, it's not like any shade, there's no shade issues. That will cause you to um, to lag a bit as far as the uh, the bare spots or thin areas filling in. But outside of that, man, you you got it. You got rid of, you did exactly what I suggest, right? Like if people ask me, how do you get a great lawn? Say, and they say, hey, I don't want to join the Golf Force Lawn Academy. I don't want to watch all your YouTube videos. Like, give it to me. Give me like the, a quick, you know, the Cliff Notes version of it. And what I did is, you've got your your infographic here, where you just go home and just click on that, click on shop. Actually, you can click on home. You just click on shop, and this will take you to this page, the product categories page. But there, you will find a very carefully prepared infographic, which says: Step one, eliminate weeds. You've already done that, Bruce Cruz. Step two, get a soil test. 
I recommend the one from my soil, but if you have another one that you like, that's fine too, but just get a soil test. And then once you get those soil test results, fertilize your lawn based on said soil test results, and then mow, mow, and mow some more. And now, now we're at a point where we can start, you know, introducing, you know, a, um, you know, our, our biostimulants and top dressing and all, we got all the fundamentals covered. And now we're really going to get to really take advantage of a lot of those, those products. So in a nutshell, this is what you need to do. It sounds like you got step one down. And by doing step two, step three, and step four, that's going to correct the bare spot areas in your lawn. And it just takes time. Just takes time. You know, a lawn is not something you can just Thanos snap and just get like that. If we could, we wouldn't really appreciate it, right? So it's, it's the fact that you have to chase it is what makes it kind of fun. All right, next up is Parker's Aquatics. He says, I was going to pick up some screen sand to spread and it's $50 a ton. Is that delivered? That's probably just, that's probably, the, that's probably not delivered. It's probably more delivery fee on top of that. All right, $50 a ton. I feel that like that's expensive. Can anyone else share what they pay to pick up a ton of screen sand? That does not sound crazy expensive to me, Parker. That doesn't sound, that doesn't sound expensive to me. I mean, if it's delivered, it's really not bad. But I, I, I imagine that's not delivered. So I would, I would expect that you're going to pay, mm, I don't know. I mean, it's, that's, that's, that's not, that does not seem expensive to me. I put you, put you in perspective, right? If you got the super sod leveling mix, uh, that is going to cost you one ninety nine. or if you think if you use my discount code, it saves you 10 bucks. Uh, so let's call it one ninety. but that's delivered. And that's a lot more expensive than 50. So even if they charge you like a, you know, $35 delivery fee or whatever it happens to be, you're still cheaper. Granted, it's, you're comparing apples and oranges. They're not, they're not equivalent. Those two things, even though they both have sand in them, they are not the same thing. Uh, it kind of gives you the idea of whenever you have a very premium product versus just, just pure screen sand, the price difference. So $50 a, a ton doesn't seem to me doesn't seem like a really bad price it doesn't seem terribly bad i might one thing i might ask them is if you can get them to quote you by volume instead of by weight i'm a bigger fan of doing that because the problem with sand is if it gets wet like less sand weight like wet sand weighs a lot right so if you can say hey i want a cubic yard for fifty dollars then you know by volume you're getting enough material to be able to cover a thousand square feet thereabouts in your lawn but you know a ton Again, a, a yard weighs around a ton, but if it's really wet, you might be getting less than that. You know, so if, they, if you can get them to quote you by volume, that would be, that would be great. But yeah, um, to me, that's not a bad price. But we'll see what anyone else in the chat thinks as far as pricing goes for uh, for that. Next is Kathleen Gamble. I used to know. A, I actually used to know a Gamble, Dorian Gamble. He says, good evening, everyone. Uh, I fertilized my grass a couple days. Later, I have some brown streaks. How can I repair it? Hmm, thank you. So it sounds, Kathleen, like you may have over-applied the fertilizer if you're talking about brown streaks in the lawn, especially if they are, if they're like in a in a line, a straight line, that's likely from like a, a heavy, a heavy pass with a broadcast spreader, maybe going a little bit heavy or overlapping a bit too heavy. The answer to your question is really gonna be time. You can water the area heavily. That's going to help try and flush some of the fertilizer through the soil profile. It's going to help a little bit, but really it's just going to be time. You did not say what kind of grass you have. It's, if it's Bermuda, it's going to recover. Most grass types are going to, are going to recover from that, um, but it's just a, it's a time thing. It's a time thing. The only thing I can tell you to really help things a little bit is to water heavily. Again, it's going to help flush some of the nitrogen away from, uh, from the grass, but it's just wait. It's a waiting game. It's a waiting game. So sorry you're dealing with that. It is temporary. The lawn will recover. Fair not. Higgy pops in the live stream. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Yeah, man, this is a good thing, guys. It is Memorial Day weekend. And, uh, you know, definitely make sure that you, I mean, I'm not, not to get all preachy, but, you know, there's a lot of people that have, that have, that have suffered a lot for um, for this country that still suffer a lot, you know, even daily that did have to deal with a lot. Um, so first, to have a lot of the freedoms we have to have awesome lawns and to live in a place where, you know, we don't have to worry about rockets flying through the windows or anything like that, like some other parts of the world right now. So take some time out this weekend to definitely, um, you know, if you see a veteran or someone that, that served in the armed forces, to thank them for their service. And also, you know, just take some time to think about people that paid, you know, the ultimate sacrifice for us to have a lot of the freedoms that we uh, that we enjoy in this great country of ours. So uh, thanks for the the coming to the live stream, Higgy Pop. Just you saying have a great weekend just made me think about that. So 
There's my PSA about Memorial Day weekend. If you want to barbecue too, that's fine, but that's not really what, that's more a 4th of July thing. But if you want to barbecue this weekend, won't hold it against you either. All right, next up is Joel Hernandez. He says, happy Friday. Uh, happy Friday, Ron. Finally made it to the live stream, watching the entire live stream while waiting in line at Chick-fil-A for some lemonade. Man, don't talk to me about Chick-fil-A. I'm upset right now. My local Chick-fil-A, the one that's closest to me, they're down for maintenance. Chick-fil-A, I'll tell you something. Chick-fil-A, as far as a, you can tell I have brighten up, because I do love, I do love some Chick-fil-A. I really do. I, you know, I get in trouble for eating it too often, but it's, it's, uh, I love, I just love Chick-fil-A. Love the lemonade. Anyway, uh, they're down for maintenance because they're trying, I guess they're trying to put in maybe one of those dual drive throughs and, you know, upgrade the place and give it, you know, make it even more crowded than it are, than all the Chick-fil-A's already are. But yeah, I feel you, man. Their live, their, uh, live stream, their lemonade is the truth. That is, uh, for me, Chick-fil-A lemonade is top. And then Milo's is a second, a good second. And then there's everything else is then after that. And here's the thing, for Milo's being a bottled lemonade, it definitely punches way above its weight because the Chick-fil-A lemonade is made fresh every single day from what I understand, right? They make it fresh in the store every day. Whereas Milo's, I think it is, it's relatively fresh, but again, it's bottled and they gotta, they gotta, they gotta ship it out. So for a for lemonade, a lemonade that you can just buy at, you know, Kroger's or Publix or wherever you can happen to find it, really good lemonade. But I am envious, man, because I cannot easily go and go get Chick-fil-A lemonade right now. I gotta drive a little bit further to go find one and it's just not really worth it. So there you go. I'm glad you're watching the live stream though. Glad you're watching the live stream. It's funny, I mean, you know, until they shut down, I was on a first name basis with some of the people at my Chick-fil-A drive through which is not a good thing to be known for, but hey. Man, that, that lemonade something else. All right, next up is Logan Brunner, who says, hey Ron, I bought the Yard Mastery Backpack Sprayer. I watched your spring blueprint video on what you're putting down. How did you determine how much of that product to put down after a soil test? Um, how much do I put, put down after a soil test? Which, which part of the blueprint are you talking about? If you're talking about the, um, if I want to say if I did a lime application in that, if, if it's the lime app, it's really, there's not, at least the, not that I'm aware of anyway, there's not really a, um, let's say your pH is, I don't know, let's say it's like a mid fives, five, five or whatever. It's not as simple as saying that, you know, adding 20 pounds of lime per thousand is going to then raise your pH to the mid sixes because there's what's the measured pH. And then there's also a parameter called buffer pH, which is where the, like your soil really wants to be, like where it wants to settle. And depending on where that is, it may take more lime to raise your pH than in a, a soil where the buffer pH is like in the Goldilocks zone, like the mid sixes, right? So to answer your question, as far as determining how much to apply, whenever I apply lime, I never really apply less than 20 pounds per thousand. Like if I'm gonna put it down, I'm just gonna put it down. Last year during the summer, I did 40, a 40 pound per thousand app. So I tend to go a bit heavier on the lime because the thing with lime is even if you raise your pH from, like say you went from low sixes to say the higher sixes, right? The fertilizers that we apply over the course of the growing season tend to have an acidifying effect on the soil. In other words, they tend the salts in them tend to lower pH a little bit over time, at least the, one, the soils here in Georgia. Other parts of the country might be different, but around here, that tends to be the trend, uh, which is why a lot of lawn care services also as part of their fall apps, they will also just add a lime, they add a lime application to what they do to customers' lawns. So that's how I, I determined that, um, you know, how much lime I'm gonna put down. If the, the pH is relatively low, I'm doing at least 20 pounds. At worst case, I'll do, and if, if I really feel like it, I'll do 40 pounds, water in heavily, and then I'll measure again in three to six months and see where pH is moving around. As far as the other levels, so um, in this, the, the video that you're talking about for the blueprint, based on my soil test, my phosphorus levels are a bit high. So what I did with that was instead of using Turfplex, I just, which has phosphorus in it, I just figured out ways to limit adding that. I know that between my fertilization program, between the Humic Max and between the liquids that I'm spraying, I'm getting about eight tenths of a pound of nitrogen thereabouts every month. So even though whenever I took my soil test, the, the levels were lower, I know that once I start feeding the lawn, they're, they're gonna, I'm giving the soil what it needs per month to be able to do well, right? And it's that's kind of reflected in what you see in this video, right? Like you can look at the, the turf, that looks, I mean, I think that looks that looks pretty good. I mean, I didn't compress this video, so it's, it's kind of choppy, but um, that is based on just applying eight tenths of a pound of nitrogen and um, the liquids 
you know, at, at that combination to get up to that 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 total rate, if that makes sense. So it's not like I look at the soil test results and I say, okay, my potassium is a little bit low, so I'm going to apply a little bit more potassium. I'm going to I'm going to use this product to raise the potassium up just this a small percentage, and my nitrogen is just low. I'm going to you know add like this much product to get the nitrogen up this percentage. Literally, I look at what's deficient and I make sure that whatever I'm putting in the soil has that in it. And in the case of um, my soil, where it has where the phosphorus levels were high. I look at the soil test to say what I'm going to omit from adding to the soil. So in my case, that's phosphorus right now. So hope that helps. Um, I hope that helps. I think I think that's the question you're answering, and I believe I've answered it. As far again, as far as the liquids, um, I do about a tenth a pound of nitrogen uh, in each application, and then for the granulars, half a pound of nitrogen uh, per application once a month. So liquids twice a month at um, a tenth of a pound, and then the granular uh, once a month at around half a pound. So hope that helps. If it does, if that's not clear, just re, you know hit me up again in the in the chat below, and I'll revisit it. I want to make sure you understand it, but I think I've answered your question. All right, next up is Parker's Aquatics. And before I answer Parker's question, I'm going to take Cameron's Super Chat because I get off on tangents and I forget. Super Chat received. He says, annual rye that is scalped is growing again. Uh-huh. Will this be a problem for my newly seeded Arden 15. It was scalped and brown, but now it's dark green and growing fast. Lots of rain and cloud cover the, this past week. So yeah, Cameron, here's the thing. Um, the rye grass at this time of year should is going to have a harder time because it's getting hotter. And the, the Arden 15, conversely, is going to take off because it likes sunlight and it likes heat. Both the two things that we're getting a lot of right now. So I really wouldn't worry about it too much. The, the, the rye grass should die off. I mean, it would really start, really start, you know, falling back as far as it, how much is it dominating in the lawn. In other words, as, with temps going higher, and it, it sounds like your lawn is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. You said you, it was brown, but now it's dark green. It's going quickly, so that's exactly what I would expect to see happening in an Arden 15 lawn this time of year. The ryegrass, if you really feel like spraying it out, you can, but I, I wouldn't bother. It, it's going to get hot. It's going to, it's not, it's going to become pretty much a non-issue here in the next month or so, you know? So I, I wouldn't worry about it, especially as the RN15 really catches itself and takes off and becomes the alpha grass of your lawn, you're gonna be you're gonna be good to go. So I wouldn't worry about it. It sounds like you're in great shape um, great shape to me. You got, you know, water, some rain coming in, that's gonna help the, the Bermuda do well. I wouldn't sweat it. And I apologize for taking so long to get to your super chat. I'm sorry about that, trying to do better, but I go off on tangents, I get caught up and just keep start going. So I'm sorry about that. I appreciate the support and hopefully that answers your question. Good stuff. Okay, next is Parker. Parker's Aquatics. He says, Centerville is right up the road of, is right up the road from me and a lot, a, a lot of a quarter to an eighth acre lots uh, surrounded by wood privacy fences and centipede grass. I got you, Parker. Sounds like, I mean, if you want bigger property, sounds, uh, sounds pretty cool. Sounds very, very, very cool. All right, Naomi's in the live stream. What's going on? Um, what's going on, Rach? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. Appreciate you coming to come out and support support Pops. I appreciate you. Love you very much. Thanks for coming to hang out. Always uh, always fun. I know you got better things to be doing than watching me talk about grass, but I appreciate it. And uh, hmm, says, nice, man. So hmm, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> Chase Smith is up next. He says, hey, hey, Chase, how you doing? Hopefully you're doing well. And then next up is Q Dog, not R Dog, not S Dog, but Q Dog. Q Dog is asking, can you still level your yard? You absolutely can, Q Dog. Now's a great time of year to do it. Most of the lawn care leveling services, like now is when they recommend people doing uh, leveling their lawns. Like if you were to call up uh, Richard or um, Richard at, um, oh, why, why, can't, why can't I forget? Um, Sandman, Sandman Top Dressing. Uh, I mean, they've been doing it earlier in the season now because they've been trying to get ahead of it and get people's lawns done. But normally the time for top dressing is the month of May, June time frame. Like right now is like the Goldilocks zone because we're still getting rain and the heat's there. So the lawn's going to recover quickly. I do it earlier in the season for a couple of reasons. One, I don't want to be out there when it's crazy hot. So I do it a bit earlier so that I can get it done. I know the grass is going to grow through it and I don't really mind the grass looking, the lawn looking like a beach a bit longer than it would if I waited. And then second, 
Um, for those of you guys that are going to be doing that, I'll have content for you guys to watch on how to, you know, how to top dress your lawns. If you want to watch yet another lawn leveling video, I'll have one out for you to, to watch. But yes, you, you can still level your yard. Really, in in Northeast Georgia, you can get away about with about three top dressings per year. That's is what I would say. I mean, if you're doing it light, three in a season is is a, is fairly easy to do. I don't know if you're going to have the fortitude to do it. But if you if you're um, following what I'm if you're following what I'm saying here, you could do one in late April, early May. So that'd be like top dress number one. You could do another one in mid June, so six weeks uh, from the first one, and then you could do another one in July, late July timeframe, early August timeframe. And but this all you know is under the assumption that you're not you know you're not putting down like two inches of sand each time. You're putting down a quarter of an inch to half inch of sand, not too much. So the lawn can grow through it and recover very quickly. So yeah, absolutely can do it. Now's a great time of year to do it. So I would, I would get on, if you're not doing it yourself, call someone up to come do it for you. Or if you're gonna do it yourself, like a boss, then get out there and get your sand and your, um, your leveling mixed um, ordered and get that down and uh, and uh, and get on with it, man. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's actually a lot, it's a lot of work, but it's also a lot of fun. It's very rewarding once it's finished. So everyone that I talk to that top dresses their lawn, when, they, when they're in it, they say, oh, it's horrible. I'm never, ever, ever, ever doing this again. It's the worst thing ever while they're like talking about doing it. And then once they're done, like, oh, it wasn't so bad. I'll do it all over again. So there you go. All right, next up is Smoking Leg says, thanks for answering my question. You're awesome. That's what I'm here for. I mean, the whole point of the live stream is not just to me to talk about, you know, my lawn growing and things in the store. You know, if the store fits in and other things that about my lawn are relevant, I'll bring those up. But for the most part, it's all about you guys. It's a lawn care Q&A. It's about you know, questions you guys have about your lawn. So this time of year, I know it's, we're not, I'm not hearing as much about weeds in lawns as yet. I imagine it's going to start becoming a thing here in a few weeks. You know, if we start getting more rain and sedge, the nut sedge starts to show up, I'll, I'm sure we'll start getting questions about that. But right now we're in top dressing season. So that's why there's so many questions around lawn leveling and top dressing, so which is really cool. All right, next up is Austin Ostriker. He says, hey, Ron, I threw down carbonized PN in some bare spots and the Bermuda sprinted to it. Good stuff. I'll be buying more. Thanks. It is awesome. I mean, carbonized PN is a is an awesome, awesome, awesome product. Really, really good. It's, uh, you know, the, the the greenest my lawn has ever been. Super Sun Lovely Mix is a pretty close second, but the greenest... The green is my front lawn has ever been, and when I say green, like it's like I always call it like Disney green, like this this really rich, um, like it's just a depth of color was just was just incredible. Uh, was from Carbonized PN. If you guys saw my video that I did last year of top dressing the front lawn with just soil, and I used like a bunch of Carbonized PN in the process, that's what I'm talking about. If you actually want to see what the lawn looked like, and this picture this picture really doesn't do it justice because the pictures on the store are not this, I, I have to do a lot to make them load quickly so they don't look as awesome as they as they could. But if you scroll down here and then go to the uh, the gallery so I can find it. Uh, here, no, not that one, not that one. It's gonna be this one. Yeah, so this picture doesn't really do it justice, but if you look at the color of that, that was 10 days after carbonized PN. There's nothing else that went on to help produce this color other than carbonized PN, and you can see just how tight and green and dense that looks. I mean, that it's it's an incredible product um, for top. I mean, for top dressing. The only thing is, is that it's expensive to get. Like, if you're going to top dress a large area with it, it does add up. We do have like the big super sacks that will save you quite a bit of money. You figure if you want to get like 50 bags of carbonized PN, it's like expensive. It's like three grand. But like a um, super sack, which is equivalent to that is like around, normally for most parts of the country is like half the price, right? So shipped to your door is normally around $1,500 thereabouts, which is still expensive, but it's a lot cheaper than buying it in individual bags. And then again, my, my front lawn has never been greener than the time when I just did a, a top dress with strictly that product. It's, it's an excellent, excellent product uh, for, uh, for, for top dressing. Not for leveling, because again, it's mainly compost and biochar, but for top dressing, it is the champagne of top dressing in my opinion. Uh, just for just for compost, not for leveling. All right, I'm glad you got some good results with it, Austin, and, and I'm glad you'll be buying more. Appreciate the support. Next is Terrence Stamps. He says, hey, Ron, I just want to thank you for answering my questions whenever I ask them. I am watching and listening to the stream while I'm commuting home. Have a good weekend all. You're very, very welcome, Terrence. That is uh, my goal. That's what I'm here for, right? To try and help answer your questions. I don't always have the answers. 
Uh, but I will do my best to get you an answer whenever I, uh, whenever I can, whenever I can. So I appreciate you guys watching and uh, supporting the channel. So it's always good. Autumn is in the live stream. Autumn Henry, what's going on? My daughter is in the live stream. She's hanging out. What's going on, Ot? Thanks for coming to, I guess you you also, like Rach, are, are like bored tonight. So you can come watch dad talk about turf grass, but I appreciate the support. Hopefully you guys have hit the like button too. If not, do it. You know, I mean, you guys know what's up. You guys, you guys know what, I, you know, how I always talk to you guys about the algorithm and how important that is. So make sure you get that like button. So I appreciate the love and support. And then next up is Tyler Harris. He says, Ron, I've got a dead side of my yard, 500 square feet. Okay, so side of his yard, dead 500 square feet from a previous owner's deck, now removed, planting runners and patches of Bermuda from bed projects. Should I keep it, keep at it, or just oversee with Arden 15? So if you want the uh, the 500 square feet of area that was, I mean, it was dead because it didn't get any sunlight because the deck used to be there, to match the existing lawn, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. The best bet is going to be to let the, use the existing, like use plugs from the existing lawn, transplant them to this area, and just be patient. Really, Bermuda, once it gets hot, and it's, starting, it's already getting hot, but you know, now it should really begin to take off. You know what I mean? So as long as that area is getting plenty of sunlight, you know, you said it was a deck, so decks are normally built next to houses. So as long as this, the, the house is not creating a shade condition to where it's getting adequate sunlight, it should fill in. You know, 500 square feet is not really that big of an area, but I'd imagine by the end of the season, especially like once you get those plugs to take and they start coming through, it should start filling in fairly well. You know what I mean? So I, that would be my recommendation if your goal is to have the existing lawn match this new area as closely as possible, because it is gonna match because it's the same grass, right? Overseeding with RN15 can work, or, or seeding the area with RN15 can work, but I don't know, you didn't say what kind of Bermuda you have. If you have Tiffway 419, those two together look decent. They look pretty good together. Like my lawn, when you're looking at the, you know, the Mutt lawn, um, that is literally Arden 15 and Tiffway 419. You're seeing both grasses in there, in this, in the lawn, right? Um, so it can look decent, but it doesn't look like that initially, right? When you first do it, you can definitely be able to see the, the areas that are Arden, and you're definitely going to be able to see the areas where it's, where it's Tiffway. But over time, they kind of blend together, and it looks, again, it looks like how that looks. So it's a long-winded answer to tell you it depends. For most people, if you're really picky about how things look and you want to be, you want to make sure that it matches, just wait, just be patient. It's Bermuda. It's really not going to take that long to fill in. But if you're not patient and you don't care that it matches exactly, then you can go, you can see it with Arden, assuming you can find it. Because Arden 15 is uh, being discontinued. So whatever you find, like that's going to be the last of it, right? So something else to keep in mind. John Williams is here in the live stream. He says, hey, Ron, I'm about to kill this rye grass and put down some grass plugs, St. Augustine, maybe centipede. Why not Bermuda, John? Let's, I mean, I'm not even going to finish reading the question, your question. Let's have a quick sidebar here before I continue on. I mean, you're getting rid of the rye. Good. Yay for that. That's fine. But why not go with Bermuda? Bermuda is such an excellent grass. It's a good option. I didn't see Bermuda listed there. I hear like all these other grass types and like the, the one that I, you know, near and dear to my heart, no mention. Anyway, it says, how long should I wait until after I spray to plug the lawn or can I plug the lawn and kill ryegrass? I would kill ryegrass and then plug. Here's why. Even though herbicides are labeled as being safe for that particular grass type, right? So you take like the Celsius certainty combination. Excellent herbicides, very safe for the grasses that they're designed to be safe for when applied at the rates they are supposed to be applied at. Um, they're very, very safe. However, they still are a stressor. Any herbicide is a stressor. So when you when you apply herbicide to, to a lawn, even though it is labeled for use on that grass type, it, there is a mild amount of stress you're introducing to the grass. So if you're putting down brand new plugs, the last thing I'd want to do is transfer plugs into an area you're trying to establish a lawn and the first thing we do is we smack it with herbicides you know even though you're, you're going at, a, at light rates or you know whatever i just i would i would do my best to clean up the lawn to eliminate the weeds you want to get rid of first and then uh plug the lawn that's that's the sequence that i would follow now what you can do conversely is you can plug the lawn let the plugs get established, get to the point where you can actually mow it, you know, to where they're, they're established, they're rooted in. And then if you want to use post-emergent herbicides like Celsius, like Certainty, that's going to be fine too. That's another option. But what I would not do is plug the lawn, like say today, 
and then a week from now, go and spray a full rate application of herbicides over it. You know what I mean? You wanna you wanna let the new give the new grass a chance to root and catch itself and and get established before you introduce any kind of um, you know any kind of chemical stressors like herbicide to it. That would be my recommendation. So hopefully that makes sense. And uh, good luck on the project, man. Listen, it's not too late to consider Bermuda. Bermuda in your life, it's a good thing, you know. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be considered a weed. I am. I am living proof that Bermuda can actually look pretty good if you take care of it. All right, Tyler Harris says it looks like crabgrass or Dallas grass. You think so, Tyler? I mean, I could see Dallas grass for one, but this one is the. It's the the seed heads that look really weird to me. So that looks like Dallas grass to you. I mean, crabgrass. No, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no to crabgrass on this one. Dallas grass. If this is Dallas grass, it's some kind of alien-looking Dallas grass. That's I've never that that's um that's not like how Dallas grass typically looks to me. But maybe, maybe. But it looks you know the my buddies that looked at it said it's some kind of a field grass or they said they, they they've told me I've asked I asked three people that spray lawns for a living, and all of them said I've never seen that in a residential lawn in Georgia. So they're not sure. I'm not sure where. Uh, this person is, but they said it's not something that's common to lawns in Georgia, or at least not to this area. So, uh, so there's that. And I don't, I don't think I don't think crabgrass. I don't think uh, definitely not crabgrass, and maybe Dallas grass. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so on that one either. And then the other one, which is this guy, uh, the viewer thought it was creeping bent grass, wild creeping bent grass. So I don't know. I'm not sure. But keep chiming in. Give me your answers. Let me know what you guys think about them. All right. Next up is Aaron. Stem Steensma says, Ron, your shows are the best. I really appreciate it, sir. I'm not but the best, but I try and be of value to you guys. Sometimes I get it right, sometimes not so much, but either way, we have a great time, right? You guys get to make fun of me, like trip it over my words and trying to answer these questions in a way that is entertaining and beneficial. Rolex DSD is here. He says, let's go. Yeah, right. Let, let us go. Let's go. All right. Next is Cooper24. He says, hey, Ron, I have a quick question. My backyard has a slight slope and rain tends to puddle at the bottom. What do you recommend doing to prevent the stagnation of water? Should I level the lawn? So without pictures, it's really hard to say exactly what the best course of action is gonna be. Cooper, I will tell you that one of the best, thing, not one of the, like the best thing I've done for my lawn as far as um, helping with water not pooling on the surface, staying on the surface for extended periods of time was top dressing. It, it made a, it was a, this is the first time I did it. it, made a night and day difference on how much or how long water stays on the lawn. Um, something to keep in mind here too, and this is something I, I fixed on the slope for my front lawn, is if you have, if, how can I explain this? If what, if, if the water from the house, like if you have any, any kind of downspouts, any kind of drainage from the house, that drains onto the slope, if there's a way you can redirect that water to where it drains somewhere else, that is gonna help too. So thing one, again, without seeing pictures, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm picturing my slope and, and on your lawn and what I would do to fix it or how I improved mine. One, I top dressed it, that helped. The second thing I did to help um, prevent a lot of water from always just rushing down the slope, causing erosion and just in general, just causing problems, was um, for all the downspouts, all the, the areas that um, where water comes off the roof that were dumping into the mulch bed that's in the front of the house, which then ultimately ran down in the front yard and creates a big mess. When I got tired of always having to pick mulch up out of the yard before I mowed it, is I got some of that flex, that black uh, flex tubing that you can get from Home Depot. Like I, I attached that to it and then ran it along the side of the house and have it dump onto the driveway. I will make a note, if you if you watch my... YouTube stories tomorrow morning. I'll actually show you what I'm talking about. I'll get I'll get this out. I'll get the phone out and I'll video and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about, like what I did to help reduce uh, water getting on the slope. So that's a, so there's a couple, there's a multi-step approach to this. Top dressing, yes, absolutely. Aerate the lawn, good to do a good top dressing job. Like a 70-30 mix with some sand in it is gonna do a great job for helping the slope pull water away from the surface. The next thing is to prevent water or large amounts of water from ending up on the slope in the first place. And the way we do that, assuming that, again, I haven't seen your house, but assuming that your, your part, like some spout from your home is draining onto the slope, we gotta change that. We gotta like redirect the water to go somewhere else. And those two things coupled together is gonna do a lot to help reduce 
the amount of water uh, that sits and stagnates on uh, on your lawn. Now, if at the bottom of the slope you got some kind of a bowl situation going on, that's you got to fix that too. Like that's like another thing you got to address. So again, without pictures, it's hard to to tell you exactly what to do. But those two things, top dressing and then limiting water that gets on the slope, are things that will help uh, the situation. So. Hope that helps. Best answer I could give you without pictures, but uh, that's what I have done, and it's made a huge difference on how much washout and damage I have had on my slope. And then John Williams said, "Those two weeds look pretty terrible. Must kill those." That's what one of my buddies said, man. He said, "He said I don't know what this is, but he said this guy to quote his words, this weed. If I can find it, this weed is like you know, like the guy in a bar that you don't want to get into a fight with. That's what this weed looks like. It's like some kind of rough and tumble weed. Like you could throw." whatever you had at the truck at this, and it would just probably take it and just like laugh at him because it's it's just a, it's pretty gnarly looking, right? It's pretty really nasty looking weed. So I don't want it in my lawn. And from what he's saying, it's not common in the lawns around here. So uh, so yeah, I don't know what it is. If you guys have any idea, let me know. But uh, that's a, it's a pretty, a pretty nasty one. Pretty nasty one. We got a super chat here. Let me run down here and grab it really quick from Mr. Lance F. Thank you so much for the super chat. Lance, I appreciate the support. Received. He says, happy Memorial Day weekend. Yep, happy Memorial Day weekend to you as well, uh, Lance. Just took my Kentucky bluegrass to half an inch yesterday. Man, bless your heart. With a five blade manual reel mower. I used the same mower all of last year at one inch. I just bought a seven blade manual reel mower to help with the lower height of cut. The grass is still blotchy. Yeah, so here's what you're gonna find. Whenever you make a major height of cut change, and I consider that to be a major change, going from like half inch to, to sorry, from one inch to half inch, especially with a manual reel mower, that's a big change. That's not that's not like a you know, it's not a light change. It's gonna, there's gonna be an adaptation period. You know, I would give it a couple two weeks, two to three weeks of regular mowing and seeing how it looks. You'll know then. You'll know then if the um, if the you're gonna be able to maintain that with a manual reel mower. You know what I mean? You're gonna, you're gonna, um, you're gonna be able to, to, you'll be able to see. I've not, I don't know anyone that's really pulled off half an inch, at least throughout the entire season anyway, with a manual reel mower. Could be possible, could happen, could be doable. But, uh, but just, just don't. How it looks now is, I would not put too much stock in that. I would give it a couple of weeks and keep mowing it, see how it looks, and then make your decision on whether you're gonna be able to say it half an inch or whether you're gonna have to. Sort of, raise it up, if that makes sense. So appreciate the super chat, sir. Thanks for the question. And if you need anything else, let me know. Let me know. Next is Cameron. Cameron is back. Cameron Hearn, he says, Ron, I just moved into a new house. Backyard was uneven and I hauled dirt in and seeded with annual ryegrass, okay? And then I seeded with, with Arden 15. After a week of rain, uh, cool temps, the rye is growing again. Hmm. Oh. Mm. So which do you want to, to grow, Cameron? Because you're putting down Bermuda and you're putting down uh, ryegrass. So it's like, do you, I mean, I, I would pick one to get established first. Like really, I would do the Bermuda this time of year now. And then the ryegrass, if you wanted to get that going, you could do that in the fall. But it's, it's kind of your call. But doing both at the same time, you're, like, you have two grasses that are kind of competing with each other. But if it's, if it's working for you, uh, just you know, keep doing with it. And I guess you're asking me, is that a problem? I'm scared to cut it again to harm Bermuda, new Bermuda growing. Yeah, so I would not do a ryegrass seed and an Arden 15 and a Bermuda grass seed at the same time. I pick one or the other. And this time of year, I would lean again towards the Bermuda more so than ryegrass. I would do like rye in the fall when Bermuda's starting to go away. And Bermuda, like this is now the go time to really get the Bermuda to grow in and get established. I would not do both. Given that you know, it sounds like you want to have the Bermuda be the lawn or the grass type during the summer months, like during like this time of year. Once it's established, it's, whenever once it germinates and it's growing in, I would start mowing it. In other words, I would focus more on keeping the Bermuda happy more so than keeping the ryegrass happy this time of year, because really this is Bermuda time, not annual ryegrass time. You know what I mean? So you want you want to give the grass love that is supposed to be growing that that, that for the time of year, time of the year that you're you know you're you're you happen to be in. So like late March all the way through September, that's Bermuda time. That's that's warm season grass time. After that, then you can do ryegrass. So that those would be my thoughts. It's up to you whether you want to do that or not. But I I would definitely not do both at the same time. That's uh that's you're kind of working against yourself there. Plus it's also a headache, right? If you ever have to spray herbicides, like you gotta be super careful 
because you can't use Celsius or certainty because they're gonna they're gonna damage the ryegrass, right? So that's why having one dominant grass in the lawn at a time of whether it's warm or cool, like one either either or, is a I think a a course of, of wisdom. Just makes your life a lot simpler should you ever have to spray herbicides. Next is Robbie Marie. He says, "Hey Ron, I just picked up some more Nutrisol from the lawn store, and yes, my front yard is a project building up the soil before I bring in new sod. Very cool, Robbie." Very good stuff. Yeah, get get that Nutrisol, man. I'm telling you, because it was sold out for the better part of a week, week and a half. And, you know, there we got some more in, but it's not a lot. So if you if you know you want to use it, I would get, a, you know, a ga- at least get a gallon. Gallon, two gallons, whatever you're going to need to hold you over for, you know, another month or two, whatever, depending on how big your lawn is, um, I would get it. Because it's an excellent product, but like, like products that are really good and that people like, you know, everyone buys it up, so... I'm telling you guys so you have a chance to, to get it. All right, next up is Mauricio uh, Salinas. He says, I bet you bought a Sterling. I have that one, and although with some unfor- I, I have one, although with some unfortunate surprises, still working with Austin UK to resolve, was trying to resolve. Huh. You guys let me know what you're what you're um what, what you were dealing with, uh, Mauricio. So if you don't mind, I know you may not want to say here, but if you don't mind, email me. Ron at golfcourselawn.com. Just let me know what the challenges you're having are, what the issues you have going on with it. Just interesting hearing. I mean, you have to, if you can't say, that's fine too. But if you feel you know, like you could, I mean, I won't share anything you tell me, but if you, if, I'm just interested in finding out um, what issues you're dealing with um, if, uh, because it sounds like you are having some challenges. I didn't have any challenges with the mower when I ran it. Granted, I only used it for a couple of hours. But I will confirm that the mower that I'm getting is not a Sterling. It is not a Sterling. A Sterling is a great machine. Uh, it's a great you know, it's a good machine, but for my lawn, it would be, it's not enough. It's not, it's not big enough. Like it's too, like a 20 inch mower. Like last time I had a 20 inch mower was when I had the push reel mower. And that would be, for me, that would be a step backwards if I'm going to cut with it. Like if I got the Sterling and all I was going to use it for is verticutting and like turf raking, then then that would be, it would be okay for that. But if I'm actually going to use it to mow, then I need something a bit more substantial. So it is an electric, but it is not a Sterling. It's not a Sterling, which kind of narrows things down a bit, right? So we shall see. Next up is XV Big Bird VX. All right, cool. He says, it's already um, 80 to 90 degrees. Should I wait for the fall to level my lawn? Fescue, Northern California. Thanks. Yeah, so with you having a cool season grass, um, Big Bird, it's, you know, leveling the lawn, especially if you go heavy, is a mild stressor. So if, you, if you're if you gonna do it now, I'd go really, really light. It, to your point, you'd be better off doing it in the fall. Um, that's when your grass is really gonna begin taking off. That's when it's gonna be, that's when it's gonna be growing aggressively again. So I wouldn't be, I would push to do that now. I really wouldn't. There's not really a good reason to, like I would not do a heavy top dress on KBG now, on ryegrass now, or really any cool season grass, especially with the temps being in 80 to 90 degrees. I mean, if, if you really want to go do something like a light compost, that that could be okay. But I really, I mean, waiting until the fall is was, is a much better course of action, um, in my opinion. I really wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't, like, it, it, it's like asking me, would I top dress Bermuda in, like I do a top dress of Bermuda in October? No, I, I really, I wouldn't. It's just the time, it's the wrong time of year to do it. You know, you know what I mean? You need to do it whenever, the grass is enter in, entering into when into its growing season. So for you guys, that's either in the spring, um, early spring, and then or into the fall months. Right now, it's just you're just trying to keep it alive. You're trying to make it survive the 90 degree temps. So wouldn't do that uh, right now. Wouldn't do that right now. So hope that helps. Next is Robbie Marie. He's back. He says I will forward some pics soon of the battle royale in the backyard with the St. Augustine and Bermuda fighting for unclaimed soil. So which one do you want, Robbie? Because I think, I'm trying to remember if you wanted the St. Aug- Augustine or the Bermuda, because one is easy to get. Like, it's easy to get one to become the dominant grass. It's not so easy for the others. If you have Bermuda, and you want Bermuda to be the alpha grass, um, that's an easier proposition than if you have St. Augustine and you want to get rid of Bermuda. Like, I don't know of, I'm trying to think if there's any herbicides that I'm aware of that will kill Bermuda and not kill St. Augustine. Um, and there's not many that I'm aware of. Whereas if you want to get rid of the St. Augustine in Bermuda, just spray it with Clinclorac at a higher rate. And that will, you know, spray it at a higher rate with Clinclorac and then mow it short. Two things that a St. Augustine doesn't like, and then Bermuda will become the main grass. So it depends on what you want. Depends on what you're, what you're after. For me, I would choose Bermuda, but that's me. 
Uh, I'm just a little bit biased on that one, a little bit biased. All right, Two Trilla says, I knew it. Ron Henry is getting an Alex. I knew you couldn't resist despite the size. You knew I had, a, I, you had a vision about this. I had a vision about this. Way to put a spin on the channel if it's true. Um, maybe we'll see. We'll see. Um, we'll see. You know, here's the thing that I that's in, that I will tell you that I, that's that's um, that is appealing. Is the ability like I want to be able to regularly verticut the lawn? That is a thing that I want to do, and I don't want to also have to go out and rent a verticutter to do it. Now, granted, this is a more expensive way of going about doing that, right? Uh, but also just having the functionality to use the other cartridges and that kind of thing. It's going to be cool. I'd like to try, you know, I'd like to try um, maintaining the lawn using their system for part of the season. I, I want to see if we, if we do it, if I do it their way, right? Because I know, I know what the results, that, I know what my way looks like. I know what my results look like. And they look, I, I think, pretty good. Um, but what I'm being told is that it can get even better if I follow their program, their method of doing it, you know, their regular, their regular turf raking and verticutting and that type of thing. So I'm willing to give it a shot. You know me, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to experiment and give it a, give it a go on the lawn and we'll see, we'll see how it works out. I, you know, it's, you gotta realize that like, um, Alec does make, um, they do make mowers for homeowners, but their real bread and butter is for like professional turf fields, kind of like Toro. Like Toro doesn't really care. I mean, they probably care a little bit, but in their real mowers, they don't really care about us in the home care space so much. They sell to golf courses and professional sports fields. Same thing with Alep. They sell to, um, like there's a couple of MLB teams that use their stuff. Uh, Manchester United, like football, like so soccer uses their, their stuff. Um, the a lot of the royal the royal properties in the UK are cut with their stuff, so they make so they make good equipment, and, and their commercial stuff is used by you know, by you know the who's who of, of people that really care about turf grass. Um, so it'll be interesting, it'll be interesting to see. You guys will find out soon enough, and uh, we'll see, we'll see. I'll, you guys know me; I will document all of it. You guys will see the video and the entire program, everything I'm going to be trying out, and we'll see how it goes. All right, next up is, uh, you can send it to to Texas where freedom lives. Um, I'm not sure what you what you mean, um, but yeah, Texas is, uh, is, is uh, you guys pretty much do, th do things your way. Oh, you mean as far as the Advion, that's what you mean. Yes, yeah, so if if you happen to win, Robbie, uh, Advion is shippable to Texas. So for those of you guys that don't know what I'm talking about, um, we are gonna do a giveaway next week um, where, or we'll announce the winner next week where you can win a two pound jug of Advion Fire Ant Bait. One of these guys from most normal size lawns is gonna last you for a couple of seasons. On my lawn, this two pound jug lasts for like a season and a half. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's a pretty cool pretty cool thing to win. I mean, they're not, it's not crazy expensive. It's like, you know, 50, $50 thereabouts. And I will send it to you at my expense. And uh, the way you enter is all you have to do is go to my recent video on on Advion on this product and leave a comment that has Advion in the uh, in the, the the comment section. So if you quick comment about saying, yeah, I want to try Advion or I hope I win Advion or something that has, the word Advion has to be in it. Because whenever I, I go through and I use the tool that I use to announce the, to, to randomly pick a winner, um, there's going to be people in, in there that just have regular comments um, and they're not gonna win because you have to do two things. One, you have to have Advion in the comment so I know you actually are entering for the giveaway. And then second, you have to be present to win. So next week, whenever the live stream goes on, you gotta actually be here to have a chance of winning it. So I'm putting the link to the video that you have to comment on in the live stream now. Um, Advion giveaway uh, video. You guys have the instructions and uh, there you go. And that's the video you need to, you need to add it to. So hope that helps, hope that, hope that helps. All right, next up is Russ C. He says, how soft does the soil surface need to be uh, for Arden 15, uh, sorry, sorry, R15, uh, for a Tiffway 419 sod install? It keeps raining and packing, and packing back down my scarified till surface install next week. It doesn't have to be super soft, Russ, I mean, it, you know, it doesn't have to be, um, I mean, it doesn't have to be, I mean, when you say it's, it's getting packed down, I imagine it's still, it's still relatively soft. It's not getting, it's not getting crazy compacted in a week just from a little bit of rainfall. So you're, you're likely fine. You know what I mean? If you're asking, does it need to be like super fluffy before you put the sod down on it? No, absolutely not. I mean, if you watch when these guys are building uh, houses around here and they put the sod down, 
it's, you know, they put solid on dirt that I necessarily wouldn't, I, I would not be so quick. I put do a bit more prep work than they do and it grows in just fine. So you're going to be just fine with the 419. It sounds like you're already doing a lot of, um, you can say, you can say exactly what the prep work you're doing is, but if you are bringing in soil, you're leveling it, you know, you're just, you're putting some organic material in there. You're just trying to get the soil prepped. You're going to, you're going to be just fine. Bermuda is not very picky in what it grows in. It's going to, the big thing that it has to have is sunlight. So if you have sunlight, you're going to be good to go. As far as what you're for your um your soil prep, I'd say you're you're more than likely good to go. I wouldn't wouldn't sweat it too much. Uh, Chris Ferguson says, "What's the best bug killer and how long do they last? How far away from the house do you do you spray, and do you apply it to the walls and eaves of the house? I have lots of ants, crickets. I live in the country, so it like it depends. It depends what you're trying to target. So if you want to get rid of ants, like if you want ants gone, then this is an excellent product, the Advion Fire Ant Like this is a good product, uh, Chris. I would like the video I just linked in the chat. I would apply this around the perimeter of the house and then around the perimeter of your property. That's going to keep them away from the home, and then it's also going to keep if you have neighboring lawns, it's going to help keep them out of your lawn. So that so two rings like that is going to do the trick for you. I got a video here. It's the one that's in the chat. The one that's in the chat says Advion uh, giveaway video. And I can actually just tag you in it here because I, I think it's still on my clipboard. So I can copy and do it to you. So um, um, add, here you go. So for Chris, there you go. So that that video, that's going to cover fi the uh, the fire ants. Now, as far as um, other insects, it depends what you're trying to target. I am a really big fan of, of the Miramichi Green Pest Control. Looking at what this, this also will cover ants too, but if I can bring the label up here so you can actually see it. Nope, because the light's not good, yeah. So this will also cover, can you see here? It covers ants, noceums, roaches, ticks, aphids, white flies, fleas, and chinch bugs. So this is a very, very good um, pest control. It's non-toxic, and you know I don't know why I don't just show you on the store because that would make sense, right? It really makes it really easy to show you the label that way. So go to the shop, go to Miramichi Green Biostimulants, and on the top shelf is the pest control. Uh, this again, it's a non-toxic product. So literally with this thing, the nice thing about this is that you can spray this um, kind of like what you are talking about. You can spray it on the outside of the house. You can spray it on the sides of the house. You can spray it on shrubs. You can spray it on your lawn furniture. You can spray it on the patio. And literally once it dries, you can re-enter the area. It's not toxic, so really you could you could technically you're in the area right away, but you, you probably don't want to have like, have your clothes smelling like lemony, which is how this stuff smells. It actually smells pretty nice. So as far as something that is that is safe, that the bugs cannot form a resistance to, which is really nice, this is an excellent product. You can see everything that it controls here and more, spiders as well. Um, it, it, does a lot of, it controls a lot of different products, a lot of different um, insects. Now, I've got a video here that shows you in the description uh, how I recommend to use it. I recommend using a fogger, like if you're gonna use it on the outside of the home, you can use a backpack sprayer, but a fogger is really better. One, you're gonna get a lot more coverage by using a fogger, and then it makes it much easier to spray the side of the house, spray eaves, spray shrubs, that kind of thing. You just get a lot more coverage out of the product if you do that. I will have a link, I think I have a link in here to a fogger, yeah, right there. So in the description as well, there's a fogger, the one that I use in this video. So um, this is a great, I mean, this is what I would recommend. As far as a great product, everyone that has bought this, I have, I have not gotten any bad negative feedback um, on this one because it's not it's not toxic which a lot of people like and it's very effective it works and it, so it kills the stuff that you want dead and it's not toxic to the things that you want to you know keep around like kids and pets and that kind of thing and the bugs can't form a resistance to this like they can other insecticides so for that reason I would say that the Miramichi Green Pest Control if you want one thing to rule them all you know but if all you care about is ants Advion's a great product but then this is also I mean, excellent product as well, too. Lot, lots of great feedback on it. So got you covered there, Chris. If you need anything else, let me know. Let me know. Off the X is giving the thumbs up. I appreciate that off the X, guys. And if you are here and you have not given a thumbs up in the live stream, I would really appreciate that because the likes do help. They help with the algorithm. Next up is McNasty Motorsports. He says, Ron, nice score on the rotary scissors. Mine should arrive in the morning. Well, check out your video before I try um, before I try them. Held off on the back lawn detail work yesterday so I can practice out of sight. Yeah, McNasty, you know, what'll happen is, I I'll tell you, the video is gonna be live tomorrow morning, but I'll tell you guys in the live stream a little trick because once I get off the live, once I get off with the show, I'm going to add it to a playlist 
Um, and it's going to obviously show up in the playlist prior to being live tomorrow morning. So it's a way that you guys can see it ahead of time if you so uh, desire. It's normally going to end up in the most popular playlist. So if you really want to see it, you can, you can take a look at that and you can see it ahead of time. Only question, The only thing I ask is that you watch the entire video and you know, if you want to leave a comment, that's fine. But just while watching the entire video is really helpful. I mean, it's it's literally a, a little bit of me talking. So it's, in that video, I figure it's, it's the kind of content where people really want to see the tool work and not, and me just not like talking the entire time. So I give you some my thoughts on it, like the cost of it, the pros and cons, how I plan to use it, then I actually show it being used in the areas that how I plan to use it. And then I close out with some closing thoughts. The whole video is like right around five minutes, not crazy long. So watch the whole thing. It's fun. Got some good music in it too, which I think you guys will like. All right, McNasty, but you'll be able to see it tomorrow morning. Worst case scenario, if you don't stay up late and try and figure out where it is on the channel. Okay, next is yeah, Chris is here. He says, uh, well, look at the mirror screen pest control. How long will it last? That's the one question I didn't answer. About about three weeks. About three weeks, uh, Chris. That's what it's uh, it's labeled for. Now, here's the thing. If you get like a, a ton of rain, like torrential rain, you're just going to, two to three weeks, but you're gonna, it's going to lean more towards that two-week time frame. Ideally, you want to apply it, let it dry, and then you're going to get about three weeks of coverage uh, out of the product. So uh, it's, um, again, it's a non-toxic product. And if you want something that's just that's safe for you and fur babies and kids, then great, uh, great, great option. And a backpack sprayer does work. You get about 1,500 square feet of coverage if you're spraying like the lawn and other, and other areas with it out of a backpack sprayer. With a fogger, that coverage more than doubles. So it's it, if you're going to be spraying a lot, it's probably worth investing in a fogger, but it's kind of up to you whether you want to do that or not. Next up is Gap Performance. He says, I've been following you since the Focus ST days, and I've used some of your videos to make my lawn look way better. Keep being awesome. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, man, that's when I had the RS and was like, you know, out there chasing horsepower in, uh, in the Focus. So yeah, I appreciate that Gap Performance. Definitely. Good times, good times. Uh, Salvador L is here. He says, I have 4,000 to 4,500 4, square feet of Bermuda. I bought your Celsius Certainty and Surfactant Combo. What rates do you re do you recommend to blanket the entire lawn with this combo? Okay, so the rates are in the video. Do I have a thing? I think I do that one here. So I don't have my glasses on. So, but if you look here on, you're not gonna be able to see this. On the label, what I show, follow, follow, follow the video that's in the description. I'll show you here really quick so you can find that because um, let's go here. Go to the store and I'll show you really quick. So Salvador, if you go to Weed Killer, in the description for either Celsius or Certainty, it's the same video, you'll see a descri description of description video here. Like this is an instructional video that shows how I like to use it. There's multiple ways of doing it, but this is how I do it. And this is like a, a medium rate. It's not a crazy heavy rate. The long short of it is, is 0.45. So you're not gonna be able to see this on here because it's, the, the print's way too small. But in that video, I have some really, really tight macro shots that show you exactly how much of, of this I'm using, like where to measure to. And then I also, if memory serves me, I use three scoops, uh, three, of the, three of the small scoops of certainty with four gallons of water. So the, the measurement up to 0.45 on this cup, along with uh, three scoops of certainty with four gallons of water will cover 4,000 square feet, 4,000, 4,500 square feet. And that's a good, that's a good rate, a good reasonable rate. That is, um, you know, assuming you, you apply it properly, this is that, that, so that the four gallons goes over 4,000 square feet, shouldn't ding your grass, shouldn't have any kind of, any real negative result to the Bermuda. And uh, yeah, you should be good to go. But watch that video, because a lot of work went into that. Like, I, like there's that video that you guys see live, there are multiple versions of that. Like I did it over and over and different and redid certain sections of it to get it exactly the way I wanted to where it's as clear as possible. Um, and the people that have followed that have gotten really good results, so watch the video like that that tells you exactly how I would recommend doing it it's not that not the only way you can definitely go higher on the rates but how but I've gotten a good result with those rates so that's what I'd recommend appreciate the support if you need anything else let me know Natalie what's going on she's in the live stream tonight Natalie trans coming to hang out with us hope you are doing well hopefully that uh, the certainty did the trick on the po I know you're working on that uh, like a month or so ago month and a half ago so hopefully Lana's looking a lot better now and if you need anything else definitely let me know. Next up is Salvador. He's back. He says, what setting do you recommend on the Typhoon? I move my screen over here. What recommend do you, what setting do you recommend on the Typhoon backpack sprayer? Interestingly enough, my calibration re yielded 14 ounces on a setting in one, I guess one minute and 15 seconds 
and 20 ounces on settings to two through five and 15 seconds. Okay, so it sounds like you have the 2.5 sprayer. I don't have one of those to be able to tell you exactly what I would say, but I I would say for, for um, I'll tell you what the calibration is gonna be. But I can tell you that I would go on the lower pressures. It sounds like you're going with a higher pressure. You need to be, go go on the lower end. Work up, work up a calibration on the lower end of the pressures uh, for the Typhoon sprayer. Like my, my sprayers that I have now are the Yard Mastery and the, um, the Flow Zone Typhoon 2, not the 2.5. And I've done both ways. I've done the high pressure. I've done high pressure calibrations and low pressure calibrations. And you can get great results with either. For most people, I just tell them to go low to low pressure because one, you have to walk as fast. And then second, uh, the, the margin for error is a little bit better, right? Like if you, like it's really, if you're spraying at really high flow rates, it's really easy to over apply the product. So work up your calibration based on one of the lower calibration settings this is what I would do Salvador. And what you point out while I'm looking for the next comment is exactly the reason why I think that like a four or five, like a four or five setting sprayer for most homeowners is kind of pointless, right? Because um, like you'd have to literally do a different calibration for every pressure setting and a different calibration for every spray tip you plan to use at said pressure setting. And most people just aren't gonna do that. You can either go high or low. So in most, most cases, you're probably gonna end up using the high setting or the low setting, which in which case that five setter, that five setting sprayer really becomes a two setting sprayer. Because if you're doing it properly, you need to, you need to do a calibration for not only the different setting, but also the different spray tip at that setting. Because for example, this air induction tip is gonna flow differently than the flood jet tip which is gonna slow flow differently than the foliar tip. So you have to have a different calibration for each one of these at each setting. So I would just pick a high and a low and do work up your calibrations for each one of those, each spray tip at each that at said setting and go to town. So that's what I would do. And really, if you, if you only are, are trying to do one, like you're trying to save time, you really wanna be lazy, you don't wanna do a ton of work, pick a lower setting because for the flood jet tip, you tend to apply those at lower pressure settings and high anyway. So if you're gonna pick one, go with the, go go lower. All right, next up is G Free. He says, hey Ron, Shape Action Gang, happy Friday, great um, great Friday and happy holidays, enjoy. Thanks, uh, thanks for that G Free, appreciate that. Thanks for coming to hang out. And then next is, um, what's we here? We have Anthony Wilkins. He says, hi Ron, I had a dark green yard of Kent 31 and tall fescue, but now I have a thin brown grass in most of the yard. If I put down fertilizer, will it recover? Okay, so I'm not familiar with Kent 31. Um, and I know what tall fescues, but I don't know what Kent 31 is. I would figure out why you have, you said you, now you have thin brown grass in the yard. If you put down fertilizer, will it recover? I mean, is it the, is the grass dead or dying? Because you, I don't know what, I'm not sure what time, what, what part of the country you're in, um, Anthony. And the fact that your grass is brown, we need to figure out why it's brown. Is it because lack of water? Is it because temperatures are higher? Is it a disease problem? Uh, because the first thing that comes to mind is not to throw fertilizer at like brown grass to make it to make it green again. It's it, normally those those grass turning brown like that is like it going into it's like it's either trying to go into dormancy or um, there's something else going on that's that's causing it to to check out. You know what I mean? And fertilizer isn't the first thing that comes to mind is how we would we would fix that. So if you're still in the live stream, if you can add a little more context around like one where in the country you are. And um, if there's anything else going on that, that might be helpful for answering the question, but my, my first inclination is to tell you no. Like I would not throw fertilizer at brown, at brown grass that's potentially dying as a way to, to, to fix it. Especially with it being a cool season grass, with it being you know, late spring, early summer, because those, those types of grasses tend to struggle this time of year um, more so than say like Bermuda or, uh, or Zoysia. So a little bit more context and I'll, I'll revisit your question. All right, next is Kevin Brewster, where he says, hey guys, Ron is live. I am, I am. Mm -hmm. I sure am. Appreciate you um, trans, um, let's see here, what are the comments right here? I appreciate you, um, uh, Kevin. And then next up is Wil Wilbur Yoon. He says, uh, yo, uh, Transitions Zone represent. Thanks for coming to hang out, uh, Wilbur, in the live stream. You're representing for the transition zone, I guess. So yay for that. Go for that. All right, next is Logan. He's back here. He has a question about uh, the 901C kit and rates. Okay, so he says, 
It was a video where you're putting your fur down 901C, yeah, 901 Nutri Kelp and Carbon Kit. You're putting down point, uh, 0.15, yeah, 0.10 to 0.15. It's, I think it's point, I think it was 0.10. It should have been. If I said 0.15, maybe is a mistake, but it normally it's around 0 0.15, 0 0.10 is what I normally say. I said, okay, um, putting down 0.15 pounds on the liquids for color. Was wondering how you figured your rates. I've never done. Um, I didn't see anything else. Oh yeah, I've never done the spoon feeding type applications. So it's based on uh, the label. So the label for the label for um, Turflex is what I was using last year. Like it actually calls for that. It's so six ounces, a tenth of a pound of nitrogen. Uh, that I got really good results with that. Last year, I also did a couple of applications at 901C at those same rates. And the response, the results were also good as well. So I just stuck with that uh, for this growing season. So, so that is how I came up with the rates because it's on the label. And then next you said, um, man, I enjoy your videos. The delay wasn't a problem. I'm learning as I waited. I appreciate you taking the time to answer all the questions. So glad I found your channel. I appreciate it, uh, Cameron. Again, really sorry for taking so long to get to the super chat. Hopefully now I've answered or cleared up the question around rates and how I came up with that. Literally, if you look at the label for Turfplex, um, it's, I mean, I think I'm, unless I'm crazy here, I'm almost positive, on the back, yeah, it says right here. Uh, so, um, yeah, a tenth of a pound of nitrogen at, um, yeah, at six, six ounces per thousand, a tenth of a pound of nitrogen. So it's right on the back of, of the bottle. So that is how I came up with that. And... Through my testing, I need to empty that bottle out. It's actually a full bottle of, of, of fertilizer. There's no reason for me to have that on the shelf. It makes zero sense. Anyway, I digress. Um, so yeah, last year when I used that, I had really good results. So I stuck with that, those same rates for this year. There's no there's no real reason to change it up. You know what I mean? If it's working, like why change it? I definitely want to go up in rate. So good stuff. Next up is No Name. He says, good evening, Ron. And fellow lawn enthusiasts, sorry for my tardiness. You're here. Ron, I know about the tuna can method for rain measurement, but can you recommend a rain gauge? I can't. I don't actually use, I've never actually used a rain gauge. I don't own a rain gauge. I, I don't have one. Like I've, I've tried the one that is supposed to work in my sprinkler system, the irrigation system. It's never worked. So what I normally do is just look at the forecast, see how much rain we are getting. I run my irrigation fairly normally. And I also just, I look at the lawn. I look at the lawn. I can, I can, I can see it's, it needs a little water. It looks a little dry. Maybe I run a slightly heavier cycle than I normally do. Um, but I don't have a rain gauge or a rain measurement that I can recommend because I don't, I don't use them. I don't have any of them. So sorry, not more help on that one, uh, no name. But if you find a good one, let me know because I'm sure you'll be back in the live stream. If you find one, let me know which one you went with. Tim, uh, Timo Tio says, hey, Ron, love your channel. Thank you so much, Tim. I really do appreciate the love and support. Robert Rainey says, playing golf, checking in. So guys, here's the thing. The video that you guys are about to watch tomorrow on the rotary scissors is this man's fault. It's Robert's fault. Because he kept talking to me saying, dude, you got to get a rotary scissors. And he's like, the best thing ever it would totally change the way, you know, your lawn looks and the edging. And this and, that. and I'm like, man, it's like another tool I got to maintain and take care of. These things are expensive. I don't, uh, I don't And I got to find somewhere to put it and all this kind of stuff. And he was right. It's like one of those things is one of those things that you never knew you always needed. That's probably the best way to describe it. But it's really, it's, it's such a niche item that unless you are incredibly picky about the finish of your lawn, like you know, around mailboxes, along fence lines, around those kinds of things, it's hard to justify because it's expensive. I mean, they're between 350 and 400 bucks for this thing. And really you're buying something that technically a weed eater or a string trimmer can do the same thing. Granted, the finish is nowhere near, like a string trimmer can't match this thing as far as how the grass looks when you're done with it. But it's, you know, it's one of those things that it's, 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 one of, it's something I would consider after you have pretty much everything else that you want and you are want to have like the, like your edging be, if you want to have your edging look like it was real mode, then you need rotary scissors. So watch the videos coming out tomorrow morning. You guys can uh, let me know, give me feedback on what you guys think about it. And hopefully you enjoy it, but it's Robert's fault. It's his fault that I got one. He's still trying to get me to get something called a Darwin grip. I haven't gotten that yet, but I'm sure eventually he'll wear me down because he's, he's pretty um, convincing. So we shall see. All right, next up is Big Germ. He says, hey, Ron, thanks for answering my questions lately. My Meyer zoysia is not greening up this year. I put down liquids and granular before all this rain, but it's browner than normal for this time of year. Any suggestions? Uh, yeah, so if, if this time of year it should be greening up, um, Big Germ. So if it's got, if you've got sunlight, which, you know, zoysia needs less than Bermuda, but if you've got plenty of sunlight, 
It sounds like you're feeding the lawn. The next thing I'm gonna wanna do is a soil test, right? So if you've not done one of these, pick one of these up. The one I recommend is this guy here from My Soil. We carry them on the golf course lawn store. You know, it's it's gonna be the way to figure out if there's any kind of nutrient deficiency or something else going on in the soil that that could be holding the grass back from, from greening up because to your point, like uh, I'm not sure where you are in the country, but um, if I assume Georgia, this time of year, your zoysia should be greening up pretty nicely. You know what I mean? It may not be fully green, fully at its full, you know, full tilt yet, but it should be closer to green than it is to dormant than to to brown right now. If you're telling me it's 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 just lagging, then we need to figure out why. And a soil test will uh, will help us will help us with that. So I'd recommend that you can get the soil test and the probe like a kit together with these on the golf course lawn store. So check that out. And um, they're really easy to use. You get your results in about a week. And then if you want to, you can email me after the fact, if you get your soil test results here to ron at golfhorselawn.com and I'll go through them and I'll let you know, hey, this is what I would recommend doing. Assuming that you don't, that the, the, the recommendations that come with the soil test aren't clear enough. Cause they, that's one thing you also get too, is you get recommendations with the results when, when you do that. So hope that helps. If you need anything else, let me know. CS Mike says, uh, how often do you recommend putting down Carbon Pro G? What's your budget? Uh, what's your budget really? Really, I'd say monthly. If you can swing it, monthly is a great a great cadence. I'm doing Essential G every single month. So, you know, Essential G or Carbon Pro G, either of those, if you can do them monthly, that's a great, that, that you're going you're gonna to be in great shape by doing that. I have, uh, I have done, I have applied the products every month since the summer of 2020, every month. So uh, I apply the granulars. So, Thankfully, here in Georgia, we don't get like crazy freezing weather to where the ground freezes and you can't really apply them. But uh, but yeah, every single month since then, the lawn has gotten an application of um, either Essential G or Carbon Pro G. Last year, I switched to Essential G, and I've been using that uh, since. But Carbon Pro G is an excellent product too. You're not gonna, either one of them. You're not gonna you're not gonna um, you know you're gonna get great results with either one. So hope that helps. Really, it comes down to your budget, and then every you know for me monthly. Next up, he says, what do you think about the Anderson's Humachar? I can't really comment on it, uh, CS Mike. I've never used it. However, a lot of people that use the product seem to like it, right? And the reviews that I've seen about it seem to be pretty good. So I imagine it's a good product, but I can't, from direct experience, say, what do I think about it? You know, because I can't, I, mean, I can tell you it's probably okay, but I've never actually used it myself. But I imagine it's probably fine. Okay, next is here's another question where he says, is granular humic acid just as good as liquid? Seems like a better price proposition if it's the same uh is granular just the same as liquid? i mean humic acid is humic acid uh is it just as good as liquid uh, i mean i guess if it's if you're putting down the same percentages it should be equivalent yeah it should it should be enough to where if you took a plot that a, a control plot that was that was um that had granular humic acid applied to it and you had another one that had the same percentage of liquid humic acid applied to it and you told someone to tell you which one was which I wouldn't imagine that you'd see a big difference with all, all else being equal. So whichever one is easier to apply for, easier for you to apply. So if you're a person that likes granulars more, do that. If you're a person that likes liquids more, do that. So it depends on which way, which you, uh, which you prefer. You know what I mean? So hope that helps. All right. Mike has one last question. He says, do you know anything about, nope, that's wrong one. He says, do you know anything about whole organics bio 800 lawn? I do not. I do not. Never heard of it until right now. All right, next up is Saul Rodriguez. He says, how can I kill my ryegrass in Bermuda? Couple of different options. You can use uh, Celsius, this will do it. Celsius will do it. Uh, Certainty is also labeled, I believe for ryegrass. So either one of these guys or both of them, oh, show them part, either this by itself or this or them together, they will um, do ryegrass. Um, Revolver will also do ryegrass. It's also, but it's a lot more expensive product. Okay, guys, let's see. Hopefully this, this works. Hopefully you guys can still see me. Let's see if I pop back in. Um, but yeah, Saul, if you, um, either one, Celsius or Certainty should work. Um, if you guys can still see me, because it looks like the stream, the stream got temporarily interrupted, just give me a yes, you're still, or just send me a, a one in the chat if you guys can still see me. So like a one if you guys can still see me in the chat. I should still be live, I think, but it may have started a new stream. I'm not sure. All right, at, at any rate, um, either one of those will take care of ryegrass in Bermuda. Either one of those. Okay, I'm trying to find out where I left off because we scrolled up. 
we scrolled a bunch and I need to find where I left off. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, it says, uh, AJ Gray says, hey, if you're spoon spooning your <laughs> It sounds terrible. Okay, so I'm here. Good. You guys can see me. Good. I'm awesome. It's working. He says, hey, if you're spooning your lawn for the first time or you're spoon feeding, not, I think you don't mean spooning, you're spoon feeding, not spooning your lawn. I mean, that would be, be weird. But whatever. Teach his own, guys. It says, how do you know that your fertilizers are comparable? How do you, okay, so yes, that's a, that's a great question. It's a great question. So AJ, if you're doing a spoon feeding program um, to where monthly you're applying a granular and then every couple of weeks you're, you're applying a liquid, what I would wanna do is ensure that the, um, that I'll put these over here out of the way. I would ensure that the granular that you're using is relatively quick release and that the, um, the liquid that you're using is also quick release. It can have a little bit of slow release in there. It doesn't have to be like straight urea, but it needs to be relatively quick release because you because the idea is you're putting, you're applying at lower rates um, more regularly. You know what I mean? So the only thing I would say is is that. So you you wouldn't want to use like a like a, a slow release nitrogen or a largely slow release nitrogen for a monthly spoon feeding program because you're just not going to get a lot out of that. You know what I mean? It's you you want you want to use um, a, a quicker or faster release um, um, food source that and just apply it at lower rates, if that makes sense. So that is what, as far as how they're comparable, that's that's a big thing I would look for in first that I use in a spoon feeding program. Um, like for example, Humic Max works well. The Yard, the Yard Mastery, um, I'll show you here. I'll show you the ones that I use. How about that? that? That's way easier than just kind of talking hypothetically, right? So we'll go to the Golf Force Lawn Store. We'll get away from the herbicide section. We'll go to the fun section, right? Which is lawn fertilizer. Uh -huh. Everyone loves fertilizer. So for the granular, you could use uh, Flagship. This guy, at two, I'd recommend two pounds per thousand. That's gonna get you about half a pound of nitrogen. Um, that's a good rate if you're going to also be supplementing with liquids. And then for your liquids, you can either use Turfplex when it comes back in stock at six ounces per thousand twice per month, or you can do what I'm doing this season, which is release 901C and Nutrizolve, these two mixed together um, at lower rates. So it, so the uh, Nutrizolve uh, you could do at six ounces per thousand, but the release 901C, two to three ounces per thousand is all you need twice per month and you're gonna be good to go with that, that combination. So it, it really depends if when you're spoon feeding, are you planning to do some liquids? If so, you need to back down how much um, nitrogen you're putting into the, into the soil from granular. If you are going a strictly granular route, which some people do that, they don't wanna spray liquids, then you could just use the, that same product, the, yard, the, the, the flagship um, 2406, and just apply that at the rate they say on the bag, which is three pounds per thousand, and that's going to get you. That's going to fit your nitrogen needs for the for the month. So it just depends. If you're doing liquids, pack it down a little bit. If you're not doing liquids, uh, just use the three pound per thousand rate, and you should be good to go. All right. Next is Archie. He says asked uh, this question earlier as part of a two part question. You answered the first part, but not the second part of the question. Oh, uh, Yukon Bermuda grass. Your thought as good as a good or bad seed. I've never used Yukon, but I've also not heard anything negative about Yukon, Archie. So, uh, you know, the if you, I think if you call um, Hancock Seed or any of the other seed farms and ask them, hey, I can't get art anymore, what do you recommend? A lot of them are pushing people towards Yukon. They have more experience with that grass type than I do. I've never seeded it. I've never used it. I've never, you know, so I don't have any direct experience with it, but I would trust what they're saying as far as it being a good option instead of in, in lieu of Arden 15, if that makes sense. So I, I would roll with it. If you're really going to do a seeding project and you want to you want to do that, then that's um, that is what I would go with, because I don't know that Pennington has really announced a replacement for Arden 15 as yet. Not that I've heard of anyway. So, you know, if, if you're waiting, if you have a seeding project you're trying to do this year, Yukon might be your only bet, you know what I mean, if you're trying to really get it going uh, now. So I apologize for that, answering the second part of the question, but I revisited, we got there. All right, next up is Austin Baird. He says, hey, Ron, long time no talk. My question is, will Prodiamine help control rescue grass? I don't know off the top of my head, will it do rescue grass? It's been a nightmare for me this season. Don't know off the top of my head if it will do it. Let me check the label really quick, I can do that. Prodiamine. Um, I don't know if rescue grass is is listed on there. This is really cool, man. I gotta give it to Ecam. You know, the 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 stream resumption was pretty cool. I didn't think that was gonna work. I think that was gonna work. 
Um, yep, yeah, so it says, yep, yeah, it says it's on the label. It says, when used as directed, it will control rescue grasp, but there's a number four next to it, which means suppression only. <laughs> so it's not gonna, it's, it's, it'll, I guess if you, if you apply it, if you get it down early enough, Austin, it should prevent it from really taking off and becoming a mess in your lawn, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna kill it. So it is, per the label, I'm looking at it right here in front of me, it says rescue grass is on the label. Now, how well it works, don't have any direct experience, so I can't say for sure, but it is on the label. So hope that helps you out. Next is Dwayne Hopkins. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Excited about your upgrading video on rotary scissors. I'm sure it'll be another great video. You know what? Because I like you guys, and here's the thing. You guys got to promise me, and I have no way of making you guys do this, but I imagine anyone that's on the live stream for the most part are fans, other than the haters, and they're not going to do this. But for those of you guys that are on the live stream, I'll give you guys a link to the video now. I'll give you guys a sneak peek so you guys can check it out. But again, I really would appreciate if you guys watch the entire thing. Even leave a comment if you like it. So I'll uh, I'll give you guys a gander here real quick. So let's see. Um, rotary scissors. For some reason, I can always, it's always hard to spell scissors video. Um, and there you go. So you guys get a sneak peek. So if you guys want to watch it, open up another tab and watch it. Watch the whole thing. <laughs> don't Don't like... Don't like shortchange me here. All right, so there you go. You guys, you guys, you, for, you wore me down, but if not, you can always watch it tomorrow morning. It'll be live then. Anthony Wilkins is up. He says, Ron, can you tell me um, what this is and how can I get my back of my dark green, how I can get my dark green, uh, my dark green, my, my grass back dark green. So your question was about your grass turning brown. We have to figure out why it's turning brown. Is it is it because of heat stress that's going into dormancy? Because I have seen, like I have a picture from a viewer out of LA whose lawn is turning, he's, his parts of his fescue are turning brown, I think due to lack of water. So it's it, we have to figure out why the grass is turning brown before you can really address the problem. I do not think that just throwing fertilizer at it is going to fix the problem. So if it's if you live in a climate where it gets really hot, and it's starting to get hot, and you're not getting enough, you're not putting enough water down on fescue, it's going to start going into dormancy. It's going to start falling back. I got to tell you, the, the, the only places in this whole area that run fescue grass, that, that use fescue grass, and it actually survives, are places that run a ton of water. Like literally, they're watering every day, every other day. Like every time I, I go to karate, like the church that's right across from, from the place where I train, like they're, they're, you see the irrigation running. Like every time I drive by there during the day, it'll be, it'll be like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning, and the irrigation's running. So, if you live somewhere where it's hot, you gotta you you know that it's this, it's it's the stress time for your grass type. So you're gonna need to make sure you keep water on it. That's without seeing pictures. That's what I'm thinking is going on. I do not think fertilizer is gonna be the fix for this though, Anthony. I could be wrong, but I don't I don't believe so. Ddom is saying that weed looks like wall barley. I ran it through my through this in my picture app. Okay, so we so wall barley, cool. So um, we'll have to look at it and see what it takes to, to to kill it to get rid of it. He says the crazy one you posted in a split screen. Okay, so the one I'm talking about, guys. If any of you that are now joining the live stream late is this guy. I call it mystery weed. This guy here. So D Dom is saying it looks like um, barley, some kind of wall barley. It looks like a. I used to say that. I can see that. A barley, barley or something like that. Okay, sure. Because it's, it is. I've never seen that in any lawns around here, and I hope I, I never see it in my lawn. But uh, but yeah, appreciate that, D Dom. It could be that I have to look it up after the live stream to see what wild barley looks like. Thanks, Zach. Says happy Friday, Ron. Hope you're doing well. I am doing well, sir. Cannot complain. Cannot complain. I got to speed up here. I thought we were gonna run out of questions, but of course you guys always tend to uh, come through. William Wade in uh, uh, Wisconsin saying in Wisconsin we had no mo may. Does that extra tall grass help reseed the lawn? Not sure what the question is, William. Um, but um, but yeah, I'm not I'm not sure what your question is. So you can't mow in May. Why can't why can you not mow in May? That's why that's odd. that's why can you not mow the entire month of May? That seems weird. It seems odd. But okay, uh, you're very very welcome, Big Bird. And then next up is the Phantom. He says, Hey Ron, I'm back at again. I want to tell you thanks. Uh, for your, your free tips on lawn care. My grass is slowly but surely coming along. Awesome. That's what I love to hear. See, that is why I enjoy doing this. So that's, that's uh, getting, the, getting the pictures and the success stories is what makes this all worthwhile. So I'm glad to hear that you're starting to get some small wins, Phantom. Keep going. It's only going to get better as you keep working on it. Fairway Bermuda. Daryl is in the live stream. He says, hey, Ron, that weed with lots of seed heads grows here in Mississippi. In the south, my neighbors have it all over. I'm at work now. 
I'll find some time to research the name. So you see it in Mississippi. Okay, cool, Daryl. So yeah, you, you got my email or whatever. So just reach out to me, let me know what it is. Or just comment in one of the videos. If you can email me or just comment in one of the videos saying, hey, Ron, this is the, this is the weed that it, you know, that's what it's called. So I'll see the YouTube comment come in and I'll know it's you and what you're doing. So appreciate it. So Lance F says, hey, Ron, sorry if I wasn't clear on my question. Color change isn't from the height of cut. I sent you pictures a couple of weeks ago. Grass has blotchy, has dark blotchy patches, sporadic running through the lawn. Still looks great. So you have dark, so darker splotches in the lawn um, that are darker green. So Lance, are you sure? Okay, so let's a couple things. Are those areas getting more water? Are those areas getting more fertilizer? Are those areas having um, pets urinate? And it's not enough to kill the grass, but it's enough to cause it to, to really um, take off compared to other areas. I'm trying to think of what else would cause uh, the blotchy areas. Again, assuming it's the same grass type, right? Assuming we're not looking at two different types of grass, those are the big things that come to mind. Like more fertilizer in those areas than others. Um, like dog urine is kind of like fertilizer. So it's like same, same kind of thing. And then um, water, like if there's a difference in water that those areas are getting compared to the other areas. I'll have to look for your picture again, man. I mean, I, I'll, I think you are Lance F in my email. I'll have to see if I can find it um, and take a look at it again. But that, that's what comes to mind as far as what, just the top of, top of mind of what it could, what it could potentially be. I don't, I can't think of anything else that's, um, that's, that's popping in here. All right, and I scrolled, and so of course I lost where I was. Oh, there we go. I found it. I'm back. All right, Marvin Powell says, my lawn is stunning. Awesome, Marvin. We like to hear that. I always like to hear that. He says, the products you recommended, plus a couple others, have made a difference. Carbon Pro-G, Mermaid She Green, Kelp, the Zero, um, the Release Zero, Turfplex, Lebanon, Cubic Max, plus a couple of things from Simple Solutions. My lawn is killing it. So, you, so what, what, what I'm hearing is, what I'm hearing is, Marvin, that you didn't mention mowing, but we're gonna say that you're probably mowing well too, right? But everything else you're doing is creating a lawn that is the envy of your neighborhood, right? That's what we're going for. I mean, on the, you know, on on the on the down low, we're not like putting a sign in the lawn on our front lawn saying, my lawn is gonna dominate your lawn no matter what you do. But you know, with everything you're doing and I'm sure regular mowing, I'm not surprised that your lawn looks awesome. It did better. <laughs> it better for everything you're doing to it, right? So, uh, so yeah, always great to hear the feedback. Next time you gotta send pictures, man. Like this post is awesome, but what make it even better are pictures. And you're saying your growth regulator goes down tomorrow. That is awesome. I am a big fan of PGR. The only negative about PGR I will tell you is that once you start using it, you will not want to stop. It is pretty addicting. It's awesome stuff for your grass. Next up is Dan Kanitz. He says, keep up the good work, sir. Any suggestions on a fertilizer during the blackout? No N or P in Florida. I'm using 002 uh, micros and potassium. Just looking for other ideas. So you can't apply any nitrogen. You can't apply any uh, phosphorus. Um, I mean, there's a couple of fertilizer options. You could, what you could do is if you can get like regular compost into the soil. So like the, uh, like essential G, like that's going to help. That's gonna help improve the color and the quality of your lawn. That's something you can do. If you can apply potassium, um, there is a product that has nothing, has no N or P, but plenty of K in it. So if you go to lawn fertilizer, there is this guy, which is straight sulfate of potash, which is a really nice potash product because it doesn't, it's not, it's a lower sodium. So it's a, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a higher quality um, potassium. So this is something you can apply to your, your lawn that that's, that's going to help things. Um, but then I, I would just also just take, you know, the more the, um, like the biosimilant route. So you can't apply N or P. So that takes off, that takes release um, NutriCalp off because this has got 1% of, of each of those. So you could still do release zero. Actually, let me go here to the right one. So we go to the biosimilants. You can still do release zero because it has no fertilizer in it. So that's fine. That's good to go. You can still do um, essential G. That's going to help. And that's good to go. That meets it. And then that SOP product, the 0048 that I showed uh, a second ago, that you can also apply as well. So between those and regular mowing, you should your lawns should still look really good. Because you know even though it may feel like a handicap, here's the thing, Dan. Everyone's lawn is handicapped, right? No one else, unless they're breaking the law anyway, no one else can apply fertilizer. So by doing these things, you can still be ahead of the neighborhood competition. You know what I mean? So it's, um, you know, I, I would just go like the adding adding some K, 
and just also go the biostimulant route because that's something you still can do uh, this time of year and uh, and still be within the confines of what is legal. All right, Kathleen is back. She says, hey, Ron, I think I fell asleep waiting on my turn. <laughs> sorry, it just took me a while. It can be a bit long-winded at times. I I'm sorry about that. Because I fertilized my grass. Then a couple days ago, I had brown streaks. How to repair it? So I think I added, I think I answered your question, Kathleen. So too much fertilizer will cause that, that problem. Really, the only thing you can do is wait it out. Just wait it out. You know what I mean? A little bit of water to help flush the fertilizer down a little bit. But really, you're just going to be waiting. It's a waiting game to allow the, the grass to heal to recover from the excess fertilizer in the lawn. So sorry you're dealing with that, but it will recover. Next is Hunk, Uncle Hudat. Says, hey Ron, I just purchased a Ryobi 40 volt, four gallon chemical sprayer. Do you think you can do something on that system much better than the 18 plus four gallon chemical spreader, in my opinion? Um, okay, so if I get my hands on one, I can do a video on it. But here's the thing. The, the big thing when it comes to sprayers, Uncle Hudat, is it's very much a case of the Indian, not the arrow. Like the sprayer that I currently use is the Yard Mastery sprayer. Really like it. I've used the Flow Zone before then. Really like that one. And I used the Chapin before that one. Really like that one too. And I can get equal results with all of them. The biggest thing that's going to influence results that you get with that sprayer is if you calibrate it. So get yourself a good set of spray tips. Actually, I'll I'll just I'll I'll post them in the chat because we, we haven't haven't done that tonight. I'll give you guys the um the spray tips. Get a good set of T Jet spray tips, like a a, a flood jet tip and a foliar tip and then calibrate your sprayer. So I have a video telling you how to do that. It's not, a, it's not terribly long. Um, that will explain how the process works. I'm trying to find these. Um, there we go. Okay, so I will put, this, put these links in the chat for you. So for the air induction tip, which is kind of like an in-between tip, can work for foliar or soil-based apps, um, applications, there's that. For a foliar uh, application. So for products that are designed to stick to the plant leaf, so like your plant growth regulators, uh, most liquid fertilizers, that's going to be this guy. If I can copy, learn how to copy and paste, uh, it's gonna be this guy. And then finally for your soil-based products, so like plant, not plant, it's for your um, uh, prodiamine, like pre-emergent, uh, then you'll want a flood jet tip, which is gonna be this guy. So. Once you have your spray tips, all in, all the three of these tips is going to cost you like, I don't know, $25 to get all three of them. Not, not crazy expensive. Once you have the tips, the next thing you're going to work out is a sprayer calibration for your Ryobi. So I'm not sure what, you know, what the flow rate is or any of that stuff doesn't really matter. Where well, you're going to be able to figure that out using this video right here that I'm about to post for you in the chat. This video talks to the process that I use for calibrating a sprayer. There's multiple ways of doing it, but this is the method that I like to use. Use, like go through this video and follow and follow the instructions in that. And then you're gonna be all set to for, for applying your products. Because the whole this whole thing of like which sprayer is better than another sprayer, it's if the sprayer has enough battery power, enough runtime to be able to do your entire lawn without having to recharge the batteries, then you've your mission accomplished. You know what I mean? In my opinion. Now the construction of some of the more expensive sprayers is better. The flow rate on some of the bigger natural sprayers is better. Uh, but the big thing is I don't want to have to stop mid-spray to have to go recharge batteries. So if that sprayer does that, then you're good to go. The next thing is to get a good set of tips for it and then do your sprayer calibration using water. And then you're going to get a good result. So hope that helps. Um, I don't have that spray to be able to compare it. If Ryobi wants to send me one, I'll gladly do a review of it, but I've already got like three sprayers. I'm not going to go buy a fourth one right now, especially since I have no intention of really using it other than just reviewing it. All right, next up is Rahul Vangala. Vangala. He says, can you recommend a good lawnmower for 7,500 square feet of Bermuda grass? Depends. Great question, Rahul, but it depends on you. Are you someone that, that wants to real mow your lawn? Or are you someone that just wants a rotary mower, like, you know, like your traditional like a Honda um, lawnmower or Toro um, push um, rotary mower. It depends on what your goals are for the lawn. If your goal is to have a lawn that looks like um, like how, how my lawn looks, I'm trying to put this, put this video up, not again, because it keeps stuttering, but I'll try it anyway. If your goal is to have a lawn that looks like this, then you're going to need a real mower, right? You need to invest in a real mower like this. Like you're not going to get a lawn that looks like this using a rotary mower or really any of the mowers that you're going to be able to buy for the most part at um, at Home Depot or any of the big box stores. You're going to need like a like a proper a proper um, greens mower to be able to do that. So for 7,500 square feet, rotary or reel will work well. 
the decision between Rotary and Real really comes down to, do you have time? Do you have one, the time and the desire to mow your grass several times per week? So if you have the time to do it and the desire to do it, then, and you, you said Bermuda, by far, I'm gonna recommend a, a, a real mower. If you can, especially if you can afford one. If they are more expensive, but if you have the time and the desire, a real mower is gonna produce a much better result in Bermuda, on a Bermuda grass lawn than a rotary will. If you don't have the time or desire, so you only wanna mow your grass once a week, um, or the, the cost of a real mower is just too much to have to deal with, then a rotary, like a good one from Toro or from Honda is what I would um, I would go with. So it really depends on what your goals are. So if, you, if you're still here, let me know what you're, what you're trying to accomplish and then I can recommend a mower, but it's, it's a difficult question to answer without knowing what you're trying to get out of the lawn, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm always gonna eventually try and get you into a real mower, but I also know that that just buying the real mower is just the small part of it, right? It's the time commitment that's required to really get the result with one that most people have a difficult time with. Next up is our Optic Cyclic it says, um, what choices are there in Canada for uh, weeds like Wild Violet, Creeping Charlie, Plantain, and others? Any ideas? I don't know what you guys can buy in Canada. If you can get your hands on some Spectracide, which I don't know if there's an equivalent for that in Canada, I believe Spectracide will target all of those. I believe that they're like the, the orange bottle, the one I'm thinking about, um, will work will work for all of those. But I don't know if it's available for use in Canada. Let's like, if I can pull it up here really quick, I will show you. Where's my Spectracide tab? Normally I have a tab that I just keep open with Spectracide, but I must have closed it for some reason. All right, so this product here, uh, not this one, but if we go to lean, uh, Lawn Weed Killers, this guy. So assuming you have um, that it matches your grass types. And make sure there's different versions. There is this one that's good for like a lot of different grass types, some cool season and warm season grasses. You got some that are designed for, um, that have like atrazine in them for certain grass types. So make sure you get the one that's correct for your grass type. Uh, but uh, this guy is the one that you know, kills a ton of weeds, not crazy expensive. You may have to do multiple applications to really get the weeds gone, but it, I'm, I'm fairly certain it targets all the weeds you mentioned there. Now, can you buy this in Canada? I do not know. You can just get to check, maybe check on Amazon for Canada and see if it's available for sale there. That will that's going to be the best way to know. But this is a, a you know an, a relatively inexpensive way of getting a um, a decent herbicide that will target the weeds that you are that you mentioned. You know what I mean? As far as a lot of the professional grade herbicides like Celsius Certainty, I'm almost positive those can't be shipped to Canada. I'm I'm, I'm fairly certain um, they can't be. Not that I not that I'm aware of anyway. So hope that helps. Sorry, I don't have a better answer for you, but I would start with Spectracide and then see what other options you have from there. Dwayne Hopkins is up. He says, hey, Ron, update on the lawn with some temps in the hundreds this week in SoCal. Lawn is doing great. Lots of pop and color with the carbon kit and turf plex. Love to hear that. That's great. Robert Brown, what's going on? What's going on, Robert? Thanks for coming to say hi. Coming to say hi. And you say, i um, been watering extra, but I'm sure it's evaporating as soon as it hits the lawn. All right. Yeah. And Anthony says he's in Tennessee and the grass is Kentucky 31. Okay. I have to look up that one. Um, Anthony, I'm not familiar with that, that particular type of, uh, of grass. Dwayne Hopkins says, Hey Ron, I've been noticing a lot of hate on the grass topper online. Not sure why it's a great product. And I've actually ordered a second one for a different mower. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure who's hating on it. Uh, Dwayne, what are, what are they saying about, I mean, like you can answer me, right? <laughs> We're not, you're not on, in the live stream, but I mean, it's a great product, I think, you know, and, and it, there's a lot of merit to it. Like the idea that of how Lee um, and the guys at Real Rollers designed it, the fact they made it like mesh or it's breathable, makes a lot of sense. Like if you look at that new mower from Allet, the Sterling, like they did, they did the same thing in their design where they use like a mesh type grass catcher so that the air can pass through it and the grass clippings stay. So from a standpoint of getting better fill, like the design makes a lot of sense. So I'm not sure what the... Um, I'm not sure what the hate is for. I mean, if you want to send me an email or, and let me know like what they're what you're talking about, like what what and why people are mad about it, like you can just email me here at Golf Course Lawn. That we don't have to like air it in the live stream if you don't want to. But just send me an email with it, and I will um I'll look into it. But I mean, it's it's I think it's a great product. It's a great product. Definitely definitely fills a need, and it's something that's done in other products. Like you know, there are other there's other mowers, real mowers that use that same principle in the design of how of how they use their grass catchers. So. I don't, I don't see what the, all the hate would be about. 
Okay, next up is Salvador. He says, thanks for answering all my questions. Considering the Miramichi Green insecticide to kill hundreds of spiders in my lawn. Thoughts? Every time I mow, I see tons of spiders scatter, scattering for their lives. Yeah, you can spray it on, on your grass. There's no, wrong, there's no issue with doing that at all, uh, Salvador. You can absolutely spray it on your lawns. Lawn, shrubs, all that. So yeah, absolutely grab it, go to town, and you are, uh, are good to go. Again, you will get better coverage if you use a fogger, but it's totally up to you. A backpack spray will work as well, too. Lavendi says, had lawn service um, since February and the yard is filled with Kalinga sedges. They've been here uh, numerous times. Should I drop them? I don't know, Lavendi. I mean, it depends. What are they using to spray the sedges? I mean, this, if they, if next time they come by, I mean, I'm not sure what kind of grass you have, but if you're in Georgia, like the, in my opinion anyway, the product for sedges that will, that's, that's the, the Mac Daddy for sedges is certainty. Sedge hammer is decent. But this is better. This is like this, when it comes to sedges, this one does them all, kills all sedges, kills all covers, right? So certainty for warm season grass, by far, um, sedges, Kalinga, uh, that's what they should be using. So if they're using certainty, these sedges should be dead because they don't, they don't, they, I mean, they don't, they don't stand much of a chance with that. I mean, if you want to see what kind of a result it can have on sedges, um, just go here and look at the uh, the pictures in the video. So go to uh, in the the product description. So go to Gulf Force Lawn Store Weed Killer. Go to Certainty. Go to the product description, and then scroll past all my pretty pictures that I took. Took a long time to cut these, but I mean, scroll past that one. This is the lawn. This is like um, a bunch of sedge. I think it's green sedge, and that's uh, one pass of this of uh, of, of Certainty on it. And this is the same spot seven days later. So if they're using certainty with a surfactant, that's the results you should be getting. It doesn't sound like they are. It's not like they're using something else. So maybe that's why you're not getting uh, the results. But certainty would absolutely decimate sedges. Like it's it's it, there's one one product that I feel like I highly highly recommend that I, I that's going to do a great job against sedges in warm season turf. Certainty is what I'm going to say to go with. So I mean I don't know. Maybe ask them what they're using. Um, and then give them a chance to come out and fix it. You know, I, I wouldn't be so fast to drop them because if you drop them, you got to do everything then, right? You got to do your own fertilization. You got to do your own pre-emergent. You got to do spot spraying for weeds. So it's, it's up to you. If you want to do all that, then yeah, you can drop them and you can do it yourself. But you know, if it's maybe ask them what they're using and say, Hey, have you heard this product called certainty that I've heard is very good for sedges and warm season turf. You might want to try that. Uh, because they, I'm sure they they want to make you happy. They don't want to lose you as a customer. So maybe just have a conversation with them and, and let them know, hey, you're not meeting my expectations. Would you guys mind using something different to get rid of this problem? And I'm sure they'll try. They'll be accommodating because it's not that easy just to say you're going to drop them. Because then again, you're do, you're doing it all yourself. Then you know, so you have to really know that that's what you want to uh, to do. Donna Hales is up next. She says California trimmer delivered this week. Got to clap it up. Got to clap it up. Congrats. Five yards of mason sand delivered. Scalp in the AM. Carbon Pro G going down. Country Club put down last week. Chairs to a fun next couple of days. Yeah, it is going to be a next fun couple of days. So Donna, one tip, one tip for you. You just got your brand new California trimmer. You're about to top your salon. Raise the height of cut up on your first couple of mows once the grass grows through because like sand is going to dull, will dull a real embed knife. We'll take the edge off relatively quickly if that real embed knife gets into the sand. So once salon for cover from top dressing, raise your height to cut up a little bit, just a, just a touch for those first few mows, uh, just to help prevent that from happening. Because you don't want to have to have a brand new mower and then have to go send it in to get it sharpened again, which will happen if it gets down into that sand. So just one thing to keep in mind. It sounds like you got everything else covered, but I just want to give you that one tip so you don't have to go and take your brand new mower and send it in for work. Rob Miller's in the chat. He says, "Hey, what's the next bet? What's the next best thing to do for common Bermuda lawn?" Currently one, mowing frequently, two, controlling weeds, three, aeration and leveling, four, fertilizer, and five, soil test in the mail, six, hydrotain app tomorrow. You, you're doing pretty much everything, Rob. I mean, you're soil testing, you're fertilizing based on the soil test, you're aerating, you're leveling the lawn, you're controlling weeds, but then also you're mowing frequently. So you're doing it all. You're doing a lot of it. I mean, the next, the only thing you're not doing that I, I mean, it's up to you and this is kind of icing on the cake and it really depends on whether you want to do this or not. And if you have a backpack sprayer to be able to apply it is to incorporate um, plant growth regulator. That's something else I, I, you could also do. So something like this Primo Max PGR comes in a four ounce container. I got this on backwards. Got the thing on. You got the measuring cup right here. It comes in a four ounce container. Uh, on common, the rate is higher than it is on 
hybrid. Um, but I still tell people to start at that quarter ounce per thousand rate because if you think you have common, but you really don't have common and you apply 0.75 ounces to your hybrid, you're gonna have a bad, you know, four, four to six weeks. So I would still say, even if you, you're pretty positive you have common, start a bit lower on the rate and then work your way up. That's the only thing I would say outside of what you're already doing that um, that can that can have an enhancement on the lawn. You know what I mean? It'll help the turf. Um, it's gonna help that stop that top growth or slow down the top growth, which with a couple with your regular mowing and everything else you're doing is gonna really help the lawn tighten up. I would, if you're going to aerate and level the lawn, I would wait until you're done with that before you introduce um, Primo Max. So once you're done with your leveling project, then introduce Primo and you should be good to go. Outside of that, man, you're doing it all right. Sounds, everything you're doing look, looks and sounds great to me. I wouldn't change, um, wouldn't change much of it. Okay, great, great. And next up is uh, Logan Bruner. is awesome, thanks, that helps a lot. I thought maybe you used less of a rate for growth and was wondering how you figured it out. Answer my question and thanks again. You're very, very welcome, sir. No problem at all, no problem at all. All right, Demetrius Johnson says, I got a soil test from Clemson and the results show I have low phosphate. They suggest three pounds of triple phosphate and three pounds of, um, of uh, 3400 per thousand square feet. Any similar products for Bermuda in South Carolina? So what I'm hearing is they're saying that you need nitrogen and potassium, right? Or sorry, uh, uh, I'm sorry, and a phosphorus. You need nitrogen and phosphorus. So any fertilizer that has nitrogen and phosphorus is gonna help bring your levels up. So it'd be really odd for you to not need potassium, uh, Demetrius. So if it were me, I mean, I haven't seen the soil test results, but if it were me, I would lean towards like a um, like a balance for it, like a triple 12 or some triple 10, something like that. That is what um, I would roll with. If, you can do this too, but then you're applying two different products. You're applying like a phosphorus product and then you're also gonna go apply a nitrogen product when you can just simply, I mean, you can just pick a fertilizer that you can use to feed the lawn over the season that is gonna help correct those issues. You know what I mean? Or it's gonna help you know, help resolve or, or meet the needs or meet, meet the, the deficiencies that test is showing. So, um, so hope that helps. Hope that helps. Um, don't have anything else for you other than that. But, um, but as far if you want a good product for it, uh, the triple twelve that we carry is good. Also, locally, you should be able to find a triple ten, like some balance fert. So, just go to shop launching locally. That will also um, that's also comparable. So, up to you. Your call on which on which way you want to go. All right, John Williams said, just lagging again. Hopefully we'll, um, we won't, we the screen won't time out again, but we'll, we'll see, we'll keep going. Keep going while we can, right? Uh, Grant Gray says, good information. Thanks, Ron, you're very, very welcome. Grant, no problem at all. And then Dwayne says, hey, Ron, with all the um, fertilizer for the fertilizer shortages, I am sure glad I took your advice and stocked up last fall to have enough to last me for this growing season. Yeah, Dwayne, I mean, don't, don't count Humic Max out yet. I am, Gonna, I'm gonna do my best to get it back, but right now it's just, I mean, unless you guys want to, you want to pay $80 for a bag of fertilizer, which I wouldn't want to do, uh, it just now is just not the time to do it. It's just, it just can't, um, just can't do it at this time. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. Mary J says, well, this man looks like Tiger Woods. I've heard that, I don't see the resemblance. I've heard I sound like Tiger Woods. Now that I can, I can go with, but Tiger and I don't look anything alike. He's like, like half Thai. He's, you know, we not, I don't, don't we're not, not even close. I certainly can't hit a golf ball like him. So, and he's probably not a good, as good uh, with, as I am with like technology stuff. So, I don't know. I don't see the resemblance, but I'll take your word for it. I'll take it as a compliment, I guess, I think. All right. Um, Salvador says, um, Ron is trying to act like he actually doesn't actually love his beautiful lawn enough to actually spoon it. <laughs> Here's the thing. I have been known to sit out there or sit on um, looking at the, with, with a chair, looking out at the lawn Something a cup of coffee. I have been known to do that. I mean, that's not the same thing as spooning it, but I mean, I guess it is sending good vibes and love to my lawn. All right, Ben Rich is here. What's going on, Ben? He says, hey, just applied hydrotain two days before. The crazy amount of rain we got here in Georgia. Any concern? I know it says to water it in. No, I mean, that's what you need. You need you need a lot of water to get it down. So yeah, it, it, you did it exactly right, Ben. You should be good to go. I wouldn't worry at all. You did it exactly, exactly right. Okay, Shauna W is here, says, I top dressed with professional soccer teams, uh, I top dressed with pro professional soccer teams, Latitude 36 Sand Soil Mix today. Sounds like good stuff. Great quality stuff. Hoping it it works out my, in my bare spots. Grounds team stripped the field and left and let a ton of us, let a ton of us have the material. That's pretty awesome. 
Yes, I'm sure that stuff's gonna be really clean, really high quality. So you you made out, uh, Shauna, that's really cool. If you can, make sure you take pictures. Take pictures, you know, it sounds like you've already done it, but like take pictures of where it is now and then take pictures, you know, every week of how the lawn is developing as uh, the season progresses. You definitely gotta, you wanna keep track of how the lawn does with these kind of major renovation projects. It's wor worth doing, worth doing. All right, um, let's see. Chris Ferguson said, is there anything you could do to keep flies away from the house? They were crazy after all this rain in Oklahoma. I just got in the past two weeks. So BYD showed me this 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 um, contraption that he had. It's like um, like one of those light, it's not, it's not a bug zapper, but it has kind of a light that you hang it and the bugs get, they, they, get they, uh, they are attracted to it and they go in and they can't get out. And I don't know the name of it, but uh, go look at his channel. I'm sure he's covered it. Go to like Bermuda Grass Central and I'm sure he's covered this thing. And that is what he uses and he has literally no, it really cuts down the amount of insects or flying insects that he has around his house. So you might want to try that uh, for, your, in your case, Chris, it, it will probably, uh, probably help. Probably help. All right, and then I think, uh, let's see here, Marvin Paul says, my lawn is the sign. I'm cutting regularly with my California trimmer twice a week. I'll send you pics soon. Awesome, I'll look out for them, Marvin. Appreciate that. I appreciate it, I appreciate it. Oh, William Weiss has said, yeah, no mowing in May helps create a habitat for bees and, early, and other early season pollinators. Gotcha, okay, I see, that's why they do it. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. John Bronco says, I just picked up a John Deere 2243, a three reel. It's a 95 diesel. Came with three heads and three verticut heads at all. Excited to finally be able to verticut and mow my 24,000 square feet of Tiff Tuff outside of my Greensmaster 1600. We've got to clap it up for that. Mm -hmm. Serious hardware. And give me up 24,000 square feet. You need a, a triplex, you need a mower like that. So congrats, man, good job finding it. I'm sure those are pretty tough to come by. So uh, nice, nice, nice unit. You have to send us pictures at some point to show it off and let me know how it uh, how it does, how it does. Uh, King Khan says the true hardcore fans watch your YouTube short clips. Nothing like cutting through that do. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true, all, all of the hardcore guys really watch them. So, and I appreciate it, I appreciate the extra views. It's, it's fun. I get to make content using the YouTube shorts that are the, the or the stories that will not work for the regular content so there is there is that so all right we're winding down guys here uh vadeville says i'm currently using an ego rotary mower planning to switch to a reel what's your opinion about the fiskers reel mower for bermuda grass i've not used that one personally myself my favorite reel mower for bermuda that's a push is the scots there's a scots um i use the scots 20 inch but i've heard now they have the new 18 inch that is even nicer, it's like a seven blade. So I'll put that in the chat for you to check out here. Um, um, Vad Vadavel, so this is the one I'm talking about. And of course, now it's sold out, right? It's an 18 inch uh, mower, let's see. I guess you guys bought them all up so they don't have any of them. Let's see if anyone else has got, um, nope. Looks like it's currently unavailable. So. This guy, whenever it comes back in stock, is the one that I'm talking about. Outside of this one, you can just go to Home Depot and get the, the 20 inch. That one I use and it cuts really well. So if you can't get this, which right now it looks like it is sold out at the uh, Vadivel. There we go. Um, that one, outside of that one, go to Home Depot, get the 20 inch. That's a great mower. Okay, next up is Thin Cutty says, stop to say, hey, having a great weekend with the family, son-in-law, daughter, and three grandsons. Nice, man. Very, very cool. Glad the family's over. That's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Matt Mangini says, hey, Ron, Matt here in Raleigh, North Carolina. How often can I top dress my yard this summer on Tiff Tough Bermuda? Depends on you. You can do a total, I say, three top dresses per season is easily doable. Most people don't have the desire to do that many. You might, you might, you might be the exception that, that can do three top dresses in a season. Um, but you know, you could do one now, you could do one six weeks from now and then do an, the last one late July, early August. So it really depends on you, Matt. You've, you've got plenty of time left in the season to, to do a ton of top dressing, ton of top dressing. All right, uh, next up we say here, um, Ron, I, 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 X off the X says, Hey Ron, what's your background in this business? Just trying to catch up. So like, like most things, um, I am largely self-taught um, off the X. So between um, a lot, like tons of research on my own and then also having 
um, some really good friends that work in the industry that have imparted a lot of their knowledge to me that answer my questions and just help me along the way. And then also through just trial and error, figuring out what works, what doesn't work. Um, I've learned a ton. And also been doing this for a while too. I mean, you're, you guys are watching the live stream and the videos now, but this is literally the seventh season of me making videos or talking about like grass related topics on YouTube, right? So if you do anything for seven years, you know, regardless of your formal training in it or not, if you really care about it, you, you tend to become reasonably good at it. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so that's, that is my formal background. I don't, I don't actually, I don't have a formal background in the turf grass industry. So largely, largely self-taught and just have lots of friends that, um, that spend a lot of time talking to me about what they know works, and what doesn't work. And again, I do a lot of testing on my own and I come up with a program that works. Okay. Next up, uh, <laughs> this is funny. Cristobal Romans, please pick up your phone. We've been trying to reach you about your grass's extended your grass extended warranty. That's good. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Next up is two trilly says on the topic of spray nozzles. Is there a difference between the white T jet um, air nozzle that comes with the Yardmaster sprayer and the red nozzle you recommend before discovering the Yardmaster sprayer? Not really. I believe the different colors are based on um, on pressure. I believe that's correct. Check that. There's like a T jet has this, this big matrix that has um, uh, the different the different spray tips and um, the pressures they're rated for or the, or, the, or the flows you get at a given pressure. I believe it's related to the color. I believe that's, that's, that's all the color signifies. So long short of it, it doesn't matter. If you, the big thing is if you have the red one, calibrate your sprayer for the tip you're using. If you have the white one, calibrate your sprayer for the tip that you're using at the pressure you're running at and you're gonna have a good result. So that is, um, that is what I would I would recommend doing. So it doesn't for 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 us it doesn't really matter. It's I, I, where I think that really where that would matter more is for imagine like a farmer or someone that um, has like a spray rig and they 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 know exactly what pressure they're running at and they need it they need a spray tip that will flow a specific a specific amount at a specific pressure. That is where making sure you get the correct one matched up really matters. But for us with like backpack sprayers and because we're calibrating based on the tip we're using, it doesn't really make a difference. Just as long as you calibrate using based on the tip that you're using in the sprayer, you're gonna be just fine. Hope that helps you, Trilla. And then let's see, Taz Real says, hey Ron, Buffalo checking in. Hope you had a good day. Happy holidays and happy mowing. Anyone mowing a flag in their lawn? I've never tried that. Um, I won't be doing it. I'd be afraid to pull that off. I'd probably mess it up. Um, uh, Todd's real lawn. I've never, it's, it, it looks cool when I see it on, on, on like social media, but I've never actually pulled it off. Don't think I could. Uh, I think it takes a lot of planning to do that. You just, that's something you just kind of do on a, on a whim. All right. Uh, Angelo says a California trimmer is due on Tuesday. Nice, nice. Not here yet. Not here, but we're going to still clap it up because you know, you're getting one. So we got to recognize it. It says, I got rid of the lawn service, followed the tips from your YouTube, best yard in the hood one year later. Awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Big Watts says, what do you suggest when starting a new lawn from seed? Um, Pensacola, Bahia, North Florida. I started in April and it's thick in spot and thin in spots. So what I would try and figure out is in this area that it's thin, Big Watts, why is it thin? Do you have any debris under the soil in those areas? Is there a shade issue? Is it getting enough water? Uh, you know, all things being equal, there's there's a reason why one part of the lawn is not doing as well as another. We just got to figure out what that is. Um, the same thing, I mean, you say you have Bahia grass, but really the, it'd be the same answer I would give for, for Bermuda. It'd be the exact same question or same answer. So, I I mean, when you say it's, you see you started it by, from seed. So it's it's probably still, it's probably still early to expect it to be fully grown in. But if you're telling me you have like one area that's completely bare, then we should figure that out. But if it's an area that it sounds like it's just, it's thin and it's still growing in, I would just say give it, I mean, my answer is probably gonna be give it more time, unless there's some kind of circumstances where again, shade, debris under the soil, something like that, just give it time and it should fill in over time. It sounds like you're just gonna give, be a little more patient. Give, give, give the new seed some time to catch itself, man. It needs time, it needs time. All right, uh, let's see here. Um, hey Ron, what was the purpose of your video behind mowing the front yard where you have the slope? It was a unique video, just curious. Also, are you a back to front, or are you a front to back or back to front mow guy? Um, I do the back first and then I do the front. The back first and then the front. 
Uh, and then as far as the slope, the video for that, because I, I get tons of questions from people about like mowing a, a slope with a real mower. They say, can you mow a, real, a sloped lawn with a real mower? And I always say, yes, you can. And then I have a video on the topic, mowing a, a mower with a, you know, I have like a, a video for the true cut and I have a video with the greens bash specifically saying, here are some tips and tricks for getting a good result when mowing a lawn, uh, mowing a sloped lawn with a real mower. And I still get the, the questions of like, why, you know, can you really, can you really mow a lawn with a, with a, with a real mower or a sloped lawn with a real mower? So I said, okay, fine. You know what? As much as it's going to do terribly on YouTube, I'm just going to do a video of nothing but me just mowing a lawn. And they're going to see the entire thing from beginning to end. I'm going to move the camera one time. So just get a little closer towards the end of it. And I'm just going to mow the entire lawn so they can see any difficulty I have using the mower as far as turning the mower, as far as going up, up the slope, down the slope, they're going to see the entire thing. So that's why that mow video exists. So anytime someone says, what's it like to mow a sloped lawn? Mind you, a wet sloped lawn, because it's also due in the morning when I did that, right? What it's like to mow a wet sloped lawn with a green mower, I can say, watch this video, because it'll show you exactly what it's like. It's it's definitely doable. You know, it, I mean, it takes practice, but it's completely doable. So that's the reasoning behind it, uh, Dwayne. And I made it so I don't have to answer the question anymore. I got something I can point people at and say, just go watch this. It's possible. You can do it. All right, next up is David Grant. Uh, he says, um, hey, Ron and Golf Course Lawn family out here in, in St. Louis with a Kentucky Blue uh, Grass Lawn. What do you recommend as a resource for increasing rhizome um, activity? Here's the thing. I, I would say um, versus trying to do anything to increase rhizome or still on activity or doing anything to, you know, to, to enhance a particular characteristic of, of, of the grass, um, focus on healthy soil. So focus on having... Um, your soil pH where it needs to be. Focus on on feeding the um, or, or or putting the right blend of nutrients into the soil. Focus on adding biosimilants and organic material in the form of like you know essential G or carbon pro G or whatever you tend whatever you want to use on a regular basis. And then good rhizome activity or good stolen activity or good color in your grass is a byproduct of doing those things. So when you try and just chase green grass directly. I mean, you can kind of have some success with that, but it's much easier. I mean, you look at my lawn, like what you see, the I don't, I don't walk out in the lawn and say, hmm, what can I do to get the grass greener? What can I do to make the grass get greener? Literally, I, I look at the soil test and I say, okay, it needs this, this, and this. I need to make sure it gets enough water. And I do those things. And then what happens, happens. What, you know, the, the grass color is the grass color. What I get is what I get. You know, you know what I mean? If you want a little boost in color, sure, you can add a bit of iron. That's a little, that's a, a small trick. But as far as like, boosting or changing the um, the growth characteristics of a, of a particular part of the grass, I think your time is much better spent just on creating healthy soil and then just letting the grass do what it, just letting the grass do what it do. You know what I mean? And just, and you'll be, you'll be absolutely fine. Your turf should look great. And you're not getting, then you're not getting caught up in the minutia of things that really don't matter and that you can't really directly control easily, but great soil you can control. So I would focus on that. Hope that helps. Great question. All right. Next up is McNasty Motorsports. She says, Ron, is it perfectly, is it perfectly okay to, sp <laughs> it's been long. I, my dogs do it uh, frequently. I can either confirm or deny that I do. You guys are absolutely horrible. You're incorrigible. Terrible. It's horrible. This is what happens. Late night long here. All right. Uh, Dalvin Larry says, no. Hi, Ron. No questions. What's going on, Dalvin? Thanks for coming to hang out. You're very, very welcome. You're very, very welcome. Uh, let's see. KBG King says, can you explain why you recommend granular fungicide when it seems that the preferred method is liquid? It depends on who you ask. Uh, for most people, here's the thing, um, KBG King. I think that in most cases uh, that you are correct that, um, for people that are, that are spraying fungicides regularly all the time, like most golf courses, um, don't use granular because they use liquids because they're out there anyway, and they can mix it in with the other things that they're, what they're applying. Most of the people that I talk to about applying fungicides it's in most cases a preventative. And in that situation, using a, um, uh, a granular is just simply easier to apply. That's the main reason for it. So the fungicides that I, I mean, I have, um, like what the ones I, I mainly refer to are, are Zoxastrobin and Propoconazole. Headway has, contains both of those in a granular and it's super easy to apply. That's, that's the main reason for it. Like for products like the um, insecticides, like a Celeprin, you can get that in a liquid, like what you're seeing here. Which is, which is, I use that this year. I went the liquid route um, and it also comes in a granular. So it's really preference. But the reason why I, I tend to stay more towards uh, granulars for fungicides because it's just easier for, for viewers. That's, that's the main reason behind it. Great question. If you need anything else, let me know. Let me know. 
All right, next is Benjamin Kane. He says, I received my PGR Hydrotan and Turflex this week. I cannot wait to apply this stuff. Looking for a backpack sprayer that doesn't break the bank. What do you think of the Ryobi backpack sprayer for the PGR? I've never used it myself. BYD got one and he loves it. And he, he was abusing it. He was like putting like stuff in it and leaving it for like, like a long, long period of time and just not cleaning it out, just kind of roughing it up. And he seems to really like it. I don't have any direct experience with it to be able to say, yes, Ron Henry approved. I will endorse this sprayer. Um, but I, I have no reason to think that, you know, BYD knows what he's talking about. And if he says he likes it and, he's, and he recommends it, it's probably a good sprayer, you know, probably a good sprayer. I, I, and, and that one, I don't know what they cost, but it's, it's definitely more economical than like a flow zone or a yard mastery sprayer. Like those sprayers are like the $300 price range and the their Ryobi is much less than that. I think it's, you can get it for under 200 bucks pretty easily. So you can look into that for applying your Turflex and PGR. And um, again, it's when it comes to backpack sprayers, the biggest thing I would say is get a sprayer with enough battery to last to do to do your entire lawn. If it satisfies that, it very much becomes Indian, not the arrow. So spend your time learning how to calibrate it to apply the products at the correct rates, and you're going to get a good result. In other words, you can if if you gave me if you gave me two if you gave me two lawns and you gave me a, a Ryobi sprayer, or Ryobi sprayer, however you want to pronounce it, and you gave me a yard mastery sprayer, and I sprayed one more yard with the Ryobi, and I sprayed one lawn with the um, with the yard mastery, and all else being equal, and I told someone which lawn did I spray with which sprayer, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. The results are going to be exactly the same. So it's really a preference, build quality, runtime, all those types of things are really the big thing that you're doing, you're getting when you, when you pay more money for a sprayer. So hope that helps. All right. Uh, DDOM says, Hey Ron, uh, I know you're, you're mentioned watching F1 in your stories, your favorite drivers and predictions uh, for Sunday. Oh, favorite driver. So I, I, I kind of, it kind of goes in between. So I like, I like Lewis, but I like Max too, right? Because I grew up in the Dutch Antilles. So I got a, a soft spot in my heart for any, um, you know, any Dutch, any Dutch athletes, you know? So I liked, I mean, I like Verstappen. I like his driving style. He's really, really, really aggressive driver. And I like, I like his, um, you know, I think he's, he's doing well. He, I, I think Max could actually win it this year. You know what I mean? He, you know, Red Bull has closed the gap on Ferrari in many ways. And or, but actually they haven't fully closed the gap, but Max is that equalizing factor. Like he's so, he's so much better and so much more aggressive than a lot of the other drivers that he's able to compensate um, for that. I mean, you figure last year, last week he won with no DRS or broken DRS half the time, right? So uh, I, I like Max. I like um, I like uh, Lewis. Look uh, like Leclerc, like Sergio. I like most. I like most of the Formula One drivers. I'm trying to think. There's not really any of them. I think I have a, a huge amount of respect for those guys because what they do is so hard, uh, and it's uh, it's just a cool sport. So it's not I, Max. I'd probably say is my favorite. Lewis is a close second. I still kind of think Lewis, even though I like Max, I feel that Lewis is wrong. Like Lewis really should have won the championship last year. Like the way they, they closed out that race was, was absolute garbage. It was terrible. Like what they did, but whatever. I'm not the, I'm not the, uh, the FIA. So whatever, doesn't matter. So, but yeah, tomorrow's race is probably gonna be boring because it's Monaco, right? And there's not much passing in Monaco. So it'll, it'll, we'll see. We'll see how it is. Not gonna, it's not going to be a, a, the most exciting race than compared to others, but uh, but yeah. Okay, next up is Tim Jackson. He says, I bet the battery powered is a Torod GM. Don't know the model, that or a Billy Goat Verticutter or Billy Goat Aerator. We'll see. Could I mean, now, now you're right. Torod does make a battery powered Greensmaster. They do. They do. Um, and those are pretty sweet. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. You'll know soon enough. All right, Jared uh, Alwyn is up next. He says, "Hey Ron, I hope you're doing well. Moved into a new house and had a mole and had a mole slash grubs. They're gone now, but the lawn is thin. Use Country Club for lawn carbon kit, short mow. Anything else you recommend? Time. You're doing all the right things. You got rid of the insects and, the, the, and you got rid of the moles, the things that are causing the damage in the lawn. You're fertilizing it and you're mowing it. It's just going to take time at this point." You didn't say what kind of grass you have, but if it's Bermuda, it really shouldn't take long for it to make a pretty big improvement as far as how it looks. So just give it time. Give it time and it should bounce back uh, fairly well. Should bounce back fairly well. All right. Nasty uh, <laughs> says late night lawn care. Uh, yeah, LOL, hilarious, right? It's like, uh, you know, Cinemax after dark is like lawn care after dark. You guys, get us something else. All right, next up is Archie Amos. He says... <laughs> He says, David just made me think of a question I did not ask. 
Why are the Risings and Stones coming out brown? Rest of the lawn is green around them. I'm not sure. So you may have just some, some parts of the grass or some small um, sections of the grass or clumps that are dying. Um, and that would make, that would make, explain why like the root, the, the rhizomes, like the root, the runners underneath the ground, the surface are dead and the ones above the surface are dead, especially if they're attached to the same grass, you know, could be that. Um, like I had some of that on my lawn. Whenever I aerated, there are, there are some grass, there are some, some portions of the lawn that are going to get injured by it and they're not going to be able to recover. So that is, that is a thing. Uh, so it's, I mean, I don't know, it's just like plants don't live forever and you, and you, it's not uncommon for like throughout the lawn to sporadically have small areas where, you know, not small areas, but like, uh, you know, a, gra a dead grass blade here and there. That's, um, that's just completely, it's completely normal, Archie. I wouldn't, I can't say there's like a particular reason I could give you, give you for that. As long as it's not the entire lawn, as long as it's sporadic, that's, that's fine. And again, after, um, aerating, I had quite a bit of that. I had, you guys didn't really see it, but I had some of that. Um, Alex had some of that. And it's a common thing anytime you injure the lawn that some of the grass just doesn't make it. All right, next up is Greg McCoy he says, does PGR really help against heat exhaustion on your lawn? Um, does it help with the heat exhaustion? I, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I mean, it, growing growing a dense dense turf helps with that because the thicker the canopy is, the denser the turf is, like the harder it is for water to evaporate out of it. So, you know, if if you apply PGR to your lawn and you mow the lawn regularly at at you know lower heights or whatever heights you happen to mow it at to where it gets nice and dense, that is going to allow the lawn to hold on to more moisture than if it's really thin. Um, but to say that if you apply a plant growth regulator, it's going to have the same effect as say like hydrotain. No, that is that's not a thing. It's more one of those byproducts of everything that normally goes into a lawn care program when you're using plant growth regulator. All right, uh, Alex says, um, uh, thanks for the 5% discount. I'll use it on Essential G. You're very, very welcome, uh, sir. And the King Kong says, um, Ryobi backpack sprayer without um, battery under $120 at Home Depot. So there you go. See, not crazy expensive. Not crazy expensive. And then Wilson Miranda says, I forgot to send that email about Provant. Any update on that? And hopefully I will send that soon. Was I supposed to look up something on Provon? I don't know. Um, I'll screenshot it and then I'll I'll look it up, um, Wilson. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do on that one, but uh, if you can, send me an email what I'm supposed to be doing with it and I'll do my best. All right, and then Huey Dewey says, Lewis lost the championship because Latifi crashed. Was it Latifi or was it the other guy? Um, oh, oh, the other, the other um, Tari driver. Um, maybe it was Latifi, whatever. But yeah, crash as, crash as usual, caused the whole ordeal. Um, well, yes and no. I mean, yes, the, 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 crash that caused the, um, the yellow flag did like cause the entire situation, created the, the scenario, but the fact that they allowed only some of the cars to unlap themselves and just enough to where Max is literally right behind, behind, um, uh, uh Lewis was, come on, it seems a little bit shady, right? I mean, I get they want it to be exciting, but it's not fair. So that's why, I mean, again, I'm happy Max won. He was going to win a world championship at some point. But I, the way it ended, I do not agree with. I think it was not, it was unfair to Lewis, but there you go. But I'm happy for Max because I like Max as a driver, but I think it was unfair to Lewis. So for there, there we go. Um, okay, next up we have um, Fairway Bermuda. He says, hey, Ron, what do you think about that 48 inch leveling rake I use? I love it. It's well built and heavy. Yeah, dude, the the, the r, r 48 inch rake, I, I'm sure it's built like a tank. Um, it's just, you seem to be using it pretty well and didn't have much trouble with it, but a 40 inch rate is heavy. That's a, that's, a, that's a lot for most people to be able to use on a lawn, especially for hours on end. But you, you know, you're a strong guy, so you guys didn't have too much trouble with it, which is, uh, which is pretty good. All right, next up is Brad H. He says, uh, PGR, fungicide, and aeration, are they all okay to do within a 48 hour period? Sure, but uh, I guess the question, yeah, I mean, to answer your question, yeah, and the long short of it is, Sure. Yes, you could do all of them within 48 hours. I would do the aeration first. I would do that prior to the to the to the other ones. You know, because the last thing you want to do is put um, plant growth regulator down and fungicide down, and go try, and go like you know tr run through the lawn with like a an aerator. So like I would I would do the aeration first, and then I would do those afterwards. If you if you really want to do it within 48 hours. I'm not sure why the 48 hour period, but if um, you got a weekend to do it all, I guess that might be the reason for uh, the question. Oh, the Provant, the Provant um, from um, Syngenta, insecticide from mole crickets. Uh, me and some other guys asked if you could give us, uh, if you get the smaller bottle from them. 
I will ask Wilson Miranda. Let me screenshot that so I can remember. I will ask the, I can ask my contact there and see what they say. They might be like, why? But they might, if I ask really, really nicely more, multiple times, they might say, they might say yes. We'll see. All right. All right, guys. Well, I think we have covered pretty much everything. I think we've got it all. So guys, again, thanks again for the live stream so much. Thanks for all the great questions. Uh, Essential G is back in stock in the store. Nutrizolve should still be in stock. It may have it may have sold out by now in the live stream because we didn't have that much of it. I can check real quick and see. But if you want Nutrizolve, be sure to get that. We also got some more Primo Max in stock, so we didn't run out. So if you guys are thinking about using Plant Growth Regulator in your lawn, highly recommend Primo. The built-in measuring cup is money. Makes your life way, way, way easier. And I think that pretty much covers it. I got through most of the material that I wanted to get through, answers a lot of the questions, and uh, we had a grand old time. Guys, make sure, please, that you watch the video tomorrow morning on the rotary scissors, and I will, um, you know, I, I it, just want to get your feedback on it. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. And I got one last question, just one more I'm gonna answer. Matt N, I'm probably not gonna have an answer for you, but I'll try it. Is there any suggestions on where to get uh, top dressing in North Jersey? Called around to some golf course supplies, but no luck yet. I don't know exactly of any places, Matt, um, in North Jersey, you're probably near New York, so it may not be that many of them, but there is a place, I'm sure, in North Jersey that has masonry sand, or that has masonry sand that they, they, can, they can sell to you. Um, and you know, if you look in your area, like you know, what city you happen to be in, your city in Jersey, top dressing, or your city in Jersey, lawn leveling, they will be. There's got to be a service that will be able to do that. You know what I mean? So if you if you look, go from from that perspective, that you're looking for top dressing or lawn leveling, like those services are getting their sand from somewhere, and they should be able to help you out. So guys, thank you guys again so much. Again, I appreciate all the love and support. If you're not yet a subscriber to the channel, consider subscribing. If you need anything at the Golf Course Launcher, we got you covered on herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, plant growth regulator, and uh, and everything else you might need to create the lawn that becomes the envy of your neighborhood. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great